Chapter 501 Peony Garden In a huge music temple, only one sun beast would spawn every time. This made it much more difficult for Zhou when to obtain a sun beast companion egg. He had no choice but to sacrifice his blood to grind for one. Thankfully, other than the sun beast, Zhou Wen could also farm rare dimensional creatures such as the baby tiger, the elegant emperor's avatar puppet, the runic heavy armored warrior, the three-eyed golden warrior, mutated overlord snake, and so on. Some companion beasts' levels weren't high, but their skills or life providences were very useful. If he farmed a few more, he might be able to use them when they were fused in the future. While grinding for pets, Zhou Wen found a good place. The place Zhou Wen found wasn't in Sunset College, but a dimensional zone in Luoyang. It wasn't very famous, and ordinary people seldom went there because there weren't many dimensional creatures there. Furthermore, the drop rate was low, making it a chore. Most people weren't willing to go, but Zhou Wen felt that it was a good place. The dimensional zone that he had specially applied to go to was Peony Garden. There was a legend in the region that the first empress of the East District had once ordered a hundred flowers to bloom after she got drunk in Chang'an to cheer her up. The blooming season was different for a hundred flowers. However, due to the empress's might, they had no choice but to bloom at the same time. The empress was elated to see this. However, she realized that amongst the hundred flowers, there was a flower that had yet to bloom. It was still standing amidst the hundred flowers with withered leaves. It was a peony. The empress was furious and demoted the peony to Luoyang. However, who knew that the moment the peony reached Luoyang, it immediately bloomed with a beautiful rosy red color. The empress got even more furious when she heard of this. She ordered for the peonies to be burnt. To everyone's surprise, the peonies became even more beautiful amidst the flames. It was said that this peony garden was the place where the empress demoted the peony. Of course, that was only a legend. No matter how powerful the empress of the human world was, she couldn't dictate the blooming of flowers. Therefore, it was still a mystery why peony garden could become a dimensional zone. The peony flowers in the peony garden were dimensional creatures. In the past, there were people who wantonly reaped them. Unfortunately, peony flowers didn't drop dimensional crystals or companion eggs. Eventually, no one came here to cut peonies. There were two types of dimensional creatures that could be killed in the peony garden. One of them was a B-type dimensional creature, while the other was a butterfly type. However, there weren't many of them, so it was rather troublesome to find them. They were all poisonous and didn't drop any good items. Therefore, Peony Garden gradually lost its importance. The reason Joe when came to Peony Garden wasn't to kill the bees and butterflies. It was because there were very few people here. Furthermore, it was said that there was an immortal root in Peony Garden that was the closest to nature. Joe would only wanted to come here to game. While gaming, he could also sense the flora and fauna. It could be considered a form of intimacy with nature. Perhaps he could gain a deeper understanding of the Tao body and condense a life soul. Condensing a life soul and advancing a life soul weren't simple tasks. Not only did he need a lot of practice, but having perception and opportunities was also very important. He was temporarily stuck at advancing slaughterer, the inverse ancient sovereign, and lost country. All Zhou Wen could do was study the Tao art and small perfection of Wisdom Sutra. He arrived at the Peony Garden and indeed, he saw a bunch of flowers. At a glance, there was a stretch of colorful flowers that extended for hundreds of kilometers. They were like a breathtakingly beautiful sea of flowers. The beauty of peony gave people a sense of oppression. Some people felt that it was too beautiful, while others felt that it was a glorious beauty. Some even said that peony was the queen of flowers. Zhou Wen didn't know much about flowers. He only felt that the peony flowers were indeed beautiful. As they had transformed into dimensional creatures, the beauty of peony was even more shocking. Zhou Wen walked into the garden and found a stone pavilion in the sea of flowers. As he sat in the stone pavilion, he gained while taking in the flora and fauna. The peony garden was indeed different from other dimensional zones. It was quiet and tranquil, and the fragrance of flowers was refreshing. Apart from the stunning beauty of the peony flowers, it was indeed a good quiet place. However, Zhou Wen didn't have any special insights. As he circulated the Tao art, he gained. He didn't make any progress with the Tao art, so he focused on gaming and didn't think too much about it. After playing for a few hours, he heard footsteps. Zhou Wen originally didn't plan on paying attention to them, but the footsteps approached his stone pavilion. He used Truth Listener's ability to listen. Two people came. One was a middle-aged man, and the other was a twelve-year-old youth. The two of them were dressed in odd plain clothes. A robe was worn outside, and they did not look like locals. The middle-aged man walked in front. The young man held a sheathed saber in his hand, and followed behind the middle-aged man. The two of them walked all the way to the stone pavilion. They didn't walk very fast, as if they were taking a stroll and enjoying the scenery of Peony Garden. To be honest, the peony was indeed beautiful, 
but there was a limit to being able to appreciate it. This was also why many people always found the grass greener on the other side. It wasn't because the things weren't good, but because people were prone to change. They believed that what is rare is dear, and they didn't know how to cherish all that they had seen. The middle-aged man kept observing the peony flowers, but he still seemed to be in high spirits. He studied the peony flowers closely. The youth's temperament was clearly not as staid as the middle-aged man's. After watching for a while, he found it boring, but he still followed behind the middle-aged man obediently. He did not cross the line and looked like he had a good upbringing. Teacher, there's already someone inside this pavilion, the youth said in disappointment when they arrived in front of the stone pavilion. However, the middle-aged man did not mind. He stood outside the pavilion and asked, Young friend, can you let us rest for a while? Of course. The stone pavilion is a common facility. You can use it as long as you want, Jowen said. After thanking him, the middle-aged man walked into the stone pavilion with the young man. The youth carried a large box on his back. He put the box down and opened it before taking out a cloth and laying it on the ground. Then, he took out a small wooden table and some random items. It looked like a picnic, but the tools on the table looked like they were used for brewing tea. The middle-aged man and the young man sat down at the small wooden table. The young man could make tea with those complicated tea sets. It's fate that we meet. Young friend, if you don't mind, why don't you try our hometown tea? The middle-aged man said to Zhou Wen. Thank you for your kindness. I'm not thirsty. After saying that, Zhou Wen continued gaming. The middle-aged man didn't mind either. As he drank his tea, he enjoyed the flowers. He looked rather pleased. Teacher, there are so many famous dimensional zones in Luoyang. Why do we have to come to Peony Garden? Even dimensional creatures are rare here. Is there anything special about this place? The youth brewed a cup of tea and sat opposite him, asking the middle-aged man. Chapter 502 Not on the Same Level Flowers are like life. The plum blossoms are proud to the core, and their chrysanthemums are lofty and pure. They bloom when other flowers wilt. Therefore, the first impression you have of them is that they are extraordinary. However, the peony is different. Its blooming time is not unique. Many flowers bloom in the same period of time, but in this season when the flowers bloom, it is still able to stand out. This is a kind of temperament, a kind of fearlessness. The plum blossoms and chrysanthemums are unique, but if they can stand out among the masses, they are extraordinary in different ways, first among extraordinariness, said the middle-aged man. The young man did not seem to understand what he was saying. He looked up at the peony flower outside the stone pavilion. It was beautiful, but after looking at it for a long time, he got used to it. After some thought, the youth said, I still like the cherry blossoms from our hometown. They aren't that colorful, but they are still as beautiful. Furthermore, when they are at their most beautiful, they will wither. They won't slowly wither like the flowers here, which serves to remind me of heroes dying at their prime. The momentary brilliance is naturally the most beautiful. However, life is not just an instance. Cherry blossoms do not only bloom for a year. The middle-aged man said after drinking a cup of tea, the young man quickly brewed another cup for the middle-aged man. After the middle-aged man drank it, he said, The temperature of the tea today is still a little lacking. Teacher, we have been out for so long, and you always want me to make tea. When will you teach me the way of the sword? The youth could not help but ask. The middle-aged man smiled. You've been with me for 17 days since we set off. For you to endure asking until now, it's clear that your father has brought you up rather differently. Please enlighten me. The youth bowed. My way of the sword is a little different from your family's. It focuses on comprehending. I've already taught you for 17 days, but you haven't gained any insight yet. When you do figure something out, it will be time for me to teach you the moves involved, said the middle-aged man. You've taught me for 17 days? The youth was slightly taken aback. He looked at the middle-aged man with some doubt and said, But in these 17 days, we've been traveling. You either give me to do some chores or make tea. When did you teach me anything? That's why you haven't figured it out yet. The middle-aged man smiled. The young man was still a young man after all. The past 17 days had seemingly ground away all his patience. He could not help but retort. If I knew everything, father wouldn't have made me acknowledge you as my master. Please teach me. As he spoke, the young man knelt before the middle-aged man. The middle-aged man shook his head. Your level of insight is still insufficient. The youth was not convinced. He raised his head and said, I'm 12 years old this year and have already advanced to legendary. I once went to the East Heaven Academy to compete with the top 10 geniuses in the way of the sword. No one in the entire East Heaven Academy was my match. If my level of insight isn't sufficient, then who can meet the mark? Sparring is ultimately only sparring. It doesn't mean anything. Moreover, this world is very big. The East Heaven Academy is not equal to the entire world. 
said the middle-aged man indifferently. The youth could not help but feel enraged when he realized that he was unable to move the middle-aged man no matter what he said. However, his teacher was too famous. He was disciplined from a young age to not go against his teacher excessively. He had nowhere to vent his pent-up anger. Just as the youth was feeling upset, he suddenly thought of Zhou Wen on the other side of the stone pavilion. He stood up and walked in front of Zhou Wen. He bowed slightly and asked, Are you a local here? No, I study here. Zhou Wen answered. The youth's eyes lit up when he heard that. He sized up Zhou Wen and asked, Which school are you from? Sunset College. Zhou Wen casually replied when he saw that he was rather polite. I've heard of Sunset College. It's a college that's in the Federation's top 10. It should be the best school here, right? The youth's eyes lit up. Probably, Zhou Wen said. When the youth heard that, he turned to the middle-aged man and asked, Teacher, Sunset College is one of the top 10 academies in the Federation. It's ranked higher than East Heaven Academy. They don't know who I am, so they naturally won't give in to me. If I can defeat the best student at Sunset College, will you be able to teach me the way of the sword? The middle-aged man merely smiled and did not speak. He picked up the teacup and took a sip. Without any reply from his teacher, the youth bowed and said, Then I'll take it that teacher has agreed. With that said, the youth stood up and walked in front of Zhou Wen. He asked, May I ask who is the strongest student at Sunset College? Strongest? Zhou Wen thought carefully before replying. I guess the publicly recognized number one person should be the president of the student council, right? What's his name? The youth asked. Wei Gu. Zhou Wen answered. Wei Gu. The youth repeated it a few times before walking to the middle-aged man and bowing. Teacher, I'll go to Sunset College to challenge its strongest student. After I return victorious, you should be able to teach me the way of the sword, right? There's a student from Sunset College here. Why do you have to seek someone so far? The middle-aged man glanced at Zhou Wen and said with a smile. The youth said, I want to defeat the strongest student of Sunset College, not an ordinary student. But in my opinion, he is stronger than you. The middle-aged man said, the youth naturally refused to believe him. He looked at Zhou Wen and asked, What's your standard in Sunset College? Very weak. It's considered mediocre. You should go to Sunset College to find Wei Gu. Zhou Wen said. He wasn't interested in dealing with the child. The youth looked at the middle-aged man and said, Teacher, it seems that you have misjudged this time. The middle-aged man ignored the youth and looked at Zhou Wen with a smile. My young friend, may I ask what rank you were in the last comprehensive test at Sunset College? I barely ranked 10th. Zhou Wen answered. The youth sized up Zhou Wen again when he heard that. After a while, he nodded and said, Tenth place is indeed lacking. However, since teacher has spoken, I'll first defeat you before challenging the best, Wei Gu. As he spoke, the youth made a strange hand gesture and said, Please accept my challenge. Sorry, I don't have time. Zhou Wen said as he played games. He was completely uninterested in the youth and had no interest in bullying children. The youth couldn't help but frown slightly. Zhou Wen's attitude made him feel belittled. I'm Han Shinsakura. Please enlighten me. The young man stood as though he was about to draw his saber and held the handle of the saber as if he was about to strike at any moment. Zhou Wen had already rejected him, so there was no need for him to repeat himself. He ignored him and continued gaming. A sliver of anger flashed in Han Shinsakura's eyes as he suddenly unsheathed his saber. The saber beam flashed and slashed at Zhou Wen like lightning. Zhou Wen was still gaming. He didn't even raise his eyelids as the saber beam slashed past him. Although it looked dangerous, it didn't even hit his clothes. The middle-aged man's expression changed slightly. He stood up and said, Shin, step back. He is not on the same level as you. Chapter 503 Segasakai Han Shinsakura was not convinced to begin with. After hearing his teacher's evaluation, he became even more indignant. However, his teacher had already stood up. As a disciple, he had to maintain his etiquette. He could only step aside and sulk. I'm Segasakai. May I know your name? The middle-aged man asked Zhou Wen. There's no need to be this polite with me. My name is Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen said as he put down his phone. As Zhou Wen had never heard of the name Segasakai, he didn't think much of it. However, this name was famous in another region and even the entire federation. Speaking of the sword hero Segasakai, many people who practiced the way of the sword knew that he used to be a first-rate sword master who practiced Nidin Ichi Ryu ten years ago, and he was also famous locally for his good looks. However, Zhou Wen didn't know any of this. Seeing his teacher, Segasakai, solemnly mention his name, while Zhou Wen only sat there silently, Han Shinsakura could not help but snort coldly. He felt that Zhou Wen didn't respect his teacher, Segasakai. Segasakai didn't mind as he said with a smile. Zhou Wen, 
Are you familiar with Chancellor Lung Zongjing in your studies at Sunset College? It's very rare to see Chancellor Lung. He's no longer teaching. Zhou would answer truthfully. Isn't your mentor Lung Zongjing? Then who is your mentor? Say Gasikai was slightly surprised. Zhou Wen was so young, yet he had such a cultivation realm. He believed that Zhou Wen was Lung Zongjing's student. His visit to Luoyang was to challenge Lung Zongjing. Wang Fei. Zhou Wen answered subconsciously. After Wang Fei left, many things happened to Zhou Wen. He seldom interacted with the new tutor, and he still thought of Wang Fei as his tutor. Furthermore, Wang Fei and Wang Mingyuan were both members of Luoyang's Wang family. Zhou Wen subconsciously wanted to acknowledge Wang Fei as his tutor. Say Gasikai thought for a moment. He had never heard of this name before. In fact, Say Gasikai didn't like the other teachers of Sunset College. He believed that the only one worthy to fight him at Sunset College was the Chancellor, Lung Zongjing. Therefore, he didn't know much about the other teachers. He only knew a few of the more famous tutors. Even though the mentors were rather famous in the Federation, Say Gasikai did not think of them as opponents. Although Zhou Wen wasn't a student taught by Lung Zongjing, since he was a student of Sunset College and had such accomplishments at such a young age, Say Gasikai wanted to know of Zhou Wen's accomplishments. Say Gasikai originally could only tell that Zhou Wen's cultivation level wasn't bad. He remained unperturbed despite being in front of him. This made him find the young student pretty good. It was only later, when Han Shinsakura probed Zhou Wen, hoping to force him to take action, did Say Gasikai realize that Zhou Wen wasn't ordinary. His martial realm wasn't low, but it wasn't obvious how high it was. If there's nothing else, I wish to continue gaming. Zhou Wen lowered his head and continued gaming. Say Gasikai didn't make any remarks as he looked at the peony flower outside the stone pavilion. A gust of wind blew past, and a withered petal fell, blowing into the stone pavilion. He extended his slender fingers and clamped the petal between his fingers. Little friend, take a look at this petal. Do you see anything different about it? With that said, Say Gasikai extended his index finger and middle finger towards Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen immediately felt his body tremble, as he couldn't help but look up at Say Gasikai. Say Gasikai's finger wasn't fast. But when it landed in Zhou Wen's eyes, the scenery was completely different. The life force in the peony garden seemed to have followed Sei Gasikai's finger. It was as if he was the lord of the peony garden, and the peony garden moved under his power. Zhou Wen felt that he wasn't facing Sei Gasikai, but the billions of flowers in the peony garden. The power gathered on the petals was like a boundless sea. He immediately felt immense pressure. Zhou Wen wore a solemn expression as he sat on the bench. His fingers were like swords as he extended them towards the petal delivered by Sei Gasikai clamping the other side of the petal. At that instant, Zhou Wen felt a strange force rush over. Flowers bloomed and fell. The sun rose and set. From life to death, Zhou Wen felt his body rapidly aging as time flew by. A strange glint flashed across Sagasakai's eyes. In the past, he had cultivated Nidin Ichi Ryu. The so-called Nidin Ichi Ryu meant that the sky had the sun and the moon, and humans were divided into Yin and Yang. The Nidin Ichi Ryu was also about complementing Yin and Yang. Nidin Ichi Ryu warriors usually held a Tachi in their right hand and a small Tachi in their left hand. This Yin and Yang produced endless changes. Sagasakai was extremely talented. After being repeatedly honed by dimensional zones and gaining insights, not only did he reach the pinnacle of Nidin Ichi Ryu, but he had also basically created a lineage using the Nidin Ichi Ryu as a foundation, allowing his strength to improve greatly. This lineage not only focused on Yin and Yang, the incorporeal and corporeal, but it also had a great relationship with time and life. Say Gasikai had yet to name this lineage. This time, he had come to Luoyang to challenge Lung Zongjing. If he could defeat him, he planned to name the lineage he created. As Zhou Wen was a student of Sunset College, Say Gasikai had originally planned on using his newly created technique to test his cultivation level and realm. He didn't really want to fight him. However, when he used the will renewal concept in his saber art, he realized that Zhou Wen wasn't affected at all. With that, he gradually strengthened his will in the sword. Zhou Wen felt as though countless flowers had bloomed before waning as time seemed to pass rapidly. It was as though the entire peony garden had turned into a flower graveyard. He had also gone from young to old as though he was about to die. When Sei Gasikai saw that Zhou Wen remained unmoved, he couldn't help but be astonished. He had already thought highly of Zhou Wen to begin with, but he never expected the youth in front of him to be even stronger than he had imagined. He couldn't help but strengthen his sword will as it changed from the will renewal to life and death. Han Shinsakura watched from the side, but he didn't sense anything. All he saw was Zhou Wen and Sei Gasikai each holding a pedal. One of them was standing, while the other was sitting motionless. Han Shinsakura was somewhat puzzled. He did not know what his teacher Sei Gasikai was doing, but he did not dare disturb him. He could only wait patiently by the side. But as he watched, 
Han Shinsakura's eyes widened. His teacher, Segasakai, had his hairband snap and his long black hair flowed down. His long black hair was gradually turning white. In just moments, his long black hair had turned snow white. Teacher, what's wrong? Han Shinsakura was alarmed as he hurriedly stood up. He wanted to rush over and push Zhou Wen away. Boom! However, just as he took a few steps towards Zhou Wen, he felt a terrifying force slam into him. His body involuntarily flew out and landed outside the stone pavilion. Blood oozed out of his mouth and a few of his bones were broken. He looked at Zhou Wen in the stone pavilion in horror and struggled several times but failed to get up. Chapter 504 Dao Boda Soul Condensation After Zhou Wen arrived at the Peony Garden, he had been constantly circulating the Dao art. When Sei Gasakai's sword will crash down on him, it made him feel both a will renewal and life and death. However, this pressure didn't cause Zhou Wen's will to waver. Instead, he suddenly seemed to gain enlightenment. With Zhou Wen's enlightenment, the Dao Sutra in his body also underwent some strange changes. His Dao body and essence, vitality, and spirit were trembling. His entire body and mind seemed to resonate with everything in the world, causing them to constantly transform and condense within his body. At this moment, Zhou Wen had actually begun condensing a Dao Sutra life soul. Sei Gasakai didn't know that his sword will was useless against Zhou Wen. Instead, it aided Zhou Wen by constantly giving him insights. Seeing how Zhou Wen remained motionless, Sei Gasakai was alarmed. He pushed the sword while he had comprehended to its limits. His essence energy had already been infused into it. It wasn't as simple as probing anymore. It was a true sparring match. The sword's four surge towards Zhou went through the flower petal that the two were holding. This nameless sword strike was still unable to shake Zhou when despite Sei Gasakai pushing his sword will to the extreme. His sword force, which carried the will renewal as well as life and death, vanished without a trace after entering Zhou Wen's body. Sei Gasakai was shocked. He had relied on his comprehension of this strike to push his life soul to perfect stage. He had even planned on using this strike to challenge Lung Zongzheng. However, who knew that this strike wouldn't even be able to do a thing to a mere student of Sunset College? Instantly, Sei Gasakai felt despair. He felt like he had lost all hope in life. His black hair turned white in a short period of time. Sei Gasakai had no idea that even if his strike were to clash with Lung Zongjing, it was impossible for it to be ineffective. However, Zhou Wen's Dao body and the life soul he was condensing were the nemesis of his strike. If he were to use his life soul to fight Zhou Wen, Zhou Wen was definitely not his match. However, just the power of life and death alone was unable to do a thing to him. Zhou Wen felt his essence, vitality, and spirit condensed towards his brain. The power of Sei Gasakai's sword was also sucked in. A certain power in the world was flowing towards his brain, pouring into him like a river. Zhou Wen felt that a crystal had condensed in his mind. The crystal was very strange, as though it was in his brain, but it wasn't anywhere in his brain. It was as though it was something that only existed in his consciousness, but Zhou Wen could clearly sense its existence. Once the life soul was formed, Zhou Wen immediately felt refreshed as though he had been reborn. Boundless essence energy surged out of the crystal like life soul, making him feel like he was bathing in a spring. Sei Gasakai could not accept the fact that he was inferior to a student at Sunset College. He could not accept that the sword Dao he had comprehended over the years was completely useless. When Zhou Wen's life soul condensed, the fluctuations of the life soul's power caused Sei Gasakai's life soul to vibrate. A sword soul that resembled a devil or a god appeared over Sei Gasakai's body. Han Shinsakura was dumbfounded. He had never expected that his teacher, the renowned sword hero, Sei Gasakai, would use his life soul when he was competing with a student. That was a perfect life soul, Samsara Sword Sage. Countless epic experts were defeated by the reincarnation sword sage of Sei Gasakai. It was a supreme existence with the power to determine life and death. In the next second, Han Shinsakura saw Sei Gasakai's white hair fluttering in the wind. The Samsara Sword Sage had merged with Sei Gasakai, and a tachi condensed from light and darkness appeared in his hand. The petal had already melted from the terrifying power. Sei Gasakai held the tachi in his hand. In his despair, he no longer had any other thoughts. All he wanted to do was prove himself and his sword Dao as he slashed at Zhou Wen. Wherever the blade beam passed, the surrounding flowers were affected by it. Half of the flowers were blooming, while the other half was wilting, as though heaven and hell were separated. Teacher actually used this strike. Han Shinsakura was extremely shocked. Not only did Sei Gasakai use his life soul, but he also used his most powerful strike. This strike was something Han Shinsakura had only heard from his father, but he had never seen it before. His father had seen this move of Segasakai's. He had originally been comparable to Segasakai in strength, but in the end, he decided to hand over his beloved son, Han Shinsakura, to Segasakai for guidance. 
Furthermore, he held Seigasakai in high esteem, saying that he was the number one sword practitioner. Han Shinsakura followed Seigasakai and wanted to learn this move the most. However, Seigasakai had never used it before, so he had never seen it. Today was the first time he had truly witnessed this attack. However, the strike that was described as an attack that could kill devils and gods alike was actually used by Seigasakai against a student. This made Han Shinsakura feel incredulous. However, he had finally witnessed the power of the strike. It was truly an attack that wielded the power of a devil or a god. However, due to the power of the attack, the peony garden was reduced to hell. All the flowers had withered. Such power was truly awe-inspiring. It's no wonder even a person like father holds such high regard for teacher. With such a powerful strike, who in the world can match it? Han Shinsakura praised in his heart. But in the next second, Han Shinsakura was rooted to the spot. His eyes widened to the extreme, but his pupils constricted like needles as he looked into the stone pavilion in disbelief. Zhou Wen was still sitting on the bench in the stone pavilion. He wasn't moved by Sei Gasakai's mighty strike, nor did he have any intention of standing up. All he did was grab a jade bamboo in his hand. There was a flash. A saber revealed itself in the bamboo. Han Shinsakura had never seen such a magnificent and domineering technique before. The gorgeous saber beam sliced through the void, leaving an inextinguishable mark on his mind. When Han Shinsakura looked at the saber beam clearly, he realized that the bamboo blade had already returned to its sheath, as though it had never moved. However, when he looked at Seigasakai again, the attack condensed from light and darkness and his hand suddenly broke apart, turning into specks of starlight before dissipating. The terrifying intent also shattered. I lost! Seigasakai stood there and stared at Joe when in a daze, his eyes had already lost focus. Han Shinsakura sat on the ground. He really could not accept this outcome. Seigasakai, the man known as the number one sword hero, his teacher, had actually been defeated by a student who was not much older than him. Looking at Zhou Wen, who was still sitting in the stone pavilion, Han Shinsakura suddenly felt that he wasn't a person but a devil. The earlier strike was a devil's power. However, that gorgeous saber move had left an inextinguishable mark deep within his soul. He could not help but recall it repeatedly. Chapter 505 Nitten Flying Immortal Ryu Teacher! Han Shinsakura suddenly saw a trickle of blood on Seigasakai's neck. He couldn't help but be shocked and went to rush over. If I were you, I wouldn't touch him, Zhou Wen said. Upon hearing Zhou Wen's words, Han Shinsakura's body trembled. He stood outside the stone pavilion and didn't rush in. He stared at Zhou Wen and gritted his teeth as he asked. Your Excellency, since you have already won, why do you have to go so far as to kill him? Zhou Wen pointed at Seigasakai and said, I'm not a murderer. Why would I kill him? Your teacher is probably envisaging a battle in his mind. I don't know what will happen if you disturb him. Doubtful, Han Shinsakura looked at Seigasakai. Seeing that his teacher was standing there in a daze, his eyes empty, and the wound on his neck only a superficial wound, he heaved a sigh of relief. What's the name of the strike your teacher used just now? Zhou Wen asked as he looked at Han Shinsakura. He now had comprehended the meaning of a renewal and life and death thanks to Seigasakai's sword will. He had understood the relationship between humans and nature, which allowed the Tao body to condense a life soul. From this, one could tell that Seigasakai's move was indeed powerful. Han Shinsakura didn't dare belittle Zhou Wen any further. Although there wasn't much of a difference in age between the two of them, he treated himself as a junior. He cautiously answered, That move isn't named. My teacher used the Nitin Ichi Ryu as a foundation before comprehending the four seasons were renewal and life and death samsara concepts. He then created this blade technique. I see. Zhou Wen nodded slightly and got up to leave. He came to the peony garden because he wanted to see if he could condense a Tao body life soul. Although the peony garden failed to help him, in a way, Seigasakai had helped him. Zero taboo, primordial body union of heaven and man, invulnerable to all spells. With the appearance of the life soul, the word taboo behind essence energy disappeared. This was a life soul condensed from a Tao body. It was somewhat odd with being a crystal in his consciousness that seemed to have a corporeal form, but it also seemed incorporeal. It was this life soul that had blocked Seigasakai's will renewal move. It nullified the powers for Zhou Wen, allowing him to defeat Seigasakai. In terms of pure strength, Seigasakai's perfect stage Samsara Sword Sage was much stronger than Zhou Wen's life soul. If he hadn't used that move and had used ordinary essence energy to fight Zhou Wen, Zhou Wen's strike wouldn't have been able to win so easily. Upon seeing Zhou Wen walk out of the stone pavilion, Han Shinsakura anxiously asked, How's my teacher? I didn't hurt him. It's just that he doesn't understand something. He'll naturally recover once he figures it out. Zhou Wen said without turning his head. Han Shinsakura hesitated for a moment. Seeing that Zhou Wen was about to leave, 
He couldn't help but shout at Zhou Wen's back. What's the name of that strike of yours? Transcendent flying immortal. Zhou Wen answered as he walked. Soon, he entered the flower shrubs. Transcendent. Flying. Immortal. The gorgeous saber flashed through Han Shinsakura's mind again. That gesture sent shockwaves into his soul, one that he could not forget. An old man and a young man stood in the stone pavilion in a daze, while the other stood outside the stone pavilion in a daze. After a while, Han Shinsakura suddenly heard a cry and hurriedly turned to look at Seigasakai. Seigasakai spat out a mouthful of blood. Han Shinsakura hurriedly rushed to Seigasakai. Teacher, what's wrong? Seigasakai spat out a mouthful of blood, but his expression was much better. He wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth and revealed a smile. So that's how it is. I see. It's no wonder I didn't name the move. It turns out that deep in my heart, I knew that it wasn't right. Now I finally understand where I was wrong. With that said, Seigasakai looked around but didn't see Zhouwen. He asked, Where's Zhouwen Kuen? He went back. Han Shinsakura answered. Why didn't you stop him? Seigasakai blurted out. Han Shinsakura thought to himself, How can I stop him when even you can't? Of course, he did not say that out loud. Seigasakai probably realized that something was wrong with what he said, so he asked him. Did you ask him what the name of that attack was? He said it was Transcendent Flying Immortal. Han Shinsakura replied. Seigasakai nodded and said. So that saber move is called Transcendent Flying Immortal. My blade technique has taken the wrong path. I've been blindly pursuing the path of old renewal and life and death, but I've lost the true essence of Ninichi Ryu. To think that I was so arrogant that I thought that my accomplishments had already reached the crest of perfection, and even had the thoughts of challenging Lung Zongjin. I never expected that even a student from Sunset College could nullify my sword technique. That's good. After this battle, I've finally seen the path ahead clearly. I'm going back to revise my blade technique. Are you still willing to cultivate with me? You will forever be my teacher. Han Shinsakura immediately bowed. All right, we'll head back now. I'll revamp my blade technique. From now on, this lineage will be called the Nitten Flying Immortal Ryu. Seigasakai said seriously. Nitten Flying Immortal Ryu? Han Shinsakura looked at Seigasakai in confusion. My sword Dao came from the Nitten Ichi Ryu, and the strike that Zhou and Kuen used to give me a wake-up call is called Transcendent Flying Immortal. In order to show respect, my style shall be called the Nitten Flying Immortal Ryu. I hope that after you inherit my sword Dao in the future, you will be able to advance further, and use the blade technique of my Nitten Flying Immortal Ryu to defeat his Transcendent Flying Immortal said Seigasakai. Nitten Flying Immortal Ryu? Han Shinsakura muttered to himself as Zhou Wen's gorgeous saber appeared in his mind. The master and disciple no longer went to find Lung Zongjin and chose to leave Luoyang. Zhou Wen didn't take this matter to heart, but he didn't know that in the future, the Nitten Flying Immortal Ryu would become a mainstream sword sect overseas. But all of this was in the future. After returning to his dorm, Zhou Wen began studying the Zero Taboo Life Soul. He wanted to know what use it had. As of now, what he knew was that it could nullify the power of will renewal and power of death, but this was clearly not the true effect of the Zero Taboo. After launching the game dungeon, Zhou Wen entered the Metalwork Temple. He wanted to see if the Zero Taboo could block the power of the flames, but unfortunately, the blood-colored avatar was nearly burned to death. It can't block the power of fire? Zhou Wen gritted his teeth and changed to another dungeon. He went to the Music Temple to try resisting the sound waves. However, it was useless. After activating the Zero Taboo, the sound wave struck the blood-colored avatar, sending it flying several meters away. It was so painful that Zhou Wen nearly convulsed. It can't be? Don't tell me that this thing can only block the power of will renewal and death? Just as Zhou Wen was feeling depressed, he saw a sun beast rush out of the palace. Zhou Wen didn't experiment any further. He summoned the six-winged guardian dragon and made it kill the sun beast. After grinding so many times, he didn't even have a companion egg drop. He didn't hold any hopes this time but the sun beast ended up dropping a companion egg. It's finally here. Zhou Wen forgot about the zero taboo as his emotions became complicated. With the sun beast, he could finally fight Torch Dragon. Chapter 506 Fusion Armor Zhou Wen had killed plenty of sun beasts, but this was the first time he had seen one clearly. As the sun beast's glare was so strong, it usually looked like a small sun. However, in reality, the sun beast was just a small crystal-like beast. It wasn't too big and emitted an intense light. Sun Beast, Epic. Life Providence, Son of the Sun. Life Soul, Solar Radiance. Strength, 39. Speed, 38. Constitution, 39. Essence Energy, 39. Talent Skill, Sun Arc. Companion Form, Crystal Mirror. Zhou Wen summoned the Sun Beast and transformed it into a companion form. 
an intrinsic, sundial-like mirror appeared in his hand. The mirror clearly reflected Zhou Wen's shadow. It wasn't inferior to the modern-day mirrors. It was even clearer. Looking at the crystal mirror, Zhou Wen thought of a problem. This mirror was more than enough to block his face, and it was just big enough to block his chest. However, he couldn't hide his entire body behind the mirror. Zhou Wen didn't know if blocking a part of his body was of any use against Torch Dragon's Bright Torch Vision world. Taking the Sun Beast with him, Zhou Wen opened the game dungeon and planned on giving it a try. Once again, he came to the shrine and summoned the Six-Winged Guardian Dragon, allowing it to charge into the temple as a vanguard. Under Zhou Wen's control, the blood-colored avatar cooperated with the Six-Winged Guardian Dragon and dealt with Torch Dragon. As Zhou Wen didn't know when Torch Dragon would use the Bright Torch Vision world, he kept paying attention to Torch Dragon's eyes. Torch Dragon's eyes were usually dim. When it used Bright Torch Vision World, the eyes would first light up before turning into a mirror. The process in the middle was a brief instant. Joan had to summon the Sun Beast when Torch Dragon used Bright Torch Vision World. There was some skill involved. As the Sun Beast was only at the epic stage, it was impossible to summon it too early or it would die under the intense combat strength. Therefore, Joan could only use this strategy. He was extremely familiar with Torch Dragon. When it used Bright Torch Vision World, Zhou Wen summoned the crystal mirror in front of him and blocked the blood-colored avatar's face. In the next second, Zhou Wen saw a strange scene. The crystal mirror and blood-colored avatar's faces were indeed fine, but its body vanished. Then, the game screen turned black. The arch didn't lie to me. The mirror is indeed useful, but the crystal mirror is a little too small. Zhou Wen wasn't discouraged. He knew that the mirror could restrain Torch Dragon, so killing it was only a matter of time. He went online to search for information again, to see if there were any bigger mirror companion eggs. However, he was somewhat disappointed. All known mirror companion beasts were relatively small in size. It was basically impossible to hide behind a mirror. The biggest known companion beast mirror was a magic mirror in the West District. However, the magic mirror was at the mythical stage. Up to this day, the six families had yet to destroy it. From the looks of it, getting a big mirror won't work. Is there any other way? Zhou Wen thought hard about how to use the smaller crystal mirror to perfectly crack Bright Torch Vision World. Zhou Wen constantly came up with new strategies and kept experimenting. He spent a large amount of time grinding dungeons every day. Zhou Wen had yet to finish Torch Dragon, but he had obtained a three-eyed Golden Warrior companion egg. He combined it with the epic Golden Warrior that he had previously combined. Although they were both Golden Warriors, their compatibility was only slightly more than 60. After hesitating for a moment, he chose to fuse them. Then, he watched as the Golden Warrior and the Three-Eyed Golden Warrior Companion Egg were gradually devoured by the light before they merged into one. When the light dissipated and a Golden Warrior appeared on the game's screen, Zhou Wen finally relaxed. The stats of the Golden Warrior increased significantly after being fused. All of them were above 30, and his luck was quite different. With the Three-Eyed Golden Warrior as a supplement, it retained its invulnerable golden body. As such, the Golden Warrior had Golden Bell, Invulnerable Golden Body, and the Fist of War. Fist of War wasn't of much use to Zhou Wen. He mainly focused on the Golden Bell and Invulnerable Golden Body, which greatly enhanced his defense. When he went to the temple to attack Torch Dragon again, Zhou Wen summoned the Golden Warrior to see how strong its defense was. However, what surprised Zhou Wen was that the Golden Bell and Invulnerable Golden Body, along with the augmentation of blessed combat runes allowed it to withstand one blow of the Torch Dragon's tail. Its body crashed into the palace wall, but it wasn't seriously injured. This seemingly ordinary golden warrior was finally killed after withstanding Torch Dragon's four attacks. This was already out of Zhou Wen's expectations. Among epic companion beasts, there weren't many who could withstand a single strike from Torch Dragon. For a golden warrior to withstand four strikes was already shocking. Unfortunately, the golden warrior could not block Bright Torch Vision World. This golden warrior looks like an ordinary golden warrior, but its strength far exceeds that of a golden warrior. If an ordinary person were to treat it as a golden warrior, they would probably suffer terribly. That's an advantage. Zhou Wen thought to himself if he were to find a publicly recognized weak companion beast in the future and combine all sorts of powerful skills with it. This way, he would be able to catch any enemy off guard. Upon thinking of a weak companion beast, Zhou Wen thought of the lucky baby tiger. This fellow was indeed the weakest among epics. Apart from its luck stat, it was completely useless. I'll try to fuse a powerful baby tiger when I get another baby tiger. Zhou Wen summoned the golden warrior, and wore it as a golden soft armor. The moment he wore it, he realized something different. The soft armor that a typical golden warrior transformed into was made of gold threads. It was pure gold without any patterns. Zhou Wen's soft armor had shimmering blessed combat runes on it, making it look extremely dazzling. 
Zhou Wen didn't like being dazzling because that would make him a striking target. The Golden Warrior transforms into soft armor. I can still wear armor outside. I can use the Runic Heavy Armored Warrior as the main ingredient and a Golden Warrior Companion Egg as a supplementary ingredient to form a Runic Heavy Armored Warrior with a Golden Body Life Providence. Zhou Wen did as the idea came to him. Runic Heavy Armored Warriors and Golden Warrior weren't difficult to kill, but something went wrong when he fused them. After the two were combined, the Runic Heavy Armored Warrior did not obtain the Golden Warrior's Life Providence. It was still his original life providence, but he had an additional skill. After a few tries, the results were all different. Sometimes, there were more skills, and sometimes there were fewer. Only on the third time, did he obtain a runic heavy armored warrior with the golden body life providence and blessed combat runes life soul. However, that runic heavy armored warrior did not even have a single skill. Chapter 507 Black Cube While Zhou Wen was grinding the dungeons, something strange happened in Luoyang City. A crossroad in the city was blocked by a huge black cube. The black cube was about 50 meters long. It did not look like metal, but it did not look like stone or plastic either. Strangely, no one knew when the black cube appeared. And Sheng, who was in charge of investigating the matter, looked at the nearby surveillance cameras and realized that the black cube had appeared out of thin air. It didn't exist on the video, then it appeared in the next second. Such a strange matter was likely related to dimensional creatures. In order to prevent any accidents, and Sheng mobilized many experts from the Sunset Army to research how to take away or destroy the Black Cube. However, they tried many methods to no avail. They were unable to move the Black Cube away, nor were they able to damage it. Even the strongest destructive weapon and essence energy skill that they could muster failed to damage the Black Cube one bit. Some people dug up the concrete surface underneath the Black Cube and used some tools to move it away. However, they soon discovered that the Black Cube was actually suspended in midair. After the ground was dug open, it did not affect it at all, and it still remained in position. Although the black cube didn't pose any threat, and Sheng still made preparations for the worst. He evacuated the nearby residents, and temporarily isolated the area. He sent troops to guard it to prevent any accidents. In less than two days, and Sheng received plenty of shocking updates. It wasn't just Luoyang. Many cities in the Federation's four major districts had similar black cubes. Now, everyone was studying the black cube. Up to now, no one had been able to determine what it was, nor could anyone destroy or move it. Many people were worried like in Sheng. The Black Cube was like a ticking time bomb in the city. Who knew when it would cause a terrifying disaster? Strange phenomena are happening rather frequently. It looks like the days ahead will become more and more unpeaceful. And Sheng sighed. And Tianzhou was reading the intelligence gathered from all over the world. Even the cities of the six major families had Black Cubes. Furthermore, the six families were helpless against them. The six families had sent out mythical companion beasts to destroy or figure out what the black cube was, but the outcome wasn't promising. The strength of mythical companion beasts was still unable to harm the black cubes. And Tianzhua frowned when he read the intelligence. Black cubes had appeared all over the world. This was clearly unusual. Did you notice that these black cubes only appear in areas where humans gather? There are no black cubes in the wilderness or dimensional zones. And Tianzhua said, You suspect that this is a conspiracy against humans? And Sheng immediately understood what Ntianzhua was getting at. Although I don't wish to see such a thing happen, the current phenomena's analysis suggests that the black cubes are targeted at humans. And Ntianzhua said with a heavy expression. We shall handle it, come what may. Overseer, when have you ever been afraid of anything? And Sheng deliberately said in a relaxed tone. And Ntianzhua smiled and stopped talking about the matter. He then asked and Sheng. How's the progress at Shualu? There's no progress. After a long analysis, the experts have roughly guessed that the snake is the legendary torch dragon. The other mythical creature is Cheongchi, one of the four mythical ferocious beasts. Apart from that, there's no progress. Unless a mythical power involves itself in this matter, it's impossible to make progress in the temple. And Shun said, How's the mood of the person at home? And Tianzhua paused before asking again. Same as usual. She eats whatever she likes and buys whatever she likes. However, I can tell that she can't let this matter rest. And Shun said, after a long silence, and Tianzhua suddenly said, How long will it take for a return trip to Zhuolu? And Sheng's expression changed drastically when he heard that. Overseer, you absolutely can't do that. You definitely can't go to Zhuolu. The strength of Torch Dragon and Cheongchi is still unknown. We haven't even figured out what abilities they have. It's too dangerous for you to go like this. If we don't figure out if Grandpa is in the temple, the person at home will probably not be at ease, said in Tianzhua. Overseer, if you were to perish in there, Madam wouldn't just be sad. Furthermore, 
There's the bizarre black cube. A huge problem might happen at any time. This place needs you. And Shung said solemnly. And Tianzhu's expression changed when he heard that. After a long while, he sighed and said, Ah, Shung, in the past, we only wanted to have the family and Luoyang completely in our control. At that time, we thought that we could no longer have any reservations and do whatever we wanted. Now that we have truly become the masters of this place, we realize that the matters to take into consideration have increased. And Shun looked at Ntianzwa and said seriously, The lesser the burden, the fewer the matters to consider. Overseer, you're burdened by too many things. Perhaps. And Tianzhua stood up and walked to the window. He looked at the black cube on the city's streets as his expression turned more complicated. Zhou Wen had fused multiple pets without obtaining a runic heavy armored warrior that he was satisfied with. All he could do was use the unskilled runic heavy armored warrior for the time being. Old Zhou, have you heard? A mysterious cube appeared on the streets in the city. Li Xian said mysteriously when he came to Zhou Wen. What mysterious cube? Zhou Wen had been focused on grinding dungeons recently. Apart from sending breakfast to Wang Lu, he hadn't gone out, nor had anyone told him. You don't know about it. Li Xian recounted the mysterious appearance of the black cube. It's not just our Luoyang. I heard that the same black cube has appeared all over the world. However, no one knows what it is. Zhou Wen couldn't help but frown when he heard that. He was also worried. If the black cubes contained a few mythical creatures, the consequences would be unimaginable. Li Xian and Zhou Wen chatted for a while before he suddenly recalled something. He said to Zhou Wen with a smile, Gu Tian looks like a ruthless character, but he's actually quite timid. Why do you say that? Zhou Wen asked curiously. Didn't we organize an activity previously and got Gu Tian to come with us? Fang Ruashi brought her pet cat over. That pet cat wasn't afraid of Gu Dian's ferocious appearance and even jumped onto him. When he saw the cat, the usually ferocious Gu Dian ended up sitting on the ground in fright. His legs were so weak that he couldn't even stand up. He just sat and crawled backward as though he was afraid that the cat would eat him. Don't you think it's funny? That kid usually looks quite manly. I never expected him to be so timid. Li Xian didn't notice Zhou Wen's odd expression when he spoke. Chapter 508 The Thearch's Hen After Li Xian left, Zhou Wen went online to investigate the news regarding the black cube. As the matter was huge news, and the cubes had appeared in many places, it was impossible to completely conceal the matter. Therefore, many places did an expose. There were also many clear pictures of it. One could not tell anything from the pictures. It was just a black cube. What exactly is this? I wonder if the Darch knows what it is. Joan was considering how to ask the Darch when he suddenly received a message from her. Did a black cube appear in the place where you are now? Joan hurriedly replied when he saw the Darch mention this matter herself. Yes, a lot of them suddenly appeared in the world. I wonder what it is. If I were you, I would take my mythical companion beast to the cube. The Darch replied. How can I have mythical companion beasts? Zhou Wen denied. What's on your ear? Don't tell me that's an earring you bought online. The Darch said. What do I do with a mythical companion beast there? What is that black cube? Zhou Wen never expected the Darch to recognize Truth Listener. However, he wasn't surprised. He was only curious. The Darch clearly knew what the black cube was. I don't wish to tell you what it is, but as long as you take a mythical companion beast over, there will definitely be benefits. Do you dare to go? Before long, the Darch sent a message. Zhou Wen frowned when he saw that. He didn't know what the Darch was up to. He didn't trust the Darch at all, afraid that she would scheme against him. The six families have already taken their mythical companion beasts over, but they didn't receive any benefits. Zhou Wen replied without saying if he wanted to go. How can those ordinary people know of its benefits? With my guidance, naturally, it'll be different. The Darch immediately sent another message. After you find the black cube, take a mythical companion beast to the top of it. In the middle of the cube, there's a circular dot. Get your mythical companion beast to stand there and release all its essence energy and send it inside the dot. Remember, it can only be a mythical companion beast. Essence energy must be injected into the dot, or you will bear the consequences. What will happen after the cube is opened? Joan asked. Why don't you give it a try yourself? If you don't have the guts, just wait for others to activate the cube. After all, if you don't take the huge benefits, there are plenty of people who will. The Darch gave one final reply before she ignored Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen was immediately put in a difficult spot. The Darch was clearly teasing him. She deliberately didn't mention what the black cube was to make him feel conflicted. This really makes me doubt life. You underestimate me too much. Zhou Wen packed his things and planned on taking a look at the black cube. Zhou Wen planned on using his phone to take a picture. The black cube was definitely something from a different dimension. Perhaps the mysterious phone would react to it. 
it wouldn't be too late to decide if he should try using the Thearka's method. Zhou Wen didn't dare go out in the open. He took advantage of the night to sneak to the spot where he discovered the Black Cube. There was an army stationed there, but it was mainly to prevent any anomalies from happening to the Black Cube. They didn't forbid humans from approaching, so it wasn't difficult to get close. Zhou Wen arrived at the roof of a nearby building which was already very close to the Black Cube. Standing at the edge of the building, he was only about 10 meters away from the corner of the Black Cube. Although it was nighttime, with Zhou Wen's eyesight, he could see it clearly, but he couldn't tell what material it was. It didn't look like metal or stone, nor did it look like a horn or bone. Instead, it looked like some man-made material. What is this? I hope the mysterious phone can divulge something. Zhou Wen held the mysterious phone and aimed it at the Black Cube. However, it left Zhou Wen somewhat disappointed. The mysterious phone didn't do a thing or lock onto it. It clearly wasn't interested in the Black Cube. Zhou Wen was put in a difficult spot. The Tharch had said that there were great benefits, but what if she was lying to him? If he really did as the Tharch said, it would be bad if he released a few demon monarch level dimensional creatures. However, after careful thought, Zhou Wen felt that the Tharch didn't seem to have any reason to do so. If the Tharch really wanted to mess with him, she could just make a wish. There was no need to go through so much trouble to trick him into coming here. Furthermore, he had not sent the things that the Dharch had asked him to buy. If he were to release a few terrifying creatures and ended up dying, who would deliver the items to her? Although the Dharch said it so easily as though she could find someone to deliver things to her at any time, how many humans dared to go to Chess Mountain? There were even fewer who dared to enter Chess Mountain to take the Void Flower. Zhou Wen suspected that there was only one pot of Void Flower in Chess Mountain. After some thought, he believed that the Dharch wouldn't let him die so easily, so he decided to give it a try. Zhou Wen was already prepared. He wore the most ordinary heavy armor of the runic heavy armored warrior. The armor could envelop his entire body. Furthermore, it was rather common in the peninsula of gods. Even if he was discovered, it wouldn't be easy to find out who he was. The garrison troops were all around the cube, and there wasn't anyone above. Taking advantage of the darkness, Zhou Wen pushed Go's steps to the extreme. He traversed more than 10 meters, like black smoke, and landed on the black cube without anyone noticing. After stepping onto the black cube, nothing abnormal happened. Only then did Zhou when he was sigh of relief and silently walked towards the center. At the center, Zhou when indeed discovered the circle that the arch mentioned. The black cube was about 50 meters in length, but the circle was only the size of a palm. Furthermore, it was only a shallow round mark. If Zhou when didn't know that it was useful, he wouldn't have noticed it. Which mythical companion beast should I use to give it a try? Zhou when thought to himself. Excluding Tyrant Behemoth who was evolving, Zhou when still had four mythical pets. Truth Listener, Banana Fairy, Demonic Neonate, and Six Winged. However, the first three hadn't reached the mythical stage yet. The real mythical stage was Six Winged. After sizing up his surroundings, and seeing that there wasn't anyone above him, he believed that even if he summoned Six Winged, no one would see him. Zhou Wen decided to summon Six Winged. After all, if anything were to happen, Six Winged was at the mythical stage. It should be able to deal with the problem, but Truth Listener and Banana Fairy might be instantly killed. Chapter 509 Famous in the Federation When Six Winged was summoned by Zhou Wen, its huge body stood on the cube, but it wasn't too obvious. However, its claws were a little too big. Its claws covered the tiny circle completely when pressed against it. As it was several times bigger than the circle, Zhou Wen didn't know if this would work. I'll give it a try. Zhou Wen was very careful. He didn't let the Six Winged Dragon immediately attempt it. He only made it stand there and left. He returned to the top of the building beside him, before letting the six-winged guardian dragon inject its essence energy into the circle. If anything were to happen, he could immediately retrieve the six-winged guardian dragon and escape. Although he felt that it was unlikely that the arch would harm him, he still had to be careful. The six-winged guardian dragon followed Zhou Wen's orders and pressed its paw on the circle, injecting its essence energy into it. Although Zhou Wen was mentally prepared, he was still alarmed the moment the six-winged guardian dragon injected essence energy. The entire black cube instantly lit up, illuminating the surroundings. Zhou Wen was alarmed. He wanted to retrieve the six-winged guardian dragon, but he realized that the six-winged guardian dragon seemed to have been sucked into the black cube, preventing him from retrieving it. Zhou Wen's expression changed drastically when he saw the black cube situation. It was no longer a black cube. It was like a huge six-sided screen. The four sides of the screen were glowing brightly, resembling liquid crystal displays. There were even images on it. The images weren't anything else, but the six-winged guardian dragon that was standing on the cube. Furthermore, it was the six-winged guardian dragon after it released its life soul. One could imagine the scene. 
The four sides of the screen were all 50 meters long and were many times clearer than any 4K high-definition screen. Even the tiny dark lines on the scales of the six-winged guardian dragon could be seen clearly. The 50-meter tall screen could be seen more than 10 kilometers away. Anyone who had not slept and was outside could see the image on the cube from all directions. Furthermore, the top of the cube was also glowing brightly, illuminating the six-winged dragon like a statue. It would be impossible not to see it. Now, Joe, Wen was secretly glad that he wasn't standing on top. Otherwise, he would really be famous. The military was alarmed, likewise for the reporters and gossip mongers. Phones rang everywhere. In just two to three minutes, the quiet night suddenly became lively. People rushed to the streets or ran to the high buildings and looked in the direction of the cube. Dear viewers, dear viewers, this is news today. I'm reporter Xiao Jing. I'm putting my life at risk going live here at the Black Cube, which appeared a few days ago. Just a minute ago, it suddenly lit up. We can see that the side of the cube has become an ultra-high-definition big screen. And on the cube, there's a terrifying dimensional creature. It looks like it's a legendary dragon from the West District. Furthermore, it has six wings, and its body is burning with terrifying black flames. It's very likely to have escaped from the cube. Will such a terrifying creature bring great disaster to our city? The darts tricked me again. Zhou Wen was somewhat dumbfounded. He had been trying to retrieve the six-winged dragon, but he couldn't. The army had already started advancing, and the sound of police sirens could be heard everywhere. Clearly, they were rushing over. Now, Six-Winged Guardian Dragon is completely famous. I'm afraid that everyone in Luoyang knows about it. Zhou Wen attempted to retrieve the Six-Winged Guardian Dragon time and time again, but he failed. Unfortunately, Zhou Wen thought about things too simply. It wasn't just known by everyone in Luoyang. In fact, the moment the Six-Winged Guardian Dragon activated the Black Cube, the black cubes around the world lit up and displayed the projection of the six-winged guardian dragon. The high-level officials and ordinary people in the various cities of the Federation all looked at the magnificent six-winged guardian dragon from every angle. Even those who didn't see the cube screen with their own eyes would have definitely seen all kinds of headlines. Without a doubt, the six-winged guardian dragon and the cube made the headlines at the same time. It just took a few minutes. Everyone in the world now knew that there was such a six-winged guardian dragon. Just as Zhou Wen was feeling anxious, he saw the cube's screen change again. The projection of the six-winged guardian dragon vanished, turning into a ranking with a ranking of 1 to 100. However, the other rankings were all empty. Only the name of the six-winged guardian dragon appeared at first place. It gave off a feeling of invincibility. Everyone in the Federation looked at the lone name on the cube. No one knew what was happening or what it represented. What the hell is this? Zhou Wen was equally puzzled but he saw that the six-winged guardian dragon's body seemed to have undergone some minute changes amidst the light. After three minutes, the military and media helicopters rushed over, and the six-winged guardian dragon's glow disappeared. Zhou Wen, who had been trying to retrieve the six-winged guardian dragon, finally managed to retrieve it. The six-winged guardian dragon vanished, and the radiant cube dimmed, turning pure black again. Zhou Wen didn't hesitate any further, as he escaped stealthily. Now, Luoyang was in chaos. People were everywhere on the streets and upstairs. All sorts of vehicles and helicopters were everywhere, but no one noticed Zhou Wen. When Zhou Wen left, he saw the car and Shun usually drove. Clearly, he had rushed over as well, but he didn't know if Ntianzwa was sitting inside. Beep! 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 Zhou Wen was on his way back when he heard a message from his phone. He opened it and saw that it was from the Larch. I never expected you to have a real mythical companion beast. I've underestimated you. Not bad, not bad. That's not my companion beast. Zhou Wen held back his frustration and denied. The Darch did not seem to believe him at all. She sent another message. I didn't lie to you. Take a closer look at your six-winged guardian dragon and see if it has changed. There will be a surprise. I already said that it's not my companion beast. Zhou Wen was slightly taken aback when he heard that. He sent a message to the Darch before taking out his mysterious phone to check the information on the six-winged guardian dragon. With a single glance, he discovered that the information on the six-winged guardian dragon had indeed undergone a huge change. He took a closer look at the data and was pleasantly surprised. Chapter 510 Life Protection Six-winged guardian dragon, mythical. Life providence, life guardian dragon. Life soul, wings of black flame. Wheel of destiny, the last life guardian. Strength, 80. Speed, 80. Constitution, 80. Essence energy, 80. Talent skill, sanctification, Poison Breath, Dragon's Rage, Hell Demonic Flame, Six Wings Slash. Companion Form, Holy Flaming Dragon Wings. 
Zhou Wen remembered that the six winged guardian dragon stats were around 60, but now, all of them had become 80. According to the advancement of his companion beasts, the top mythical creatures likely had 81 stat points. Now that the six winged guardian dragon stats had reached 80, it could be considered top notch. The life providence and wheel of destiny had slight changes. He had no idea what the word, life, meant, but he believed that it couldn't be a bad thing. It gained an additional sanctification skill, making it have five skills. It was an obvious upgrade. The demonic flaming dragon wings had been upgraded into holy flaming dragon wings as well. How is it? Are you surprised? The Tharch sent another message. Seeing that the Tharch had already determined that the six-winged guardian dragon was his companion beast, he tacitly acknowledged the truth. He asked, Can a beast be strengthened as long as it's recognized by the black cube? Dream on. This is a reward for the first companion beast that enters the rankings. It happens only once. You lucked out big time. Soon, the Tharch sent another message. However, your six-winged dragon's potential isn't good. You should have just used that earring to receive the enhancement. It should have been able to advance to the mythical stage directly. Shouwen didn't regret not listening to the Tharch. Truth Listener's advancement to the mythical stage was indeed good, but Truth Listener was more inclined towards support abilities. What Shouwen needed now was actual combat strength. After the enhancement of the six-winged guardian dragon, its strength would likely increase significantly. It could play a bigger role when fighting Torch Dragon, boosting Zhou Wen's chances of killing Torch Dragon. Zhou Wen's phone rang again, but this time, it wasn't the Darch, but a call from Ensheng. And Sheng and Zhou Wen killed the six-winged guardian dragon together. He also knew that Zhou Wen had lured Medusa to fight the six-winged guardian dragon. Therefore, he immediately guessed that the six-winged guardian dragon was Zhou Wen's. Young Master One, what was the situation with the black cube? And Sheng didn't beat about the bush with Zhou Wen and directly got straight to the point. Zhou Wen recounted what he knew, but he skipped the matter regarding the Darch. You mean to say that the cube is actually a ranking for companion beasts? And Sheng thought and asked after hearing that. From the looks of it, it's true. However, we can't rule out the possibility that there's something else in the black cube. Otherwise, the six-winged guardian dragon wouldn't have been strengthened, Zhou Wen said. However, and Sheng's tone became much more relaxed. That's good then. The overseer has been constantly worried about the cube. From the looks of it, it shouldn't pose a threat anytime soon. By the way, congratulations young master one. You are now the third person in Luoyang to possess a mythical creature. And Shun sighed. Back when you first came to Luoyang, you were only at the mortal stage. In less than a year, you even have a mythical companion beast. In terms of speed, even the geniuses of the six families aren't as fast as you. Who are the other two? Zhou Wen asked. Naturally, it's Chancellor Lung and the Overseer. If they weren't here, how could the infamily of Luoyang continue standing, to the point of the six families fearing them? And Shun said with a smile. Zhou Wen didn't ask what their companion beasts were. They were the secrets and trump cards of everyone. After returning to his dorm, Zhou Wen couldn't wait to summon the six-winged guardian dragon in its companion form. Six fiery dragon wings appeared behind him, but they weren't black anymore. Instead, they were pure white. They looked much prettier, but he didn't know if there were any changes to their effects. After dispelling the dragon wings, Zhou Wen took out his phone and entered the Zhuolu Instance dungeon. He wanted to try and see if the six-winged guardian dragon could fight Qiongqi. Torch Dragon had bright torch vision world which ignored strength and speed. However, Qiongqi was a dimensional creature that relied on strength and speed. Now that the six-winged guardian dragon's prowess had greatly increased, it might perhaps put up a fight with Qiongqi. Taking the six-winged guardian dragon to the temple where Qiongqi was, the six-winged guardian dragon's originally black body and wings turned white once it saw Qiongqi. It became a white dragon, a likely manifestation of its additional sanctification skill. Even though the six-winged dragon was in its sanctification state, its speed and strength were still inferior to Qiongqi's. However, it could still barely put up a fight. It was unlike before when it was completely thrashed with no ability to resist at all. The stronger the six-winged guardian dragon was, the more Zhou Wen realized how terrifying Qiongqi was. Such a powerful six-winged guardian dragon was actually suppressed by Qiongqi. The six-winged guardian dragon was barely able to put up a fight and didn't die instantaneously. However, the blood-colored avatar wasn't that lucky. With Qiongqi suddenly attacking it, Zhou Wen controlled the blood-colored avatar to dodge twice before it was smacked to death by Qiongqi's claw. Something strange happened. The blood-colored avatar was clearly hit, but it didn't die. Instead, the six-winged guardian dragon's body suddenly exploded as it died for no reason. With the death of the six-winged guardian dragon, the blood-colored avatar couldn't last much longer before being killed by Qiongqi. 
Could it be that the last life guardian is the miraculous ability to take the master's place in death? Zhou Wen guessed as he immediately restarted the dungeon and experimented a few more times. Just as Zhou Wen had guessed, as long as the six-winged guardian dragon was still alive, it could help him withstand a single death. Furthermore, this ability could also be used even while it was in its dragon wing's form. This enhancement is just too good. Zhou Wen increasingly felt that his choice of doing the enhancement was right. This way, he would have an additional life. Even if he were to die in the future, the six-winged guardian dragon could still protect him once. This was even more useful than any mythical creature. After all, he only had one life. No matter how many mythical creatures he had, they would be useless once Zhou Wen died. While Zhou Wen was studying the six-winged guardian dragon, the six families and some wealthy families were also studying the matter. People from the east and west district even began arguing. As the six-winged guardian dragon had appeared in Luoyang, the people of the east district naturally believed that it belonged to an expert in the east district. However, the west district people said that the six-winged guardian dragon was clearly a companion beast of the west district, one that wasn't available in the east district. So the owner of the six-winged guardian dragon was definitely a west district citizen, who happened to be passing by Luoyang. The various large families were also guessing who the owner of the six-winged guardian dragon was. Their main suspects were naturally Lung Zongzheng and Ntianzua. However, after many probes and investigations, both of them denied it. At the same time, the six families were not idle. They were all researching how the six-winged guardian dragon had appeared on the cube and what its purpose was. You mean that the mythical six-winged guardian dragon is Zhou Wins? Inside the family, and Tianzhu's expression changed when he heard in Sheng's report. Chapter 511 Fighting Torch Dragon Again Yes! Back then, young master one Zhang Yuji and I killed a six-winged guardian dragon together. However, it didn't drop a companion egg. Later on, young master one lured Medusa to fight with the six-winged guardian dragon. The outcome resulted in a companion egg. Now that the six-winged guardian dragon has been strengthened, its combat strength should be considered high among mythical creatures. And Shun said, That's not necessarily the case. Wild mythical companion beasts are ultimately inferior to those you nurture, said Ntianzua. And Shun didn't refute him and only said with a smile, Overseer, you are right. However, no matter what, that's a powerful mythical creature. With it being young master wins, he can be considered a cornerstone of our Luoyang city. When did you degenerate to the point of relying on a student? When did our Luoyang city degenerate to the point of relying on a student as a cornerstone? And Tianzhu glared at Nsheng. There's nothing I can do about that. I also want to be a cornerstone, but I don't have a mythical pet. And Nsheng said as he threw up his hands. What's the rush? Isn't our planet White Cloud Mountain underway? And Tianzhu said. And Nsheng replied. We still don't know if we can kill that mythical creature on White Cloud Mountain. Even if we can kill it, it might not drop a companion egg. You killed three or four mythical creatures previously, but none of them dropped a companion egg. That's because we were unlucky. The chance of mythical creatures dropping companion eggs is about a third. It should drop one this time. And Tianzhu glared at him and continued. In short, we used to rely on ourselves. We rely on ourselves now. It will be the same in the future. Don't place your hopes on others. Yes, overseer. And Sheng paused before asking. What if young master when wants to go to Zhuolu? Should I stop him? Does he have the guts? The mythical creatures at Zhuolu are not something ordinary mythical companion beasts can match. I don't think he has the guts to go. To obtain a six-winged guardian dragon is only his luck. Do you really expect him to kill mythical creatures? Said Ntianzua. Shouwen was reading the news in his dorm. Many of the media outlets he saw on his phone listed the appearance of the six-winged guardian dragon and the cube's rankings as the headlines. The entire federation probably knew about the six-winged guardian dragon by now. I wonder what use is a companion beast's ranking? Zhou Wen thought to himself. The Tharch didn't mention what the ranking was for, and Zhou Wen didn't figure out what it could be used for. However, he believed that it wasn't that simple. Black cubes had appeared all over the world. Was such a huge formation just to create a useless ranking? Zhou Wen felt that the terrifying existences in the dimensional zones weren't that bored. The ranking definitely had some use, but he didn't know what it was yet. Zhou Wen didn't grind dungeons today. He was considering how he could kill Cheongchi or Torch Dragon. The six-winged guardian dragon could only just fight Cheongchi, but Zhou Wen wasn't strong enough. He couldn't dodge Cheongchi's attack and instead became a burden. Every time Cheongchi killed the blood-colored avatar, it was useless no matter how strong the six-winged guardian dragon was. If he wanted to kill Torch Dragon, he would have to get over the bright Torch Vision world. The six-winged guardian dragon could already face Torch Dragon head-on, but it could not block the bright Torch Vision world. It's still harder to kill Cheongchi. I can only continue to think of something regarding Torch Dragon. 
Zhou Wen thought for a long time before he came up with a method to kill Torch Dragon. Torch Dragon's speed was much slower than Xiong Qi's. After the strengthening of the Six-Winged Guardian Dragon, its speed had already surpassed Torch Dragon's by a hair's breadth. It was only because of Bright Torch Vision World that it could not defeat Torch Dragon. The Crystal Mirror Zhou Wen had obtained could restrain Torch Dragon, but it was too small. At most, it could only block his face. Furthermore, Torch Dragon's eyes were too wide, as if they were growing on both sides. It was impossible to use the crystal mirror to block his vision. The size of the crystal mirror could only block one of its eyes at most. After some thought, there was only one way to deal with Torch Dragon. That was to transform Six Winged into Dragon Wings to boost Show Wind's flying speed. Then, he could use his movement techniques and speed to dodge the Torch Dragon's bright torch vision world gaze, preventing it from seeing him. Of course, it was impossible to completely dodge it. After all, no matter how fast Zhou Wen was, it was impossible for Torch Dragon to completely miss him. However, with a crystal mirror, it shouldn't be difficult to block one angle of its vision. In that case, it gave Zhou Wen enough space. However, it also required repeated experiments in combat. It wasn't something he could do just by theorizing it. Plans were one thing, but there were often many problems when executing them. He needed to repeatedly test them. Now, the last problem is how to kill Torch Dragon. After so many battles with Torch Dragon, Zhou Wen realized that its body was even more powerful than the Six-Winged Guardian Dragons. The Six-Winged Guardian Dragon's attack could only damage its scales. A small number of attacks would not be of much use. The effects of Overlord Sword Sword Beam wasn't too obvious. After some thought, Zhou Wen decided to rely on the Poison Dragon Palm or Demonic Neonate's Ancient Sword to sneak an attack on Torch Dragon. After figuring out the steps to kill Torch Dragon, Zhou Wen entered the temple again. Before he went to Torch Dragon, he first put on the soft armor formed by the epic golden warrior, and the heavy armor formed by the runic heavy armored warrior. The six-winged guardian dragon appeared behind him in the form of dragon wings. He wore the truth listener earring on his ear, holding the overlord sword in one hand, and the banana fan in the other. At the same time, he summoned demonic neonate, and got her to lie on the blood-colored avatar's back. Her mission was to constantly search for an opportunity to launch a sneak attack. Now, the blood-colored avatar was wearing heavy armor with black magma patterns. It had three pairs of holy dragon wings on its back. It had a huge sword in one hand, and a banana fan in the other. It looked odd, but it also gave off a powerful feeling. However, Demonic Neonate, who was lying on its back, instantly reduced that domineering and powerful feeling to only about 30%. In general, it felt like a powerful male nanny. Taking a deep breath, Zhou Wen opened a temple, and sent the blood-colored avatar charging in. Torch Dragon immediately saw him, and spat out a mouthful of black smoke. It churned towards the blood-colored avatar like a tidal wave. After fanning the banana fan a few times, the Granding Wind immediately sent the black smoke back. Without waiting for Torch Dragon to react, the six dragon wings on the blood-colored avatar's back flapped. Immediately, the blood-colored avatar's body flashed behind Torch Dragon like a phantom, and slashed at Torch Dragon's neck domineeringly. The sword beam spun violently, as it slashed at Torch Dragon like a wheel of light. Torch Dragon's reaction wasn't slow either. It turned its head to look at the sword beam as a flame-like beam shot out from its eyes, shattering it. At the same time, a lash of its gigantic tail left behind after images as it struck the blood-colored avatar in midair. Its speed was unbelievable. The dragon wings flapped as he moved in midair, with ghost steps, dodging Torch Dragon's tail attack. At the same time, Overlord's sword slashed out once again, slashing at Torch Dragon's vital point. Chapter 512 The Thearch's Treasure Trove Zhou Wen's figure flashed like a phantom as he dodged left and right. He kept slashing out sword beams, but they were all stopped by Torch Dragon. He ultimately failed to injure it. Zhou Wen wasn't in a rush. Instead, Torch Dragon was somewhat impatient. Its body emitted waves of energy that radiated through the entire palace, leaving Zhou Wen with no room to dodge. Holding the Overlord's sword tightly, he unleashed Transcendent Flying Immortal in passing. Sword Beam slashed violently and collided with the ripples as both Sword Beams and Ripple shattered. There were just too many ripples and Transcendent Flying Immortal couldn't dispatch all of them. When the ripples struck Zhou Wen's body, they immediately sent him flying as he slammed into a metal pillar in the palace. Zhou Wen realized that there were many holes in his armor, but his body wasn't injured. After the first layer of his heavy armor was penetrated by the ripples, the soft armor inside suffered some damage, but it wasn't completely penetrated. This armor and soft armor are indeed useful. Zhou Wen couldn't help but be overjoyed. The hard and soft double armor was actually able to withstand Torch Dragon's attack. It only caused him to receive some shock damage. This was much better than he had expected. 
When Torch Dragon saw that the blood-colored avatar wasn't dead, its eyes immediately flashed. This was the precursor to using Bright Torch Vision World. Joe Wen abruptly got to his feet and activated Go Steps once again. The six wings on his back flapped as he moved behind Torch Dragon. Torch Dragon quickly turned its head and looked in Joe Wen's direction. Its eyes had already turned mirror-like. No matter how fast Joe Wen's movement speed was, it wasn't as fast as its head turning. It was as though Zhou Wen's figure was about to be caught by the corner of its eye when he threw the crystal mirror at Torch Dragon's eye whilst moving. He originally imagined that the crystal mirror could block Torch Dragon's line of sight, but to his surprise, Torch Dragon's cognitive abilities suddenly sped up. The crystal mirror's trajectory immediately deviated from its eye. The blood-colored avatar was immediately reflected in its eye, and the game's screen turned black. Even the six-winged guardian dragon's life guardian protection was useless. The six-winged guardian dragon exploded first before the blood-colored avatar died. Life guardian protection was only a transfer of damage. If Zhou Wen was injured, it would be transferred to it, but there was no way for him to leave the Bright Torch Vision World. From the looks of it, I still need more practice to block Bright Torch Vision World. Zhou Wen wasn't discouraged as he continued grinding by dripping his blood and respawning. He had long expected that it was impossible to succeed in one attempt. It was unknown how many tens of thousands of failure scientists had to undergo before they could produce results. What Joe Wen was doing was equivalent to experimenting. What he wanted wasn't luck, but a 100% chance of killing Torch Dragon. Without sufficient confidence, Joe Wen wouldn't go to the temple in reality. That would be harming himself and others. Before fighting Torch Dragon, Joe Wen would first grind the rare dimensional creatures, Sun Beast, Baby Tiger, Elegant Emperor's Avatar Puppet, and so on. If a companion egg dropped, it would definitely be useful for future fusion. Joe Wen had a nagging feeling that if he could combine rare life providences, life souls, and skills together, he might be able to form a pet that was even crazier than a mythical pet. However, the difficulty of fusion wasn't any easier than having a mythical pet drop. He would need countless attempts. On the dead man tree, the flower that Jack bloomed after his death finally withered and produced a tiny fruit. It was unknown how long it would take to ripen. Tyrant Behemoth remained in evolution. It looked like it needed more time to evolve to the mythical stage than it did when advancing to the epic stage. This fellow won't really become as big as a mountain after advancing to the mythical stage, right? Zhou Wen was secretly worried. If it was really that big, it wouldn't be able to enter many dimensional zones. Zhou Wen was still grinding dungeons one day, when Li Xian sent the items that he had previously requested. Apart from one chemical, he had bought everything on the list. There wasn't much time left until the Thearchus deadline. After Li Xian left, Zhou Wen used the Void Flower to teleport the items over. Then, he sent the Arch a message saying that the material she wanted wasn't easy to obtain and couldn't be bought in the nearby cities. If she really wanted it, she would have to wait for some time. A month should be enough, right? You must obtain that material. The Arch replied. I spent a lot of money buying materials. I'm almost running out of money. Zhou Wen continued complaining. He wasn't trying to extort her, but he was afraid that the Arch would think that it was easy for him to obtain these items that would only serve to her asking him for items every now and then. He didn't have the time to buy things for her. Are you planning on turning into a cat again? The skill crystal I gave you is a mythical skill crystal. There aren't many of those amongst you humans, right? You only bought those few items, and you are telling me that you have no money? Do you think I don't know the price? The Thearka's message quickly returned. Oh no! Showin still imagined that the Darch was as easy to fool as before. He had forgotten that she could surf the internet. She probably had a better understanding of humans than Joe Wen himself. Although a mythical skill crystal is precious, you know the situation of humans now. No one can use it, and there's no way to price it. It's really not easy to sell. The crystal is still in my hands. The money to buy these things came from my savings. I really don't have much left. Joe Wen was certain that he wasn't wrong to say that there was no way to find the price of the mythical crystal online. That's true. You humans are too weak and can't use good stuff. But the worst things I have here are those. There's no lower level trash. The Thearka's reply nearly made Zhou Wen, who was drinking water, choke. How many treasures are there in Chess Mountain? Mythic Essence Energy Skill Crystals are only trash. No, I have to think of a way to crack Chess Mountain in the future. Zhou Wen cursed inwardly. After obtaining Six Winged, Zhou Wen did indeed have the right to challenge Chess Mountain in the game. Now, he likely had the strength to deal with a fake fairy in Deer Terrace Pavilion but there wasn't just one fake fairy inside. If the six of them were to attack together, Zhou Wen didn't know if he could handle them. Now that he was focusing on Torch Dragon, he didn't plan on going just now. If it's not convenient for you to provide payment now, I'll just sell everything I have. I'll put it on the tab. Zhou Wen sent a message. There's no need. 
Aren't you in the city not far from Chess Mountain? I'll tell you a place. Go and look for it. You should be able to find something valuable. The Darch was clearly not as petty as Jowen. Chapter 513 White Cloud Mountain Where is it? It can't be inside Chess Mountain, right? Jowen asked warily. If the Darch wanted him to enter Chess Mountain in reality, Jowen wouldn't go no matter what. That place was a huge trap. Jowen guessed that even if the six families took all their mythical companion beasts with them, they might not be able to conquer it. According to legend, Chowdo was a place with numerous mythical creatures in ancient times. No one knew if those mythical creatures that had helped Chowda fight in the war remained inside. The seven saints of Mount May, the four generals of the M.O. family, and so on were extremely terrifying existences even among mythical creatures. Killing a dragon was too easy. Jowen guessed that if he encountered them, even with the six-winged guardian dragon, he would probably be killed instantly. Don't worry. It's not in Chess Mountain. I've seen your present map. That place is in Funio Mountain. Now, it should be called White Cloud Mountain. The Darch seemed to have seen through Zhou Wen's thoughts. White Cloud Mountain is also a dimensional zone, right? Zhou Wen had heard of White Cloud Mountain before. White Cloud Mountain and Mount Laojun were part of the Funio Mountain range, but their positions were somewhat different. Also, the nature of the two was completely different. Mount Laojun was safer. As long as one didn't kill or step on any plants, one's life wouldn't be in danger. However, White Cloud Mountain was different. Ever since it transformed into a dimensional zone, the mountain range had been enveloped by clouds. It was faintly discernible like a divine mountain. Joe had heard that only a few people who entered White Cloud Mountain were able to survive. Occasionally, there would be people who could survive, but they would die for no reason a few days later. According to the people who came out alive, it was very difficult to tell their bearings inside White Cloud Mountain's fog. Even companions that were inches away would disappear as they walked, never to be seen again alive. Not even their corpses were found. According to them, they also saw an immortal palace on White Cloud Mountain. That immortal palace wasn't built on the mountain, but in the clouds. Jade stones were the foundation, and golden stones were on top. There were fairies dancing in the air. Without exception, those who saw the immortal palace all died in the end. No one survived. Furthermore, when they died, their faces were filled with joy. Therefore, White Cloud Mountain was also nicknamed the Immortal Ascension Mountain. Anyone who went there would have their lives taken away by an immortal, and they would ascend to the immortal palace to enjoy life. Jowen didn't know if they managed to enjoy life, but he didn't want to die. What valuable things can there be in a place that isn't a dimensional zone? On a peak on the southeast of White Cloud Mountain, there's a mysterious stone that looks like a rabbit. The good stuff is beneath that mysterious stone, said the Darch. I heard that White Cloud Mountain is really terrifying. Everyone who goes there dies. I'm afraid that I won't be able to bring anything back alive. Jowen said. Anyway, I've already told you where the item is. It's up to you whether you want to go or not. No matter whether you want to go or not, don't tell me that you lack money in the future. The Darch said. Do you have a way to enter White Cloud Mountain? Jowen asked. Close your eyes and enter without looking at anything. That way, nothing will happen. The Darch said. But how can I find that mysterious rock with my eyes closed? Jowen asked. Is that thing on your ear just for show? Whether you want to go or not, don't bother me. I'm busy. The Darch replied disdainfully. Jowen was depressed. The Darch even knew Truth Listener's ability. It looked like he couldn't fool her. Jowen checked White Cloud Mountain's information online and found the place the Darch had mentioned. That place was rather famous on White Cloud Mountain. When there wasn't any dimensionalization in the past, it was a scenic spot named Jade Rabbit's Lunar Prayer. Legend had it that Jade Rabbit had descended to the mortal world and gone to White Cloud Mountain to have fun. Due to the stunning scenery at White Cloud Mountain, Jade Rabbit forgot the time and missed its opportunity to return to the Moon Palace. It could only watch helplessly as the moon rose from the east, with it never returning. Thus, Jade Rabbit laid on the mountain peak and prayed to the east day after day, hoping that the Moon Palace Fairy would come to take it back to the Moon Palace. It was only a legend. After the dimensionalization, no one knew what it had become, nor was it known if the Moon Rabbit Stone was still there. The Darch said that I'll be fine as long as I don't open my eyes. This is very beneficial to me. Zhou considered visiting White Cloud Mountain. The Darch had casually produced a mythical essence energy skill crystal. Zhou felt that it definitely wasn't an ordinary item if it managed to catch her eye and let her remember it. In any case, as he had nothing to do on campus, Zhou decided to pay White Cloud Mountain a visit. After all, he could still game and grind dungeons along the way. It wouldn't affect anything. The chick and antelope had to be placed in Wang Lu's care once again. Although Zhou Wen wanted Li Xian to raise them, the fellow was cultivating so seriously that he far exceeded Zhou Wen's intensity. 
He had no time to take care of the two creatures. As for taking them to White Cloud Mountain, that was impossible. If the chick were to open its eyes and see the immortal palace, it would be dead. Zhou Wen was counting on it to become a fighter when it grew up. He couldn't let it take the risk so easily. How did little Fei Fei lose so much weight after you took care of it for two days? Did you torture it? Wang Lu rolled her eyes at Zhou Wen when she saw the thin chick. How would I dare mistreat it? I serve delicious food and drinks all day long. It's better than what I eat. Zhou Wen actually found it odd. The chick was magically thin. After making a trip to Mount Laojun, it lost weight the moment it returned. Zhou Wen suspected that the antelope was up to no good. Back when he was gaming in front of the wordless monument, the antelope had taken it to the top of Mount Laojun. It seemed to have lost weight after coming down. He had no idea what they did up there. You owe me a lot of lunches and dinners. If this continues, I'm afraid you won't be able to pay me back even after I graduate. Wang Lu seriously wrote down the foster care that Zhou Wen required from her in her diary, so that she could settle scores with him. I'll pay you back slowly. I'll be able to pay it all back eventually. Zhou Wen had no choice. The two of them were dimensional creatures. He was worried that they might cause trouble if he let any ordinary person rear them. After returning to his dorm, Zhou Wen called in Sheng, asking him to help him apply for a leave of absence for a few days. If he left the school for a longer period of time, the procedures would be more complicated. Although White Cloud Mountain wasn't far away, he didn't know when he would come out once he entered the dimensional zone. No problem. I'll give you a pass. When you return, you can enter and leave the school freely. There's no need to go to the trouble of applying for a leave of absence every time. And Shun said, There's such a pass? Zhou Wen was somewhat surprised. Generally, it's for postgraduate students. According to the rules, ordinary university students aren't allowed to have a pass. However, you are naturally an exception. By the way, young Master One, where are you planning to go this time? And Shun asked. I want to visit White Cloud Mountain. Zhou Wen and Sheng had experienced life and death situations, so there was naturally no need to hide it. Chapter 514 Spatial Crystal Why are you going to White Cloud Mountain? And Sheng was somewhat surprised. I heard that the dimensional zone there is quite interesting. I would like to pay a visit. Zhou Wen naturally couldn't say that he was going there to dig for treasure after hearing what the Arch had to say. White Cloud Mountain is too dangerous. We've already been stationed there for a few years, but we still haven't been able to ascend the Jade Emperor Peak. If you really want to go to White Cloud Mountain, you have to remember that you mustn't open your eyes after entering. Otherwise, once you see a mirage like the Immortal Palace, even a mythical companion beast might not be able to save you. And Sheng said solemnly, Why can't I open my eyes? Zhou Wen already knew of this taboo, but he never expected and Sheng and company to know about it. I don't know. It's just like small Buddha temple. They have all kinds of unreasonable things. As long as you open your eyes and see it, you will definitely die. There's no reason at all. And Sheng paused for a moment before saying, You must not go to Jade Emperor Peak either. Even if you close your eyes, you will still be injured by the strange forbidden power there. There will be no way out. I understand. I'm just paying a visit. I might not even enter the mountain. Zhou Wen asked for more details before realizing that Sheng and company had a deep understanding of White Cloud Mountain. Apart from Jade Emperor Peak, they had basically figured everything out. Zhou Wen knew that sacrifices were inevitable to gain such a deep understanding of White Cloud Mountain. They weren't like Zhou Wen, who had the mysterious phone to explore without any scruples. Even if they were all epic experts, the strangeness of the dimensional zones was impossible to guard against. Once an unforeseen accident happened, epic experts would easily die as well. Zhou Wen planned on taking a look first. If he could find the tiny palm symbol, he wouldn't go up the mountain first. He could download White Cloud Mountain with the tiny palm symbol, and use his phone to figure it out before heading up. With that said, Zhou Wen hesitated for a moment before asking, How's the progress on Zhuolu? I knew that you would definitely have your sights on it after you obtained the Six-Winged Guardian Dragon. I can tell you with complete certainty that you can only die if you take the Six-Winged Guardian Dragon there. And Sheng told Zhou when some of the things they had recently discovered. The experts were actually able to determine that the mythical creatures in the temple were Torch Dragon and Xiongqi. This surprised Zhou Wen. However, they could only determine their names. They had no means of conquering the temple. Their understanding of Torch Dragon and Xiongqi was far inferior to Zhou Wen's. They couldn't even figure out what abilities Torch Dragon and Xiongqi had. From the looks of it, I could only rely on myself on this trip to the temple, Zhou Wen thought. Since you want to go to White Cloud Mountain, wait another two days. I'll be going to White Cloud Mountain then. I'll take you along. And Shun said. Zhou Wen wasn't in a hurry to go. He felt that going with Shun was a good idea. After all, 
they had already explored the Jade Rabbit's lunar prayer. If he couldn't find the tiny palm symbol, it would be better for Enshun to take him up. It was much better than him going up alone and running around blindly. After making the arrangements with Enshun, the two ended the call. Zhou Wen picked up his phone and continued grinding the dungeons. They were leaving in two days, so he couldn't be bothered to collect the chick and antelope. After all, they were happy to be with Wang Lu. The food and drinks there were better than with Zhou Wen. After repeatedly grinding dungeons, Zhou Wen killed a large number of musical note sprites. Now, there were more than a thousand of the seven different musical note sprites. When summoned together, and under the command of the Golden Harp, the sound waves produced from their combined attacks could break through the defenses of the runic heavy armored warrior, but they were still far from being able to fight a mythical creature. Zhou Wen estimated that he needed at least tens of thousands of musical note sprites. Only then could the sound wave attacks produced be comparable to the strength in Six Winged. Zhou Wen wasn't in a hurry. After all, he was here to grind the Sun Beast, so he could also grind the musical note sprites along the way. He obtained a few musical note sprite companion eggs on each trip. Unfortunately, in the music temple, the goldfish didn't have the luck attribute, so he could only have his luck boosted by the baby tiger. As usual, Zhou Wen came to the musical fountain square. To his surprise, he saw the golden harp again. He had been to the musical fountain square many times, but apart from the first time, he hadn't discovered the golden harp. Zhou Wen imagined that the golden harp wouldn't appear again, so he was quite surprised to see it again. Zhou Wen was overjoyed. He immediately ordered the six-winged guardian dragon to charge forward. The Golden Harp used its powers to make the 100,000 musical note sprites release a sonic wave, forming a huge sound blast. However, the Six-Winged Guardian Dragon was no longer the Six-Winged Guardian Dragon from before. It unleashed its full strength. Its six wings appeared at the same time, and its body turned white. Its body forcefully broke through the sound blast and arrived in front of the Golden Harp. With a single slap, it shattered the Golden Harp. Six-Winged has indeed become much stronger. Shouwen wasn't very happy. Even with more than a hundred thousand musical note sprites joining forces, they couldn't stop the six-winged guardian dragon. If he wanted to form the army of the musical note sprites, he would probably have to obtain at least hundreds of thousands of them before they could play a decisive role in the battle with mythical creatures. The golden harp didn't drop a companion egg, but a rare spatial stack crystal appeared. It had a space attribute plus three. This added another rare attribute to Zhou Wen. It was just that three points were not enough. In the next two days, Zhou Wen spent two days grinding dungeons at home. He had obtained quite a lot of runic heavy armored warrior and golden warriors, but the companion eggs of the baby tiger and the elegant emperor's avatar puppet never dropped. Zhou Wen could understand that it was rare for the baby tiger's companion egg to drop, but he never expected the elegant emperor's avatar puppet companion egg to be that difficult as well. Furthermore, skill crystals seldom dropped as well. Apart from Zhou Wen obtaining the substitute talisman skill for the first time, no other skill crystal dropped. Early in the morning, and Shung called to inform Zhou Wen that they would be heading to White Cloud Mountain. Zhou Wen packed his things, including the substitute talisman he had drawn. When he arrived outside the school and saw Sheng's car, he walked to the window and realized that Ntianzua was sitting in the back seat. He couldn't help but be slightly taken aback. Why didn't Ah Sheng tell me that Ntianzua would be coming? Zhou Wen found it a little odd, but he couldn't say anything. All he could do was open the door to the front passenger seat and get in. Zhou Wen had sat in this car many times in the past, but today, he found it odd. The atmosphere in the car just wasn't right. And Tianzhu's eyes were somewhat odd as well. Clearly, he didn't know that Zhou Wen was going to White Cloud Mountain as well. Chapter 515 Birth of the Game Young Master One, we are going to White Cloud Mountain's Red Birch Forest to hunt a mythical creature. Are you interested in joining us? And Sheng asked as he drove. Hunt a mythical creature? Zhou Wen was somewhat surprised. This was the first time he had heard of anyone hunting mythical creatures. And Shun said, That's right. There's a strange mythical creature in Red Birch Forest. We've been investigating it for several years. We've already done most of the groundwork. We are quite confident this time. Since you're going to White Cloud Mountain, why don't you join us? Take it as gaining some experience. I'm fine with that. Zhou entrusted and Shun very much. After all, they were hunting mythical creatures in real life. It was more dangerous so they would definitely have done more preparatory work. They definitely wouldn't risk their lives. Furthermore, even Ntianzua was taking action this time, so there shouldn't be much of a problem. However, Zhou Wen didn't wish to have too much contact with Ntianzua. He felt that he and Ntianzua weren't the same types of people. And Shum continued, I still don't know what that mythical creature in Red Birch Forest is called. We named it Love Letter. It's rather interesting. Overseer said that if a companion egg drops this time, it will belong to me. 
Perhaps I will have a mythical companion beast in the future. Love letter? How can there be such a name? Zhou Wen was somewhat astonished. There's a story behind it. Legend has it that the bark of the red birch tree is very thin and easily removed. Furthermore, it's very beautiful. Some people will use the bark of the red birch tree to write love letters to their lover. Although the dimensional creature in red birch forest doesn't look like a book, the skills it uses are related to words. It's rather difficult to deal with. It's unknown how many companion beasts have died in red birch forest in the past few years, just to roughly understand its various skills. And Sheng explained quite a bit of the mythical creature's abilities before saying, However, even if we know its abilities, it's impossible to kill a mythical creature without the same powers at the mythical stage. Therefore, Overseer has to personally take action this time. Otherwise, I won't be able to handle it myself. If you go with me, I'll be even more at ease. It's a good thing that both experts from Luoyang will be helping me kill a dimensional creature. Zhou Wen really didn't wish to have any nice stories of him and in Tianzhua, but he couldn't say anything uncultured. All he could do was remain silent. The mountain road is dangerous. Drive carefully. And Tianzhua, who was sitting behind with his eyes closed, said coldly. Yes. And Shun replied. Indeed, he didn't dare say another word. He secretly winked at Zhou Wen before focusing on driving. Zhou Wen had no interest in speaking. Just as he was about to close his eyes to rest, he suddenly heard his phone ring. Seeing that it was Huang Ji who called, Zhou Wen answered the call. Zhou Wen, our game is done. Huang Ji's excited voice sounded. Even in Sheng and in Tianzhua heard it. After the trial run the previous time, Zhou Wen didn't have much anticipation for Huang Ji's game. However, he still acted interested and said, That's great. Can you send me a copy? I can't wait to try it. Of course. I've already posted it online to begin the closed beta test. Go download this website and give me some suggestions after you're done playing. Huang Ji quickly sent a website address to Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen opened the page and saw that it was a gaming website. It was filled with closed and open beta games. Their game was called Dimension. Zhou Wen saw the game at the top. It was not because Huang Ji spent money that pushed his ranking so high, but because Huang Ji had just uploaded it. That made it appear at the top. Zhou Wen hurriedly downloaded the game. Thankfully, this wasn't a dimensional zone, or there might not be a signal. They had just arrived in the suburbs, so the signal was pretty good. After a while, Zhou Wen finished downloading the game and launched it. He realized that although the login interface was very simple, it wasn't bad. It looked rather good. After entering the game, Zhou Wen chose Tiger Cage Pass, which was the only option. When he entered the game, he couldn't help but be surprised. He had originally thought that the game Huang Ji had created was the standard 2D side-scrolling game. But now, it was completely different from when he trialed it. Even though it was a 2D side-scrolling game, both the NPCs and the details of the scenery had greatly improved. However, there were only two choices for characters, man or woman. After choosing a man, there was no skill selection interface like before. Instead, he entered a game tutorial interface. The tutorial introduced the game's operations and skill usage. Apart from the direction key, there were also five buttons in game. Then, the direction key and the other five buttons could be used in different key combinations for different skills. There were ten skills available in game. After remembering the method to deliver an attack, he could use the skills he needed. It's done pretty well. Zhou Wen was pleasantly surprised. He tried the maneuvering, and it was surprisingly fluid. It was similar to the popular fighting games in the past. The controls and feedback were a rather good experience. After entering the game, Tiger Cage Pass became a black and white ink style. Demonic soldiers were the same style as well. It looked surprisingly immersive. Zhou Wen controlled the game character to kill the demonic soldiers in Tiger Cage Pass and discovered that the various techniques and attacks of demonic soldiers were very similar to real ones. They were much more agile than when he tried the alpha. There was some difficulty. This, it's really not bad. Zhou Wen played for a while before becoming more and more surprised. This was far from what he had imagined. It was surprisingly good. Although playing games might not necessarily mean one could kill demonized soldiers, one could familiarize themselves with the various means of attack by the demonized soldiers in game. They could learn how to deal with them when encountering them in real life. To rookies who had not entered Tiger Cage Pass, it was quite helpful. It was much better than learning from videos. Zhou Wen stormed through the game and killed quite a number of demonized soldiers. The controls weren't a problem for him. He only took a brief look at them before he was able to cast all sorts of skills smoothly. Killing demonized soldiers was very easy. Soon, Zhou Wen discovered the mini-boss, Demonized General. After engaging in an intense battle with a demonized general, he found the game pretty good. 
The demonized general's behavior and skills were replicated very well, similar to the real demonized general. Zhou Wen gained the entire time. Behind him, and Tianzue had been resting with his eyes closed. When he heard Zhou Wen gaming, he couldn't help but open his eyes and frown. And Tianzue clearly didn't like Zhou Wen playing games all day. From his point of view, this was a form of obsession. And Shang was an extremely clever person. When he saw and Tianzue frown through the rearview mirror, he knew that things were bad. Hence he said, Young Master One, I heard that you and your classmates worked together to create a game that can be used to teach people about the various abilities of dimensional creatures. Is that it? Yes, production was just completed. It's my first time playing the closed beta. Currently, there's only a tiger cage pass dungeon. In game, there are demonized soldiers and demonized generals as monsters, and one can learn their behaviors and various skills through gaming. Through learning about how to deal with them in game, it will be useful in real life, but games are games after all. One still needs to practice the combination of various skills in combat. Joe Wen introduced. That's pretty good. Overseer, why don't you play the game that Joe Wen and company created? If it's feasible, it'll be helpful in understanding dimensional creatures. Perhaps it can be promoted. And Shun said. A game is just a game after all. If you have the time to play games, why don't you just spend time watching a video about it? And Tianzua closed his eyes again and continued resting. Chapter 516 Blood Text Scorpion After arriving at White Cloud Mountain's encampment, the person in charge took Antienzwa, and Sheng, and Zhou into White Cloud Mountain. Antienzwa didn't have much time, so he had to rush back regardless of whether they killed the mythical creature today. Zhou Wen looked at White Cloud Mountain from afar, and saw clouds lingering over it. The mountain was partially visible. It was indeed like a legendary immortal mountain. There were many red birch forests. The mythical creature was at the foot of White Cloud Mountain, so there was no need to ascend the mountain. However, it was also within the range of Bayan Mountain. There was also a chance to see the unusual sight of the Immortal Palace in the clouds. If we continue moving forward, we might end up in an Immortal Palace illusion. Put this on. And Shung handed Zhou when a balaclava. The balaclava was made of chemical fibers mixed with metal wires. After wearing it, it wouldn't affect one's breathing, but one's vision was blocked, and it was impossible to see anything outside. No matter what you hear, or what happens, Make sure not to take off the balaclava. And Sheng put his balaclava on after giving Zhou in the rules. And Tianzhua and the officers from the other encampments also wore balaclavas. They had their own methods. Some relied on their special companion beasts for visual, while some relied on their hearing. Some rode their mouths directly, allowing them to replace their eyes. And Sheng summoned a strange companion beast. The companion beast looked like a large eye with wings. It flew beside and Sheng and seemingly allowed him to see his surroundings. It was no different from normal. As for Ntianzua, he didn't summon a companion beast, nor was it clear what he had used. However, the balaclava didn't seem to affect his vision. He still moved as freely. Zhou Wen had truth listener, so he wasn't affected. The group followed an officer riding a companion beast into the depths of the Red Birch Forest. White Cloud Mountain was mysterious, but there weren't many dimensional creatures here. However, every dimensional creature that appeared here was extremely terrifying. At the very least, they were epic creatures. Rumor had it that the red birch forest was very beautiful, but since Zhou Wen could only listen and not see color, he did not think it looked beautiful. Overseer, the earth listener beast has reacted. Love letter should be somewhere not far ahead. An officer riding on a companion beast suddenly said, Prepare for battle. And Tianzue gave the order. Apart from Zhou Wen, everyone began preparing for battle. After advancing for a short while, Zhou Wen heard a dimensional creature appear in front of him. The dimensional creature looked very strange. It looked like a large scorpion, but it had transparent wings on its back. It was huge and longer than an adult's height. Unfortunately, Zhou Wen could only hear and couldn't see its color. Otherwise, he would have discovered many strange things. The large scorpion was snow white, but there were many blood-colored patterns on its body. If one looked carefully, they would see that those blood-colored patterns formed strange characters. When Zhou Wen and company discovered the strange scorpion, it had also discovered them. With a flick of its tail, a blood-colored glow immediately appeared on the stinger, forming a strange blood-colored incantation pattern. The incantation pattern was completely condensed from light and looked very magical. Zhou Wen had heard from Ensheng that this fellow had the ability to produce many things that resembled words. This was likely one of them, but Zhou Wen didn't know which one it was. While Zhou Wen was pondering, Ensheng and company had already begun preparing for battle. However, contrary to Zhou Wen's expectations, the blood text on the scorpion's tail didn't shoot at Zhou Wen and company. All he saw was its tail stabbing into the ground as the blood text fused into the ground before disappearing. At that instant, 
Zhou Wen saw the ground around him suffuse a blood-colored glow. The soil seemed to have been penetrated by the sanguine light as it emitted a lustrous red glow. The red beams varied in intensity, making Zhou Wen believe that he was in a huge light formation. The officers were clearly prepared. A companion beast beneath an officer raised its legs and condensed a holy white light. Then, it stomped on the ground. The holy light immediately spread out and covered the red light below, preventing the area where Zhou Wen and company were standing from being affected. A strange phenomenon happened in the area that was affected by the red light. It was as if everything had slowed down. When the wind blew past the red birch forest, the forest that should have been rustling seemed to be a recording that played slowly. As the leaves swayed, it became extremely slow. This is its slow text. If we don't have the corresponding counterforce, our speed will drop drastically. When the time comes, we won't be able to dodge its attack, much less kill it. We will be killed, and Shung said. As though he had discovered that the slow text was useless against them, a blood pattern flickered on the scorpion-like mythical creature's back as a blood-colored text rushed out. The blood-colored text wasn't directed at Joe when in company but towards a red birch tree. The blood-red text hit the red birch tree and disappeared in a flash. It was as though it had drilled into the tree. In the next second, the tree withered rapidly and died. The blood-red text flew out from the withered tree. However, the blood-red text had clearly changed. Its shape had changed, and the blood-colored light had also become more intense. The blood-colored text floated above the scorpion and emitted a red light. Wherever the red light shone, all the red birch trees seemed to come alive. The roots broke out of the ground, and the branches swayed as they swept towards Zhou Wen and company like tree demons. A cold light flickered on the back of an officer, and an ice fox-like life soul appeared. An icy beam erupted from the life soul, freezing the nearby demonized red birch trees. And Sheng no longer had the time to explain to Zhou Wen. The scorpion's body emitted a sanguine light as red words flew out from its body, transforming into streaks of blood that attacked Zhou Wen and company. And Sheng and a few officers collectively resisted the blood beams. And Tianzhou watched from the side, having no intention of attacking from beginning to end. Zhou Wen could roughly tell that the scorpion's strength was about the same as six wing before it was strengthened, but its abilities were rather strange. Its blood-red text had many functions. Other than the few that he had seen, it could also transform into the power of wind, fire, lightning, and so on. If one were to encounter it the first time, or if they were not strong enough, they would easily be killed by it. However, and Sheng and company had studied it for years. They had already thought of ways to counter its various powers. No matter how it changed its abilities, they could barely contain them. However, they had just managed to resolve it. Up to now, Zhou Wen had yet to see how they could kill the scorpion. Chapter 517 Failure And Sheng's personal abilities were definitely top-notch at the epic stage. However, even he couldn't approach the scorpion. The scorpion's speed was too fast. With a flap of its wings, it could easily fly hundreds of meters away. Even Zhou Wen probably couldn't catch up to it easily with ghost steps. After repeatedly resolving the blood-colored text of wind, fire, and lightning, and Sheng and company seemed to have found an opportunity to counterattack. Within Sheng's command, the officers unleashed their strongest attack as terrifying forces struck the scorpion. There was a sanguine flash on the scorpion's back as a huge blood-red text appeared. It was like a shield that blocked their attacks. With a series of crashing sounds, their forces were shattered, but the blood-colored barrier remained completely fine. And Tianzhua, who had remained motionless all this while, finally made a move. Flames rose over his body, turning into a strange life soul. The life soul's entire body was covered in white armor. The armor was neither gold nor jade. It looked more like it was carved from bones. Behind him was a blood-red cape. In his left hand was a slender bone saber covered in blood patterns. In his other hand was a gun made of bones. That thing. It can't be a gatling, right? Zhou Wen looked at the weapon in the life soul's hand. The bone gun barrel was connected to the recoil mechanism. It looked like an ancient hot weapon that was often seen in movies. Just as Zhou Wen was pondering over it, he heard a terrifying boom. He saw the bone gun barrel shoot out blood-colored bullets like a storm. Boom! 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 Bullets rained down on the scorpion's blood-red text barrier, causing it to flicker as though it could shatter at any moment. Buzzing sounds could be heard as the bullets poured freely. The bloody text barrier of the scorpion shattered. This was the first time Joe when had seen someone's life soul produce a hot weapon. Furthermore, its attack was crazy powerful. It could actually break through a mythical stage barrier. Although it was only a rather weak mythical creature, Zhou Wen had relied on ever victorious characteristic to kill Medusa. His life soul alone wasn't that powerful. The bullet hit the scorpion's body, instantly infuriating it. The wings on its back spread open, and there was a blood-red glow on its wings. 
Its entire body was covered in blood-red light, and the blood-red symbol at the tip of its tail appeared especially terrifying. The blood tech circled around the scorpion's body and kept spinning, blocking the rain of bullets. When the bullets struck the blood text, they created a terrifying explosive shockwave that blasted the surrounding forest into pieces. Activate the halo! And Shung instructed the officers. Two of the officers' companion beasts shimmered with light as they enveloped in Tianzhu's body. It caused in Tianzhu and his live soul's bodies to emit two strange beams of light. The Gatling's attacks became more ferocious as it pumped bullets at a denser and more powerful rate. Activate the curse! And Shung also used an essence energy skill when he issued the order. He produced a strange gray smoke that enveloped the scorpion. The other officers also used various powers. Those powers did not have any lethality, but they had a slight effect on the scorpion. Boom! The scorpion was furious after being bombarded by the Gatling's attacks. The blood-red text surrounding it exploded with a terrifying sanguine light. Almost instantly, it engulfed everything nearby. Retreat! And Shung issued an order before the blood text exploded. All the officers retreated within Shung in a great display of teamwork. Zhou Wen followed them and retreated, but he realized that Ntianzhu didn't retreat. The expanding sanguine light resembled a blood-colored black hole, devouring everything nearby. Ntianzhu was already standing at the edge of the blood hole, about to be devoured. Zhou Wen was frowning when he suddenly saw Ntianzhu's life soul vanish. As for Ntianzhu, he had a white bone armor and a blood cape. He held a bone saber in one hand and a bone gatling in the other. Just when the sanguine light was about to devour him, a black figure flew out from his body and landed on the bone blade. Instantly, a demonic black flame rose on the bone blade. And Tianzhu raised his bone saber and slashed at the sanguine light in front of him. He managed to cleave open a rift as he charged in. Gunfire roared and saber flames flashed. And Tianzhu fought the scorpion crazily. The madness was completely different from the usual in Tianzhu. As for Ensheng and company, they constantly used various essence energy skills from behind. They either aimed at Ntianzhu or at the scorpion. The only officer with the ice fox life soul and the ability to restrain the slow text was the busiest. They needed to constantly pump out damage to ensure that Ntianzhu's region wasn't affected by the power of the slow text. Boom! The scorpion's body was sent flying by a backslash from Ntianzhu's bone saber. Ntianzhu raised the gatling with his hand. The black flames on the bone saber instantly shifted to the bone gatling before enveloping it. Boom! 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 Bullets with black flames roared towards the scorpion in midair, causing its body to constantly distort and rise in the air. In the end, its carapace was cracked by the bullets, and more and more bullets shot into its flesh and blood. The black flames also burned its flesh and bones. Boom! The blood patterns on the scorpion shattered and fell like glass. Success! And Shun was overjoyed. Without the protection of the blood patterns, the storm-like bullets bombarded the scorpion wantonly. The carapace of the scorpion was completely shattered and blood spurted out. Just as the scorpion's body was about to explode, a blood-red light suddenly erupted from its abdomen. A strange blood tick surfaced, and the blood quickly spread over the scorpion's body. Boom! The sanguine light exploded as its carapace and flesh transformed into a terrifying energy blast. And Tianzhua had no choice but to retreat. At the same time the explosion occurred, a sanguine light from the scorpion's body flew toward White Cloud Mountain at an unbelievable speed. And Tianzhua's body flashed as he chased in the direction of White Cloud Mountain. Damn it, that fellow actually has such a move! And Sheng cursed under his breath as he chased with his men. Zhou Wen chased after him as well. When they caught up to Tianzhua, they realized that he was standing in front of the mountain entrance. The scorpion that had self-destructed was nowhere to be seen. Love letter escaped into Jade Emperor Peak? And Sheng had already guessed what was going on. And Tianzhua nodded slightly. We have failed. Let's head back. They knew that the scorpion was no longer able to survive. It was definitely on its last legs. As long as they could find it, even without Ntianzwa's help, and Shun could kill it himself. However, no one dared to enter Jade Emperor Peak. No matter how strong a person was, entering would only lead to death. Even Ntianzwa could only return empty-handed. Mythical creatures were precious, but they couldn't trade for one with their lives. Chapter 518 Companion Egg Inside Zhou Wen used Truth Listener to listen to the area beyond the mountain entrance. He found it dead silent. Unable to hear a thing, it was as though the particles inside were motionless, having not generated any vibrations. Jade Emperor Peak is indeed terrifying. It's such a pity. They prepared for so long, but all their efforts were in vain at the final moment. Zhou Wen felt sorry for Ensheng. If a mythical companion egg dropped, Ensheng's strength would definitely improve greatly. It would be much safer for him to carry out missions in the future. Along the way, 
Zhou Wen didn't find the tiny palm symbol. Although Truth Listener's ability couldn't hear the scene around him, he could hear the traces of carvings. If there was a tiny palm symbol, he should have heard it. And Tianzhuo was a decisive person. Since all hope was lost, he did not hesitate to order in Sheng and the officers to leave White Cloud Mountain with him. Just as they were about to leave, they suddenly heard a miserable scream coming from Jade Emperor Peak. It sounded like a creature's death cry. It's love letter! It died less than 20 meters away from Jade Emperor Peak. It even dropped a companion egg. An officer suddenly shouted. How do you know? And Tianzhuo asked. I can't hear it, but I can see it with my eyes. It's inside. It's a companion egg the size of a football, and it resembles white jade. It has blood-colored text on it. The officer had used his hearing, but he couldn't hear anything. As he was unwilling to give up, he thought that it would be fine if he stole a glance. He removed his balaclava and had looked inside, seeing the companion egg. And Shang? And Tianzhuo had also used his hearing ability, but he couldn't see the situation inside. This was because Ensheng's large eye companion beast gave him the ability of sight. If anyone could see it, Ensheng would be the first, but Ensheng hadn't said anything. Even if it's 20 meters, it's within the confines of Jade Emperor Peak. It's no different from 200 meters or 2,000 meters. Ensheng answered. He was obviously the first person to discover the blood scorpion, but he did not say anything. Even though it was right in front of him, he still chose to give up. With that said, Ensheng said to the officer. Old he... Put on the balaclava. Are you tired of living? Overseer, adjutant, why don't we make an attempt? It's less than 20 meters inside. Perhaps there's a way to get the companion egg out. That's a mythical companion egg. The officer put on the balaclava and said to Ntianzua and Nsheng, unwilling to give up. Ah, Sheng is right. It doesn't matter even if it's two centimeters within Jade Emperor Peak, much less 20 meters, said Ntianzua. Overseer, let's try using companion beasts. At most, we will sacrifice a few companion beasts. We can still afford to lose them. The officers felt that it was a pity to leave. There's no need to try. Haven't we done enough experiments in the past? You can't enter the Jade Emperor Peak, regardless if they are humans or companion beasts. The outcome is the same. Ah Shen objected firmly. Overseer, I have a companion beast that I obtained in a dimensional zone previously. It's called Evil Warding Spirit Rhinoceros. It has the ability to resist evil powers, so why not let it try? If Agitant and can obtain a mythical pet, it'll be a boon for our Sunset Army. In the future, fewer of our brothers will die when we carry out missions. One of the officers said. Then give it a try, said Ntianzua. Thank you, Overseer. The officer was instantly overjoyed. Overseer. And Shum wanted to stop him. If we don't let them try, they won't be willing to give up. Just remember this. And Tianzua stopped and Shum from continuing. As they were speaking, Zhou encircled around the mountain entrance. He wanted to see if there was a tiny palm symbol nearby. He didn't have much hope because the tiny palm symbol was typically engraved on a more conspicuous spot. It wasn't on the mountain entrance, so the chances of there being one were rather low. But he didn't expect to find the tiny palm symbol on a mountain rock to the east of the mountain entrance. The tiny palm symbol was engraved on a mountain rock that was about the height of a person. It was unknown what color the mountain rock was, but its shape was nothing special. The tiny palm symbol engraved on it was a small hand holding a small mountain-shaped rock. He took out his phone and took a picture of the small palm symbol. The phone quickly locked onto the picture and entered the download interface. Elsewhere, the officer had already summoned a moon-white rhinoceros. The rhinoceros looked very mighty, and it was much bigger than an ordinary rhinoceros. It was even bigger than an adult elephant. Its body was glowing with a jade glow, as though its body was enveloped by moonlight. Old he, don't bother. It's a pity to lose a precious companion beast like the evil warding spirit rhinoceros. And Shung said with a sigh. It's fine. It's less than 20 meters away. It's just one step of the evil warding spirit rhinoceros. Old he was determined. When the evil warding spirit rhinoceros stood in front of the stone entrance, old he gave the order and the evil warding spirit rhinoceros moved like a tank charging through the entrance. It headed straight for the spot where the companion egg had dropped. After it entered, Zhou Wen couldn't hear the evil warding spirit rhinoceros. He thought that since there wasn't any immortal palace phenomenon, he could take a look at the situation without looking up into the fog. He lifted the balaclava a little so that he could see the situation at the mountain entrance. He saw the evil warding spirit rhinoceros's body four to five meters away from the mountain entrance. Furthermore, it was still charging at high speed. With such a speed, it would only take a few seconds to traverse 20 meters. Zhou Wen also saw the companion egg. Indeed, it was less than 20 meters away from the mountain entrance. Just as old he had said, there were blood-colored patterns on the jade white egg. 
there was a pile of blood-colored powder on the ground. It was likely formed after the blood scorpion died. Just as Zhou Wen was sizing up the evil warding spirit rhinoceros, he saw a terrifying scene. After the huge rhinoceros rushed past the mountain entrance, its body turned into a piece of jade. It didn't get far, perhaps 10 meters, before the entire rhinoceros turned into a lifeless jade statue and fell to the ground. Boom! After a loud bang, the evil warding spirit rhinoceros shattered into pieces of jade. Furthermore, the pieces of jade that landed on the ground kept disintegrating, becoming smaller and smaller. Like sand, they split apart and finally turned to dust. Joe and couldn't help but shiver. He finally knew what was going on with the pile of blood-colored powder beneath the companion egg. Even the blood scorpion couldn't withstand the terrifying power from Jade Emperor Peak. It had ended up in the same state as the evil warding spirit rhinoceros. However, the companion egg wasn't affected by the terrifying force. Ding! Zhou Wen's phone notified the completion of the download. He looked down and saw a black mountain icon on the screen. However, it wasn't White Cloud Mountain, but Demon Suppression Mountain. Chapter 5190 Taboo After tapping open the Demon Suppression Mountain dungeon, he realized that the blood-colored avatar had appeared in front of the black stone. Beside it was White Cloud Mountain's entrance. Other than the cartoon image, the layout was identical to the real White Cloud Mountain. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and attempted to let the blood-colored avatar enter the mountain entrance. He wanted to see if Truth Listener's ability could withstand the terrifying power of Jade Emperor Peak. However, it was useless. The power on Jade Emperor Peak wasn't an evil force like a curse. After a few steps, the blood-colored avatar turned to dust. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and dripped his blood to revive. He walked into Jade Emperor Peak once again, but this time, he switched his essence energy art to a Dao art. His life providence had naturally transformed into a Dao body and zero taboo. The moment the blood-colored avatar took half a step in, the zero taboo crystal in his consciousness lit up like a light bulb. It works! Zhou Wen was delighted as he controlled the blood-colored avatar to continue walking forward. After taking a few steps, his body was fine. Cracks began to appear on the zero taboo crystal as though it was about to shatter. It really can't be taken out. In front of the mountain entrance, old he wore a look of disappointment. He wasn't sad for the death of his evil warding spirit rhinoceros, but because he couldn't retrieve the companion egg for Enshung. Old he, with the overseer around, we will have plenty of chances to kill mythical creatures in the future. It's just a matter of time, Enshung said. He found it a pity that the evil warding spirit rhinoceros died. It was one of the few epic companion beasts that could ward off evil. It was a pity to lose it. Let's go! And Tienzla gave another order. This time, no one said a word. Although they were unwilling to give up on the mythical companion egg in front of them, they had no choice but to leave. Ah Sheng, let me give it a try. Perhaps I can take it out, Zhou Wen said as he walked over. If the companion egg was in Tianzhuo's, Zhou Wen wouldn't have stepped forward. He might even have waited for them to leave before secretly returning to retrieve the companion egg. However, the companion egg was for Ensheng, so Zhou Wen felt that he should help. Ensheng had given him plenty of help and had risked his life with him. He had plenty of chances to obtain mythical companion eggs in the future, but it was unlikely to have someone willing to risk his life for him at critical moments. Young Master One, if you wish to use a mythical companion beast to take the companion egg, there's no need to bother. Love Letter is also at the mythical stage. It also failed to withstand the power of Jade Emperor Peak. And Shun said, If I just want to take out the companion egg, it's very simple. I don't need to use a mythical companion beast. As Zhou Wen spoke, he walked to the mountain entrance and deliberately sounded relaxed. He didn't say that he was the one entering. This was because he knew very well that if he said that he was the one entering, and Sheng would have definitely stopped him. It was impossible that he would let him take the risk. Young Master One, what solution do you have? And Sheng asked. And Tianzhua and the officers looked at Zhou Wen. They also wanted to know if he really had a way to bring out the companion egg. Old he looked at Zhou Wen and said, Young Master One, if you have a way to bring out the companion egg, just let me know if there's anything I can do in the future. I'll be at your beck and call. And Sheng had saved the lives of Old He's family. Old He had always treated in Sheng's matters as his own. I'll remember that. As Zhou Wen spoke, he looked past the mountain entrance. And Tianzhua and company believed that he would summon a companion beast, but to their surprise, Zhou Wen suddenly took a step forward and walked through the mountain pass. No! And Sheng turned pale with fright as he rushed towards the mountain entrance. Someone was faster than him, as he appeared in front of the mountain entrance in a flash. He extended his hand to grab Zhou Wen, but he was still a step slower. Zhou Wen had already rushed past the mountain entrance. When Ensheng rushed to the mountain entrance, he was held back by Antianzhua, 
who had arrived a step earlier. He didn't let him chase after Zhou Wen. Look carefully. His body isn't affected. And Tianzua said to Enxiang in a deep voice as he took off his balaclava. Old He and company were also alarmed. They originally imagined that Zhou Wen would use a special companion beast to make the attempt. They never expected him to walk in by himself. And Sheng stood outside the stone door and looked at Zhou Wen inside. He quickly walked towards the companion egg. His speed was astonishing. More importantly, his body didn't disintegrate like the evil warding spirit rhinoceros. Zhou Wen's body landed in front of the companion egg like a wisp of smoke. He reached out and scooped the companion egg into his hand before turning around and retreating. This back and forth was swift and elegant, like a swift saber that had been unsheathed. With a flash, the saber had already returned into the sheath before one could see what the blade looked like. When Zhou Wen returned to the mountain entrance with the blood scorpion companion egg in hand, old he and company jolted to attention as though they had been in a dream. They speechlessly looked at Zhou when who was standing in front of them in perfect condition. Young master one, you are really too rash. And Sheng sized up Zhou Wen's body and only heaved a sigh of relief when he saw that there wasn't anything wrong with his body. Don't worry. I won't do anything that I'm not confident of. Zhou went through the companion egg to Ensheng. Young master one, thank you. Ensheng received the companion egg and said with a smile, Not considering the consequences of your actions will one day make you pay the price. Put on your balaclavas and we will head down the mountain. And Tianzua said coldly. He put his balaclava on and turned to head down the mountain. Everyone hurriedly put on their balaclavas and followed in Tianzua down the mountain. When they reached a fork on the mountainside, Zhou Wen asked and Sheng. Ah Sheng, is Jade Rabbit's lunar prayer on the mountain over there? It's there all right. I'll take you there. And Sheng said. Old He also said. Young Master One, if you want to pay a visit, I'll take you there. However, it's just a stone. There's nothing to see. There's no need. There's no danger there anyway. I just want to take a look myself. You guys can go back now. Zhou Wen said as he walked up the mountain path and Sheng didn't insist on going with him. Since Zhou Wen could remain unharmed in Jade Emperor Peak, nothing outside posed a danger to him. Ajitunan, this young master one is amazing. He actually managed to enter and exit Jade Emperor Peak safely. He's really strong. Is he still in school? Old he asked and Sheng as he watched Zhou Wen disappear on the mountain path. Don't you know whose family young master one is from? How can a person who can be doted on so much by madam not be strong? As in Sheng spoke, he used his large eyes to glance at Ntianzua, but unfortunately, he couldn't see Ntianzua's expression through the balaclava. You're right. Young Master Wen is Madame Lan's son. It's only right for him to be strong. Old he smiled. Chapter 521 takes on the color of one's company. Zhou Wen walked all the way up to the mountain, where Jade Rabbit's lunar prayer was. Although zero taboos seemed to have the ability to counter White Cloud Mountain's taboo powers, Zhou Wen still wore the balaclava and used Truth Listener's ability to scout the way. If he were to see the Immortal Palace phenomenon, it would be quite an unjust death in the event Zero Taboo failed to work. There were indeed very few dimensional creatures on White Cloud Mountain. Zhou Wen walked all the way to the peak, but he didn't even encounter a single one. After reaching the top of the mountain, Zhou Wen finally saw the legendary Jade Rabbit's Lunar Prayer Stone. Perhaps it was because Zhou Wen's imagination wasn't good, but no matter how he looked at it, it didn't resemble a rabbit. The Dvarch said that the item is beneath this stone. But this stone seems to be connected to the mountain? Should I dig it up? Zhou encircled the moon rabbit stone, but didn't find the good stuff that the Darch had mentioned. Although it wasn't nice to destroy a natural landscape, Zhou Wen couldn't be bothered anymore. He summoned the six-winged guardian dragon and made it push the moon rabbit stone to see if there was anything below. The six-winged guardian dragon had 80 strength after all. With the augmentation of an essence energy skill, it could snap the mountain, much less a mere rock. However, it was unable to move the moon rabbit stone at all despite using all its might. Zhou Wen couldn't help but be surprised. With the strength of six-winged, even a piece of titanium alloy should have snapped, much less a rock. Indeed, there's something here. Zhou Wen made six-winged stop. He probably couldn't move the moon rabbit stone with brute force. Zhou Wen studied how to deal with the moon rabbit stone, but he failed to budge it despite exhausting all the methods he could think of. All he could do was leave White Cloud Mountain and return to the encampment. He planned on contacting the Darch and asking her how to take the item under the Moon Rabbit Stone. After Zhou Wen returned to the encampment, Old He warmly welcomed him back. He also told him that Ensheng and Ntianzua had already left because they were needed in Luoyang. They had left a message, saying that if Zhou Wen wanted to return, he could get Old He to drive him back. On the rugged mountain road, Ensheng was fiddling with his phone while driving. To him, multitasking was not a difficult task. 
there was no conflict between driving and playing games. Ordinary people were forbidden from doing this, as it was very easy for accidents to happen, bringing harm to themselves and others. The scene that appeared on Insheng's phone screen was the game that Zhou Wen had invested in. He held the phone in one hand as his fingers moved rapidly. It was no different from how others played with two hands. He was even more agile. The game character used all sorts of odd positioning and releasing of skills to beat the demonized soldiers and generals. Why aren't you driving properly? What are you doing there? And Tianzhua, who was sitting behind with his eyes closed, suddenly asked. I downloaded the game that Zhou Wen and company made. Now that I'm trying it, it's really not bad. The feedback from attacking and the usage of skills are very good. The parameters are also very similar to reality, especially those demonized soldiers and generals. Their behavior and skills are identical to reality. After playing this game, if one were to encounter demonized soldiers and generals, one would know how to deal with them. This game is really not bad. From the looks of it, young master Wen isn't just playing games. And Sheng said as he played, he's just trying to play to the gallery. Watching a video allows one to understand dimensional creatures better than gaming. It's not like I see him doing any research. All he does is game. The so-called understanding of dimensional creatures is just an excuse to game, said Ntianzwa. And Sheng defended Zhou Wen. It's still a little different. From watching the video, one can only know what kind of abilities a dimensional creature has. Ordinary people can't tell what skills they can use to deal with it just by watching a video. However, in game, they can attempt to use various skills to attack dimensional creatures. They can then know which skills are effective against them. Furthermore, through in-game combat, it's easier to remember the timing of the various skills used by dimensional creatures. This game is a high-level strategy guide. It would be even better if we could turn it into a holographic game. I realize that ever since you and Zhou Wen went out a few times, you are getting better at clever, but false arguments. And Tianzhu said with a cold expression. Overseer, you're right. It's my fault. Games only make people lose their aspirations. It's useless. And Sheng hurriedly said. You've even learned how to agree overtly despite your private opposition. Indeed, one takes on the color of one's company. Hand over the phone. And Tianzhu said coldly when he saw that Sheng was still playing. I was wrong, all right. And Sheng hurriedly put away his phone. I told you to hand me the phone. And Tianzhu said with a deadpan expression as he stared at Sheng through the rearview mirror. And Sheng helplessly handed his phone to Tianzhu, who was sitting behind him. And Tianzhu reached out and took it. He glared at Sheng and said, Drive properly. If you continue with such nonsense, you'll be punished to guard Chess Mountain. And Sheng tersely responded and continued driving. He didn't dare do anything else. And Tianzhu closed his eyes to rest for a while, but he had a nagging feeling. After a while, and Tianzhu opened his eyes again and picked up the phone beside him. After unlocking it, his gaze landed on the app icon named Dimension. The corners of Ntianzwa's eyes twitched slightly. He reached out and pulled the curtains to give himself privacy from Nsheng. Then he said to him, I'll rest for a while. Don't disturb me. Got it, overseer, Nsheng said. Ntianzwa held his phone and turned off the sound. Then he tapped on the icon. Soon, an ink-styled interface appeared on his phone. Zhou Wen rested in the encampment. As there was a signal in the encampment, he sent a message to the arch, but after waiting for several hours, he still didn't receive a reply. Just as Zhou Wen thought that the arch wasn't replying to him on purpose, he finally received a message. He opened it, and saw that it was from the arch. To learn the divine art, one must self-castrate. Zhou Wen read the message clearly, and countless question marks appeared in his mind. Then, he sent a row of question marks. It was sent wrongly. It was for someone else. If you want the treasure, you must wait for the moon to rise. The Darch replied very quickly this time. So I have to wait until the moon rises before I can obtain the treasure under the moon rabbit stone. Zhou Wen was enlightened, but he suddenly felt that something was amiss. The Darch, you said that you sent the message wrongly. Then who are you planning on sending that sentence to? Zhou Wen's expression turned odd. Since the Darch could use her phone to go online, it was not surprising that she could have friends on the internet. The strange thing was, why did she send such a message to the other party? It's a guy who wants to learn divine arts. His name seems to be John Cape. The Darch replied. John! Cape! Zhou Wen naturally wouldn't forget this fellow. After all, it was because of Liz and John that he and the Cape family had become enemies. Chapter 521 Immortal Palace Phenomenon Zhou Wen originally wanted to ask what the Darch was doing, but the Darch didn't reply to him. Zhou Wen had to temporarily put the matter aside. In the afternoon, Zhou Wen arrived in front of the Jade Rabbit's Lunar Prayer Stone again. There, he waited for the moon to rise from the east. However, there was a problem. 
The Varch said that he had to push the moon rabbit stone the moment the moon rose. Although Truth Listener was very powerful and could hear very minute sounds, it was still unknown if he could tell that the moon had risen. If Truth Listener were to advance further in the future and advance to the mythical stage, it might be able to hear something even deeper such as the rotations of electrons or the flowing sound of photons. When that happened, it was possible to use one's hearing to determine if the moon had risen. However, he definitely couldn't do it now. After some hesitation, Zhou Wen switched his essence energy art to a Tao art before removing the balaclava. Zhou Wen estimated the time. The moon was about to rise. If he were to use his eyes, he wouldn't be so unlucky to chance upon the immortal palace phenomenon, right? However, even if he were to see the immortal palace phenomenon, he had the zero taboo life soul. It was unlikely he would die so easily. While waiting for the sun to set at the garrison, Zhou Wen studied his zero taboo life soul. After entering White Cloud Mountain's Jade Emperor Peak and other dimensional zones, he discovered something. Zero Taboo and Truth Listener's evil nullification were somewhat different. When evil nullification was in effect, it could deal with man-made curses. Zero Taboo did little against them. According to Zhou Wen's judgment, it worked against powers that came from the laws of nature. For example, White Cloud Mountain's Jade Emperor Peak, Small Buddha Temple, or Sagasakai's will renewal. They were all unreasonable powers. That was just how the laws of nature worked. Zero Taboo was very useful in this aspect. However, its effects were difficult to distinguish from evil nullification. There was some overlap between the two, and Zhou Wen was still studying them. His understanding of Zero Taboo wasn't thorough enough, so he was still in the guessing phase. However, Zero Taboo was not truly without any restrictions. It could last for about 10 seconds inside White Cloud Mountain's Jade Emperor Peak. Any longer, the Zero Taboo life soul would explode from the pressure. In Small Buddha Temple, as long as he did not enter the Temple Hall, Zero Taboo was fine. However, once he entered the Temple Hall, it could only last for 10 seconds. Although the Immortal Palace phenomenon was terrifying, Zhou Wen guessed that it wouldn't have much of an effect on him. Zero Taboo and Evil Nullification were of some use. After pulling up the Balaclava, Zhou Wen looked east. Although the sun and moon weren't in the sky, it wasn't too dark since the sun had just set. As he looked over, he saw a sea of white clouds. Occasionally, a few mountain peaks would appear out of the sea of clouds, like a few black islands in a white sea. The scene was indeed as beautiful as a fairyland. It's a pity that no one has the chance to enjoy such beautiful scenery. If it was before the dimensional storms, I'm afraid this place would have been filled with tourists. Joe Wen suddenly felt that the dimensional storms might not be a bad thing. If there were tourists crowding the place, no matter how beautiful it was, it would be greatly affected. The immortal palace didn't appear. Zhou Wen kept track of time, and knew that the moon would rise at any moment. He didn't wear the balaclava and sat there to watch the sea of clouds. On the mountains above the sea of clouds, he could see some ancient buildings. However, they weren't places he could go carelessly. Zhou Wen only admired them for the time being. After waiting for less than two minutes, a crescent moon slowly floated out from the sea of clouds horizon. The moonlight was not strong, and it was not bright. It was very mild. Just as Zhou Wen was about to push the moon rabbit stone again, a white jade-like immortal palace appeared where the crescent moon rose. There were pavilions and pagodas, as well as jade halls and shrines. Beautiful and elegant immortal palaces appeared in the clouds, and he could even see fairies flitting about. Faintly, he could even hear singing coming from those immortal palaces. Immortal palace phenomenon? Zhou Wen was alarmed. The zero taboo life soul had already lit up his mind. Clearly, it had a reaction to the immortal palace phenomenon. The intensity of the Zero Taboo's reaction wasn't inferior to the Jade Emperor Peak. Zhou Wen took a careful look before closing his eyes and pulling down the balaclava. The brightened Zero Taboo life soul also dimmed. Thankfully, my theory is correct. Zero Taboo seems to be useful against all taboo powers in a dimensional zone. Zhou Wen recalled the scene of the Immortal Palace in his mind. The Immortal Palace was extremely magnificent, but it didn't have much value to Zhou Wen. Instead, it was the dancing fairies that gave him some insight. The fairy in Dragon Gate Grotto was only at the epic stage after all. Transcended Flying Immortal's attack was only an epic essence energy skill. Although through Zhou Wen's constant insight and creativity, it had reached an outstanding level at the epic stage, it was still inferior to a true godlike skill. Having seen the figures of the fairies in the Immortal Palace, Zhou Wen immediately gained new insights. Without a doubt, if those fairies really existed, they would all be true mythical creatures. Ignoring the fairy's stances, Zhou Wen extended his hand to push the moon rabbit stone just as the moon rose. Although it was still very heavy, it moved slightly with his strength. Overjoyed, Zhou Wen pushed harder and shoved the moon rabbit stone to the side bit by bit. Then, he realized that beneath it was a jade box embedded in the stone's indentation. 
Zhou Wen reached out to take out the jade box, only to find it cold to the touch. After touching the indentation and confirming that there was nothing else, Zhou Wen pushed the moon rabbit stone back. With the jade box in his arms, Zhou Wen planned on looking at what was inside the box when he returned home. Since he had already obtained it, he wasn't in a hurry. As he thought about leaving the mountain, he couldn't bear it. After some thought, Zhou Wen pulled up the balaclava slightly and looked at the rising moon in the east. The phenomenon of the immortal palace was still there. Numerous immortal palaces floated above the sea of clouds, looking extremely realistic. It was not something ethereal like a mirage. The fairies danced among the immortal palaces. All of them had elegant and graceful postures. They seemed much more profound than the fairies in Dragon Gate Grotto. Zero Taboo kept emitting light. It felt like it would shatter in a few more seconds. Zhou Wen didn't dare take another look. Just as he was about to close his eyes, he suddenly saw a beautiful fairy fly out from a palace. The moment she appeared, the other fairies immediately paled in comparison. It was as though the halo around them had vanished as they became mere mortal beauties. Only the fairy who had just appeared deserved being described as an immortal fairy. Zhou Wen only took a glance and saw numerous crisscrossing cracks appear on the zero taboo crystal. Just as it was about to explode, Zhou Wen hurriedly closed his eyes in fright. Chapter 522 Change in Ranking This time, when he closed his eyes, the zero taboo crystal didn't immediately extinguish. It continued emitting light. The cracks on the crystal were still spreading, and it was about to shatter. It left Zhou Wen shuddering in fear. Thankfully, the crystal didn't shatter, and the light gradually dimmed. Now, the zero taboo crystal was like a glass bead that had been doused in cold water after being heated over a flame. It was full of cracks, looking as if it would shatter at any moment. Amazing. I only took a glance at her, and she nearly blasted apart my life soul. If she really exists, I wonder what status she has among mythical creatures. Zhou Wen could still recall the scene of the fairy dancing in the air. Her figure seemed to contain some profound charms. It was indescribably beautiful and shocking. Zhou Wen closed his eyes and sat on the moon rabbit stone. He carefully recalled the details of the fairy's figure, hoping to figure out the true secret of flying immortal. Zhou Wen could sense that the fairy's figure was extremely valuable to his transcendent flying immortal, but after thinking for a long time, he felt that there was something in the way between the two. It made him feel like he was looking at a beauty through a layer of frosted glass. He could see her, but not clearly. He couldn't help but feel vexed. He stood up and walked down the mountain. He wanted to have a change of environment and mood. Perhaps that way, he might be able to understand what was happening. He would never dare to look at that immortal palace phenomenon again. After returning to the encampment, Zhou Wen took out the jade box and placed it on the table. After studying it for a while, he opened the lid. Inside the jade box were dozens of crystals the size of cat eyes. They were of different colors and shapes. I wonder what attributes these dimensional crystals have. Zhou Wen took out his mysterious phone and snapped them. It turned out that they were all epic dimensional crystals. Most of them were crystals of the four basic stats. Only two were essence energy skill crystals. This left Zhou Wen somewhat disappointed. He originally believed that the Thearcha's mention of something would be no trifling matter. Although epic crystals were not bad, they were far inferior to the mythical crystal from before. However, on second thought, it made sense. The Darch told him about these, so that he could exchange them for money. So why would she get him to retrieve mythical crystals that weren't easily sold? Epic crystals were the easiest to produce at present. Furthermore, there was a relatively high demand for them. There were at least 10 crystals, and they all had different attributes. Some were bad, while others were not bad. The best one was a speed crystal with 38 stats. It was likely worth quite a bit of money. Of course, the most valuable ones were the two essence energy skill crystals. One was the cloud crane crystal, while the other was the cloud deer crystal. Zhou Wen had never seen these two dimensional creatures before, nor did he know what skills they had. He placed the crystals back into the jade box and picked it up to put into the chaos space. The dimensional crystals weren't very warm, but the jade box was as cold as ice. It didn't seem ordinary. Is it possible that this jade box is something good? Zhou Wen held the jade box and began studying it. The jade box was the color of the moon. It was translucent, and he almost could see through it, but it also appeared opaque. It was as if there were clouds within the jade. After Zhou Wen carefully studied the jade box, he found something amiss. There were many cloud patterns engraved on the jade box. The patterns were of different shapes and sizes. If one were to look at them with the eyes of an ordinary person, they would be clouds of different shapes and sizes. One would write it off as nothing special. Even though some people felt that the cloud patterns were special, it was difficult to see the true meaning behind them. However, after Zhou Wen carefully observed them, he realized that the different types of clouds contained the beauty of a fairy's figure. Every cloud pattern looked like a fairy. 
if he hadn't seen the fairies flying, it would probably be difficult for him to tell the charms of these cloud patterns. This is really something good. Zhou Wen picked up the jade box and continued studying the cloud patterns. As he looked at them, he compared them with the fairy poses he had seen. His understanding deepened. While Zhou Wen was studying the cloud patterns, another shocking event happened. The black cube lit up again before another companion beast appeared on the ranking. The second companion beast on the ranking was actually the publicly acknowledged number one companion beast, Verbus Diablo Holy Angel. The Verbus Diablo Holy Angel's ranking had been ranked by a big organization in the Federation. It was known as the number one pet at the epic stage. Now that it had taken its place on the cube's ranking, it actually failed to surpass the six-winged guardian dragon. It was only ranked second. No one could help but speculate how powerful the six-winged guardian dragon was to be able to suppress the Verbus Diablo Holy Angel. This was truly quite a shock. In the past few days, there had been no movement. Only six-winged had been placed on the list. When the Verbus Diablo Holy Angel entered the rankings, many companion beasts sprouted like mushrooms after a rain. They were listed one after another. On the cube screen, various pet creatures constantly appeared. Apart from the angel and dragon, there were also sprites, magical beasts, and other companion beasts. The six-winged guardian dragon, which was originally in first place, dropped to third place in a day. Eight others ranked after it. A total of eleven companion beasts were listed. Two companion beasts ranked ahead of the six-winged guardian dragon. The first was Death of the Underworld, while the second was Frost Giant. They were companion beasts no one had heard of before. As for the famous Verbus Diablo Holy Angel, it was ranked dead last among all the companion beasts on the list. This caused a huge wave of discussion across the entire Federation. Only then did many ordinary people realize that the so-called strongest Verbus Diablo Holy Angel was just a bottom-tier existence in the world of truly powerful pets. The powerful companion beasts were enough to make one gasp in excitement. However, at the same time, people were guessing who the extremely powerful companion beasts belonged to. Including Zhou Wen's six-winged guardian dragon, there were a total of three dragons that entered the rankings. It could be said that among all the mythical creatures, they were the most common species. However, one tidbit was very surprising. All the companion beasts that entered the rankings, be they angels, dragons, elemental sprites, or death, were companion beasts from the west and north districts. They didn't see any special companion beasts from East District and South District on the list. In fact, all the families that made a move this time came from the West and North Districts. Among them, the Cape family of the West District put in the most work and managed to occupy four ranks in one go. The East District Xia family and Zhang family, and the South District's Dugu family didn't have any companion beasts appear on the ranking. The four districts seemed to have a completely different attitude towards the rankings. Zhou Wen didn't know anything about the change in ranking. Although Zhou Wen declined old he's offered to take him back, old he insisted. Chapter 523 Flying Immortal Stance After returning to school, Zhou Wen heard the students discussing the companion beasts on the rankings. Ordinary students suspected that they were mythical companion beasts, but no one had ever seen one. Zhou Wen also went online to take a look. Many media outlets and individuals had captured the pictures of the companion beasts on the cube. Death of the Underworld looked very strange. He was wearing a gray cloak. Black and blue light filled its insides. He did not have a physical body and looked a little like the legendary death. However, he did not have a scythe in his hands. Frost Giant was a giant with a deep blue body. Wherever he went, ice would form on the ground. The other companion beasts were also unique. Angels were holy, sprites were beautiful, and dragons looked about the same. However, for a companion beast to be ranked, one could tell that they were extraordinary just from their aura alone. Unfortunately, only the images of the companion beasts were shown on the cube. Their skills weren't listed. Joe Wen didn't know what the ranking was for, but he quickly lost interest. He picked up his phone and continued grinding Torch Dragon. After his battle with Torch Dragon, Joe Wen gradually started to use his speed and crystal mirror to block Torch Dragon's bright torch vision world. Unfortunately, a Sun Beast companion egg was a rare drop. If there were two or more crystal mirrors, the success rate of killing Torch Dragon would be much higher. Joe Wen thought of many solutions. For example, using a large number of companion beasts to shield him, but it was useless. The blood-colored avatar and all the companion beasts in front of him were reflected into the vision world. Apart from the crystal mirror that could reflect, the other companion beasts weren't of much use. As for using the crystal mirror to block Torch Dragon's gaze, he needed to grasp the timing and position perfectly, or it would be very difficult to block. The problem was that Torch Dragon's bright torch vision world wasn't a skill that could only be used once. Therefore, Zhou Wen needed to defend against it many times in battle. Otherwise, he would die. As for demonic neonate that remained on the blood-colored avatar's back, 
she constantly tried to find Torch Dragon's flaws to attack it. There were a few times when she really found an opportunity. The ancient sword stabbed at Torch Dragon, but it only managed to penetrate a tiny length of the blade. It did not pose much of a threat to Torch Dragon. As for the blood-colored avatar, it couldn't survive until Demonic Neonate killed Torch Dragon. According to Zhou Wen's calculations, he needed to survive at least three hours in front of Torch Dragon before Demonic Neonate could kill it. This was the best situation. If the situation didn't go as smoothly as Zhou Wen expected, it might take even longer. Zhou Wen's most pressing problem was to 100% block the Bright Torch Vision world for those few hours. Just one mistake meant immediate death. All his efforts would be in vain. After a bitter battle for an hour, the blood-colored avatar was once again killed by Torch Dragon's Bright Torch Vision world. This was the longest time though when it had lasted. I can't make any mistakes, and I have to be absolutely precise. In a high-intensity battle, I have to ensure that I can throw out the crystal mirror with perfect timing and positioning while facing a powerful creature like Torch Dragon. Furthermore, it's really difficult to judge Torch Dragon's actions accurately. Zhou Wen thought about it and realized that it was very difficult for him to boost his success rate. After all, the other party was a mythical creature stronger than him. It wasn't that easy to determine its actions and motions. Since it's very difficult to improve my judgment, I can only increase my speed and ability to adjust my position. I'll try my best to prevent Torch Dragon from seeing me. Therefore, in the following battles, Zhou Wen consciously fused Dragon Gate Flying Immortal skill and transcended Flying Immortal into the fairy stance he had comprehended, hoping to improve his movement technique to another level. This wasn't an easy task. Zhou Wen felt that there was a barrier between the fairy's stances and his movement techniques. It was very difficult to achieve perfection, and there would be problems when fusing them. Zhou Wen wasn't someone who would give up in the face of adversity. He continued researching and improving, especially the beautiful fairy stance. Zhou Wen spent a great deal of time comprehending and researching. At the Bureau's headquarters, there was a lot of information placed in front of Shinyuchi. It was all about the black cubes and the companion beasts on the ranking. Director General, other than the six-winged guardian dragon, the origins of the other companion beasts are almost confirmed. Xiao Siyuan said. Shinyuchi nodded slightly. Why did those families in the West and North District put their mythical pets on the rankings? Have you investigated? In fact, Shinyuchi didn't need to investigate to know which families these companion beasts came from. The key was why they wanted to expose their mythical companion beasts to the public. Before this, every family clan hid their mythical companion beasts, afraid that others would know how many they had. But this time, they actually revealed a portion of them. Although a number were already known to outsiders, it still felt puzzling. According to our investigations, those few families seem to have figured out some of the secrets of the Black Cube. They know that there would be benefits if they were to be ranked, which is why they made such a move. However, this information has not been verified yet, so we don't know of its veracity. Xiao Siyuan answered very conservatively. What kind of benefits? Shin Yuchi knew what Xiao Siyuan was getting at. This news should have come from within those few families, but he couldn't guarantee that they were using it as a smoke screen. From what they say, the companion beasts on the ranking might be fancy by terrifying existences in the dimensional zones. There might be benefits, but they aren't sure if the news is real or not, nor do they know what benefits there will be. Xiao Siyuan explained the information he gathered in detail. After Shin Yuchi heard that, he remained silent. Director General, what should we do? Xiao Siyuan asked. The Zhang family, the Xiao family, and the Dugu family didn't make a move. The West and North districts only sent some companion beasts as a test. It's not time for us to step forward. Let's just wait and see for now. After a pause, Shin Yuchi asked again. How's the progress of Wang Ming Yuan's students? It's not going well. Zhou Wen and Hui Haifeng are protected by their families, so it's very difficult to bring them back. Jiang Yan and Zhong Zia's whereabouts are unknown. We've been tracking them for so long, but we haven't been able to catch them. None of Wang Mingyuan's four students are simple. I think Wang Mingyuan might have other motives for taking them in as his students. It's not just a coincidence. Xiao Siyuan paused and said, Besides, the six families aren't too concerned about this matter now. For some reason, even the Kate family that wanted to capture Zhou when the most seemed to have forgotten about it. They're all focused on the rankings. That's strange. Shin Yuchi pondered over the cause and effect of everything. Chapter 524 In the Name of an Angel in a mysterious land of the West District, in front of an ancient, glorious cathedral, John advanced step by step. Every step, he took felt as if he was going against the flow. It drained all his strength. Within the cathedral, a holy light shone out, causing people to involuntarily lower their heads, not daring to look at the light. When John walked to the door of the cathedral, and pushed open the door, with all his strength, the holy light instantly illuminated the entire world. 
John saw a huge angel mural inside the cathedral. The portrait of the angel drew a holy six-winged seraphim. Strangely, there was a drop of blood at the corner of the six-winged seraphim's eye. Its eyes seemed to contain endless sorrow. John's gaze was only slightly shocked by the six-winged seraphim's portrait before he was attracted by something in it. Between the six-winged seraphim's hands was a strange white cocoon-like object. It was clearly a portrait, but the white cocoon in the picture seemed to exist. The darch didn't lie to me. There's really such a thing. It really exists. John looked excited as he stared at the white cocoon in the painting. His eyes gradually turned strange. Gritting his teeth, John walked to the portrait of the six-winged seraphim and cut his palm with a knife, letting his blood drip onto the white cocoon. It was clearly a mural, but when John's blood dripped onto the white cocoon, it strangely slid to the side. Not a single drop of blood touched the white cocoon. Do I really have to do that to hatch it? John's eyes gradually wore a crazed look as he watched his blood drop to the ground. No matter what price I have to pay. I must defeat that person. I must. Just as the madness in John's eyes reached its apex, he suddenly held the knife and slashed at his lower body. Blood splattered as something fell to the ground. The blood which flowed from John's palm was unable to touch the white cocoon in the beginning. It was as though there was a force that kept the blood away from it. But now, the white cocoon no longer rejected John's blood. Drops of blood landed on it and seeped in. Soon, it dyed the white cocoon red. As the white cocoon absorbed the blood, it emitted a holy light. John's body bathed in the holy light as his wounds healed rapidly. At the same time, his damaged essence energy C was restored. Furthermore, his entire body had undergone a strange transformation. John felt a pure and holy power flowing through his body. It was stronger and purer than before he was injured. Under the support of that power, his holy emperor body also underwent an unpredictable change. John felt his body hurt and itch all over as though he was undergoing puberty again. He felt the strength in his body constantly increasing. John almost couldn't feel the pain and only felt extremely excited. Ah! The strength within John's body burst out uncontrollably. His limbs flailed in the air in an exaggerated manner. His skin was milk-like and he emitted a holy radiance. And behind him, a pair of snow-white angel wings appeared. However, this pair of angel wings was only an illusion and not a real existence. John was already handsome to begin with, but now he looked even more handsome. He was like an angel from heaven, as though he was from another world. Compared to John from the past, this John was less masculine and more feminine. This wasn't strange, because angels had no gender. Crack! Crack! When John's body completed the transformation from a human to an angel, the white cocoon cracked and gradually revealed a figure in the cocoon. It was an angel, who was even more handsome than John. He had six angel wings on his back, and his blonde hair emitted a sun-like radiance. His entire body seemed to be enveloped by holy light. When he walked out of the white cocoon, the entire world seemed to be subdued by his radiance and turned dim. John looked at the six-winged seraphim in front of him with a fervent gaze. He felt that the power in his body was getting stronger and stronger, as if it was affected by the six-winged seraphim. He looked down at John like a god. He extended a hand and pressed it on John's head. He said calmly, In the name of an angel, I'll bestow you the power to be protected. With that holy voice, a terrifying holy light erupted from the palm of the six-winged seraphim, enveloping John's body completely in holy light. Finally, even the six-winged seraphim's body was devoured by the holy light. After the holy light dissipated, only John was left in front of the portrait of the cathedral. However, he had an additional snow-white angel armor and six snow-white angel wings on his back. His entire body emitted terrifying holy light. Did it succeed? How interesting. I wonder if this is the first guardian to appear. Far away in Chess Mountain's cave, a seductive woman, who was chained up suddenly had a strange look in her eyes, as though she had sensed something. However, the strange expression disappeared very quickly. She looked at the cell phone floating in front of her. There were photos on the cell phone interface. The content was actually a picture of Wang Mingyuan breaking into the alternate dimension. I didn't expect that there would be such a powerful person among the humans today. He actually devoured the guardian of the dragons? It seems that the human world isn't as boring as I thought. The seductive woman retracted her gaze and suddenly revealed a strange smile. She opened the chat app and clicked on a friend profile picture to send a message. In the seductive woman's friend list, there were only two groups. One group had more friends, while the other group only had one person. Now, she had sent the message to the friend in that one group. Zhou Wen was studying the flying immortal pose when he suddenly heard his phone ring. He knew that it was a message from the larch. He opened it and couldn't help but frown slightly. You have big trouble awaiting you. There were only six simple words on the message. The Darch, I haven't offended you recently, right? 
Zhou Wen replied. Since when did I say you offended me? The darch replied. Then why are you giving me trouble? Other than me, can't anyone else give you trouble? Apart from you, should there be anyone else? Zhou Wen asked. That might not be the case. The darch then sent another message. I'll give you a chance. Be good and come to Chess Mountain to swear loyalty to me. I can help you tide through this calamity. I appreciate your kindness, Zhou Wen said. All right, I'll wait for you to come to Chess Mountain to beg me. The Darch seemed very confident. Chapter 525 Official Challenge Zhou Wen knew that if the Darch said that there was trouble, there was a high chance that it was real trouble. However, if he always remained subservient to her, there was no room for negotiation in the future. Zhou Wen didn't wish to be a puppet that was at the mercy of others. Furthermore, he also wanted to know if his zero taboo could withstand the Thearka's wish powers. While Zhou Wen became extra careful, he constantly studied the Flying Immortal stance. The Rank 10 Dragon Gate Flying Immortal skill and Transcendent Flying Immortal had some improvement, but they had yet to take the final step needed for a breakthrough. Zhou Wen didn't know what breaking through an epic Rank 10 Essence Energy skill would become. It would be best if he could break through to the mythical stage, but it clearly wasn't that easy. Through his battle with Torch Dragon, Zhou Wen constantly honed himself. It could be said that his posture was very similar to that of a flying immortal, but he was still lacking something. He had yet to reach that realm. Sometimes, many inventions that shocked the world needed a flash of insight other than continuous experiments. What Zhou Wen lacked now was that glimmer of light in the darkness. Zhou Wen could now last for more than two hours in the battle with Torch Dragon, but it was useless. Even if he lasted 99% of the time, everything was useless if he didn't kill Torch Dragon. Zhou Wen was gaming one day, when he suddenly received a call from Insheng. Young Master One, there's something I have to tell you. This matter can only be decided by you. Ensheng's voice was a little solemn. It was different from the usual Ensheng. What's the matter? Zhou Wen knew that something that could make Ensheng so serious was definitely not simple. He recalled the trouble that the Arch had mentioned. John of the Kate family, do you still remember this person? Ensheng asked after some thought. I remember. He once came to our school. Zhou Wen answered. Yes. It's because he lost to you and had his essence energy see crippled that he made a request to Aran family to have a fair battle with you. Furthermore, he took the initiative to propose a duel in Luoyang. And Shun said, Zhou Wen's heart skipped a beat. He knew that the trouble the Darch mentioned was most likely John. He remembered that the Darch had previously chatted with John online. Because the other party has officially proposed a duel and is willing to come to Luoyang alone to challenge you, it's not appropriate for us to reject him on your behalf. You have to decide on this matter yourself. If you aren't willing, young master one, you can reject it. And Shun said, John's essence energy C should have been destroyed, right? How did he recover so quickly? Zhou Wen asked. In theory, it shouldn't have been possible for him to recover so quickly. However, since he dares to challenge you in Luoyang, I'm afraid he has not only recovered, but he should also have improved. And Shun paused for a moment before saying, From my point of view, I don't think you need to take the risk to accept the challenge, young master one. You think I'll lose? Zhou Wen was somewhat surprised. And Sheng should know that he had a six-winged guardian dragon. It was clearly unusual for him to persuade him not to accept the challenge under such circumstances. The Cape family has mythical creatures as well. On the cube's ranking, there are four mythical pets from the Cape family. I suspect that John will be bringing a mythical companion beast with him this time. And Sheng shared his thoughts. Zhou Wen didn't say a word as and Sheng continued. Mythical companion beasts have their own specialties. It's very dangerous to rashly accept challenges without knowing what abilities they have. I've seen some mythical creatures before. Their abilities are extremely unreasonable. As long as you get hit, death is certain. There's nothing you can do about that even if you're stronger than him. Just like Love Letter, we studied it for years and only attacked it after knowing its various abilities. Otherwise, we would definitely suffer heavy losses. I understand what you mean, but I want to accept this challenge. Zhou Wen said after some thought. From Zhou Wen's point of view, this wasn't a battle between him and John, but a secret battle between him and the Darch. The Darch seemed to play both sides, seemingly purposefully, but also inadvertently making Zhou Wen rely on her more and more. Just like the previous few times when she showed her might to him or gave him benefits, she would intentionally or unintentionally show Zhou Wen her strength and invincibility. She would inadvertently create a lofty image, as though Zhou Wen would enjoy endless benefits as long as he remained subservient to her. And if he disobeyed her, he would suffer an irresistible blow. Although the Darch hadn't really harmed Zhou Wen from beginning to end, Zhou Wen could sense that this wasn't a good thing. In the past, the former principal had once said to Zhou Wen that one needed to respect everyone, but one couldn't let respect turn into reliance. Otherwise, 
one would lose the possibility of reaching the pinnacle because the person you relied on was your end. Therefore, Zhou Wen wanted to accept this challenge not because he wanted to defeat John, but because he wanted to break the net that the Darch had weaved over him. He wanted the Darch to fail once. All right, since you've already decided, I know what to do. I'll help you choose the location in time. In Luoyang, you won't be at a disadvantage. No one can use external forces to affect you, but you have to be careful. Don't underestimate John just because he has lost to you before. And Sheng said seriously. Thank you. Zhou Wen felt a sense of warmth in his heart. And Sheng was truly concerned about him. It had been a long time since someone cared for him. And Sheng hung up the phone and turned to say to Wen Tianzhu, who was sitting behind his desk. Overseer, young Master Wen has decided to accept the challenge. Indeed, he's still too young. Since John dares to come to Luoyang alone, he must have made all the necessary preparations. The battle is extremely dangerous, so there's no need for him to take the risk, said in Tianzhua. And Sheng smiled and asked, Overseer, if it's you, would you accept or refuse? If I accepted it, that'd be because I have the strength to deal with any situation. Although in Tianzhua didn't give a direct answer, anyone could tell that he would accept it if it were him. I believe young Master Wen can handle it as well. And Sheng said, I'm just afraid that he will be arrogant and think that he's invincible after obtaining a mythical companion beast. When that happens, he won't even know how he died, sneered in Tianzhua. It wasn't in Sheng's place to say anything else. And Tianzhua paused before saying, Go and set up the venue. If the Empress Dowager finds out that he suffered, she'll probably launch a tirade at me again. Yes. And Sheng accepted the order and left. Few people knew that John was going to Luoyang to challenge Shouwen, but it spread among the six families. The other families found it odd. It hadn't been long since John's essence energy C was crippled, but he had recovered so quickly. He even dared to challenge Zhou Wen in Luoyang. Clearly, this was something unusual. Many families were secretly observing the matter. Chapter 526 Figuring Out Flying Immortal Strangely, the Cape family seemed to have a rather strange reaction towards John challenging Zhou Wen. After some inquiries from the other families, even they didn't know why John had challenged Zhou Wen. This matter is indeed a little strange. Xian Yu, spectate the battle. Xia Dong Yu said to Xia Xian Yu. Is it necessary? Xia Xian Yu asked in doubt. Just take it as a vacation. Xia Dong Yu smiled. The reactions of the families were somewhat different. After investigations, they discovered that John wasn't challenging Zhou when because of the Cape family's ploy. It was just John acting as an individual. This reduced the attention on the matter. Xia Xian Yu packed her stuff and headed to Luoyang. Ever since she lost her mythical companion beast, Xia Xian Yu hadn't been doing well. The Xia family had a higher chance of obtaining a mythical companion beast than the average person thanks to the possession of a mythical companion beast. However, it still wasn't easy to obtain another mythical companion beast. Even the Xia family needed a lot of investigation time before killing a mythical creature. They needed to be fully prepared before sending their experts out with their mythical pets. This typically took months. And it was uncertain if a mythical companion egg would drop. Even if they obtained a mythical companion egg, with so many people in the Xia family in line for one, it was hard to say when it would be Xia Xuanyu's turn again. The incubation of mythical companion beasts was also a huge problem. Wild mythical companion eggs required too much essence energy to incubate. Typical epic humans wouldn't be able to withstand it. They needed to use some special methods, and the cost was similarly large. After arriving in Luoyang, before the date of the duel, Xia Xianyu went to a few famous dimensional zones in Luoyang to take a look. One of them was the famous Dragon Gate Grotto. Xia Xianyu proceeded to explore the caves that she could enter. When she arrived at the Lotus Flower Cave, she saw a familiar person battling with the fairies inside. It's him. Xia Xianyu instantly recognized that the person battling the fairies was Zhou Wen. She had a deep impression of Zhou Wen. After all, she had previously stopped Zhou Wen from killing the girl. Her mythical companion beast had mysteriously disappeared after that. Furthermore, she had come to Luoyang to watch Zhou Wen and John's duel. After watching from the side for a while, Xia Xianyu realized that rather than a battle, Zhou Wen was imitating the fairy's actions. It was obvious that Zhou Wen was much stronger than the fairy. It wouldn't be difficult for him to kill her, but he didn't do so. All he did was use a movement technique similar to the fairy, as he constantly circled around her. Is he learning the fairy's movement technique? Xia Xianyu watched from the side for a while, and the more she watched, the more confused she became. Others became better from imitating and practicing. However, Zhou Wen seemed to become worse. His originally elegant movement technique had turned stiffer and stiffer. Xia Xianyu had seen too many geniuses who improved from learning, but this was the first time she was seeing someone like Zhou Wen who became worse. Zhou Wen's flying immortal stance had always lacked meaning. 
Since he couldn't see the scenery of the Immortal Palace in-game, Jowen decided to come to Lotus Flower Cave to fight the fairy, and directly compare the difference between the fairy and the flying immortal. He wanted to see if he could figure out the reason he couldn't keep up with it. Through actual combat, he could see some differences. The fairy's movement techniques were the same as the flying immortals Jowen saw. They were both elegant and peerless, like fairies dancing in the clouds. Their stances were also very similar. The only difference was the intent. They were both fairies that flew, and fairies originated from Buddhism. As for flying immortals, they were from Taoism. There was a huge gap between their auras, and it could even be said that they were completely different. When Zhou Wen understood this, he immediately felt enlightened. He knew why he felt that something was amiss. It was normal for him to have a barrier when learning the Taoist's flying immortal stance with a Buddhist foundation. During his battle with the fairy, Zhou Wen constantly considered how he could resolve this problem. The more he practiced, the more he realized that the concept of fairy was completely different from that of a flying immortal, maybe even the opposite. If he wanted to master the flying immortal stance, he had to completely change the concept of his movement technique before he could truly master the flying immortal stance of Taoism. Therefore, while fighting the fairy, Zhou Wen constantly weakened the similarities between his movement techniques from the fairies, slowly wiping away the concept of the fairy. He planned to first master the flying immortal stance before trying to see if he could fuse the two together. This resulted in the situation that Xia Xian Yu saw. Zhou Wen's movement technique seemed to be getting worse as he practiced. It left Xia Xian Yu puzzled as to what Zhou Wen was doing. After watching for a while, Zhou Wen's movement technique had become terrible. From Xia Xuan Yu's point of view, the movement technique looked showy, but it lacked charm. However, Xia Xian Yu soon realized that Zhou Wen's movement technique had changed again. His originally stiff movement technique seemed to become elegant again. However, this grace was different from that of a fairy. Strange? It seems to be a fairy's movement technique, but why does it feel like the two movement techniques are completely different? Xia Xian Yu could sense a problem. It was also an extremely elegant movement technique. The movement techniques of a fairy had a dancing aura, but Zhou Wen's movement technique looked even more transcendent. It didn't have the feeling of decadence. Zhou Wen was also pleasantly surprised. After completely erasing the concept of the fairy movement technique, he realized that the barrier he had previously felt seemed to have vanished. His movement technique became more and more fluid. Xia Xian Yu could not help but feel a little surprised. Despite Zhou Wen clearly imitating the fairy's movement technique, he was able to cultivate something that was completely different. It was her first time seeing such a person. This Zhou Wen is indeed different from the rest. It's no wonder even a peer like Lance was defeated by him. Xia Xian Yu nodded inwardly. Ka Cha! Zhou Wen didn't plan on killing the fairy. All he did was pass by the fairy, and the force from his clothes sliced through her body, causing her to die. Having lost his opponent, Zhou Wen felt somewhat at a loss. At that moment, he was filled with inspiration and was just about to take another step forward when he suddenly lost his opponent. The inability to unleash his powers made him unable to vent his frustration. Just as he was about to head to the depths of the cave to look for another fairy, even if it was a few fairy beasts, he suddenly felt a sharp sword intent piercing through the air. Zhou Wen was alarmed. He had been using the truth listener earring all this while, but he hadn't discovered that a person was here. Although this had something to do with his focus while practicing the flying immortal stance, it also meant that the person was not one to be trifled with. The sword intent was like a tidal wave. A black-clothed woman used her finger as a sword as she cut through the air. Her figure was like a long beam of light as a cold wind blew. Chapter 527 Path to Snatching Heaven Zhou Wen was surprised to see that it was Xia Xian Yu. The shocking scene of Xia Xian Yu having her ancient sword forcefully snatched by demonic neonate remained fresh in his mind. Could it be that Xia Xian Yu knows that I snatched the ancient sword and specially came to settle scores with me? Zhou Wen originally wanted to explain, but Xia Xuan Yu's sword intent was just too powerful and her movement techniques were too fast. He didn't even have the chance to explain. Whether I'm right or wrong, I'll beat her first. The one with the biggest fist has the final say. Zhou Wen understood the logic and didn't wish to explain further. He used his newly learned flying immortal stance to fight Xia Xian Yu. Xia Xian Yu was many times more powerful than the fairy. She immediately put immense pressure on Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen wasn't satisfied to begin with. So the pressure made him feel an indescribable joy as he displayed the flying immortal stance he had learned. Xia Xuan Yu's movement technique was a secret art of the Xia family named Path to Snatching Heaven. Originally there was no path in the world. Living beings in this world needed to snatch a path from heaven to survive. That was why it had such a strange name as the Path to Snatching Heaven. Fighting all living beings for the space for survival means that only one can survive. This was the first sentence of the Path to Snatching Heaven. Hence, 
the Xia family's path to snatching heaven could be said to be a battle for every inch of land. I'll walk the path you take, leaving you nowhere to go. Thus, the path to snatching heavens, snatching, was fully displayed. Zhou Wen was initially delighted, but not long after, the carefree feeling vanished without a trace. He felt even more stifled than before. Xia Xuanyue's movement techniques were just too domineering. Zhou Wen could only use half his movement techniques most of the time, before the subsequent variations were made impossible by Xia Xianyu. Therefore Zhou Wen had to use another move. And this was only the beginning. Xia Xuanyue's movement technique was like a fearless bandit that constantly repressed Zhou Wen, preventing him from completing a single move. Typically, he had no choice but to change his stance midway. There was no trace of an immortal air in the flying immortal stance at all. Even that elegant feeling disappeared. The decadence made one uncomfortable just watching it. If others could feel aggrieved seeing this, Zhou Wen felt even worse. However, Zhou Wen was the type of person who would take the risk. The more pressure Xia Xian Yu gave him, the more spirited he became. He had to resolve the problem. The two of them fought silently in the cave. The space available to Zhou Wen was constantly squeezed and reduced. This was the first time he had encountered such a domineering movement technique. He felt like he had nowhere to go. If it were someone with a weak will, they would probably give up on such a battle and fight Xia Xian Yu with brute force. However, Zhou Wen didn't do that. He continued searching for a way to break through Xia Xuan Yu's suppression. Xia Xian Yu became more and more surprised. Zhou Wen was much younger than her, about 10 years. He was about the same age as Xia Bing and company. However, Zhou Wen's determination was far beyond what Xia Bing and company could compare with. Under her movement technique, even Xia Bing who was well versed in the path to snatching heaven could only last for a few minutes at most, and her mental fortitude would waver. However, despite having fought her for so long, Zhou Wen remained highly focused. He constantly tried various methods to compete with her. He didn't shrink back or risk his life irresponsibly. To be able to maintain such a firm attitude despite being constantly suppressed left Xia Xian Yu somewhat astonished. It's no wonder the Yun family thinks so highly of him. Just this firm willpower alone isn't something an ordinary person can compare with. Resources can be obtained slowly. Essence energy arts, companion beasts, and so on can be slowly obtained. However, if a person's willpower isn't firm, no matter how many resources they have, it will be very difficult for them to achieve anything. If Zhou Wen doesn't perish, he will definitely be a candidate to become a mythical. Xia Xian Yu marveled inwardly. Under Xia Xuan Yu's suppression, Zhou Wen's flying immortal stance constantly improved, becoming more and more otherworldly. His heart calmed down as the pressure Xia Xian Yu exerted on him decreased. When Xia Xian Yu saw that her path to snatching heaven's pressure on Zhou Wen was reducing, she raised the strength of her sword technique, instantly pressurizing Zhou Wen. However, this pressure didn't last long. Zhou Wen gradually stabilized the situation. His movement technique was becoming more and more extraordinary. It had the feeling of him ascending to the heavens, completely different from the previous fairy movement technique. Xia Xuan Yu's expression turned serious too. Xia Xian Yu, who had not used her life soul, started using her life soul. A vertical eye appeared between her eyebrows. The eye did not have a pupil, but it was as clean as a mirror. The moment Xia Xuan Yu's life soul appeared, Zhou Wen, who had stabilized the situation, was at a disadvantage. This time, Zhou Wen felt like he was lacking in strength. No matter how he changed his movement technique or how perfectly he used the flying immortal stance, he was still firmly suppressed by Xia Xian Yu. The sword and person said Zhou went into a repeated retreat. Even his path of retreat was sealed. It made Zhou Wen feel like he was trapped in a battle of beasts. No! It still doesn't work. Zhou Wen realized that no matter how he changed his movement technique, Xia Xian Yu seemed to be able to predict his movements and seal off all possibilities. It made Zhou Wen feel like a bird in a cage, or like a monkey in Buddha's palm. He couldn't escape no matter what. This pressure was different from fighting a powerful mythical creature. In his battle against a mythical creature, he knew he was no match for it, so he could only do his best. However, when facing Xia Xian Yu, he clearly felt that his strength was not any weaker than hers, but he felt as though he was restricted in every manner. It was as though countless invisible threads bound him, making it impossible for him to unleash his strength. This sort of stifling feeling was worse than not having the ability to fight. The slaughterer life soul boosted Zhou Wen's strength and speed, but it still wasn't enough to break through Xia Xuan Yu's attacks. After repeatedly retreating, Zhou Wen was forced deep into the cave. Behind him was a stone wall, and there was more room for retreat. Xia Xuan Yu's suppression continued. Even Xia Xian Yu had no choice but to admit that even among her peers, there weren't many who could last so long under her sword. This wasn't a matter of strength, but the pressure one felt. It was very easy for others to give up on themselves and put their lives on the line. 
and in a true battle between experts, every single move needed to be calculated. The so-called burst of strength and desperation never existed. The more impulsive one was, the more flaws one revealed, it made it easier to die. Under extreme circumstances, the best solution was not to risk his life, but to calm themselves down. Even when one was bleeding and injured, one had to constantly keep calm and think of a way to solve the problem. That was the only way out. Under such pressure, Zhou Wen had already pushed the flying immortal stance to its limits, but he was still unable to match up to Xiaoxian Yu. This made him involuntarily think of the female immortal who had torn out of the door. Perhaps only such a movement technique can break through the opponent's suppression. Zhou Wen's eyes burned as countless thoughts flashed through his mind. Chapter 528 Wanting to Win The image of the fairy tearing out of the entrance had been replayed countless times in Zhou Wen's mind. It wasn't difficult to imitate the fairy's stance, but it was difficult for him to understand the insights and profundity within. Through his understanding of the flying immortal stance, Zhou Wen had gained some understanding of the fairy who tore out of the entrance. However, he didn't know what effects these insights might have. However, he was already in a desperate situation. Zhou Wen couldn't care less. At the instant Xia Xuan Yu's sword technique sealed off all his escape routes, he used Transcendent Flying Immortal. This Transcendent Flying Immortal technique was completely different from the previous Transcendent Flying Immortal. Although the moves were the same, the concept was completely different. In the past, Transcendent Flying Immortal was extremely domineering, but now, it had a free and unrestrained feeling that transcended the mortal world. If one had to use a single word to describe it, Zhou Wen felt that this was what a true, immortal, was. Immortals in the traditional view of East District definitely weren't overbearing in a peerless manner. Immortals and deities were two completely different concepts. The power represented by deities made them revered by others, because of the authority they had in certain aspects. Therefore, deities were rulers. The Chinese character for immortal was the word human and mountain combined. The original meaning was about people seeking transcendence in the mortals. Immortality was simply a pursuit, a form of growth. From a certain perspective, one could even say that they were completely different from the deities who represented power. Previously, transcendent flying immortal was overly domineering and was closer to a deity. Now, the transcendent flying immortal that Zhou Wen was using had the air of an immortal. Xia Xuan Yu's life soul was known as catoptric eyes. It could allow her to enter an extraordinary ethereal state. Under that ethereal state, not only could she strengthen her physique, but it could also allow her to possess the power of clairvoyance. Although she could not really see the future, she could foresee her opponent's actions, but it was not 100% accurate. Relying on the power of the catoptric eyes and the path to snatching heaven, coupled with her outstanding sword techniques, Xia Xian Yu was a rather terrifying person in her generation. Some even believe that she could be compared to Ntianzua, who was about the same age. In fact, even amongst the older generation, there weren't many who could match Xia Xian Yu, let alone her peers. Xia Xian Yu had already pushed Zhou into a corner and was just about to stop. She wasn't really planning on fighting a life and death battle with Zhou Wen to begin with. She only felt that Zhou Wen desired more opportunities to use his movement technique. She also wanted to see how far he could go with it. Therefore, she took the initiative to be Zhou Wen's sparring partner to force him to showcase his movement technique. Zhou Wen's performance had already surprised her. His movement technique was already comparable to the top movement techniques of the six families, but that was all. Being able to match a top-notch movement technique didn't mean that he could match a top-notch person. In fact, Zhou Wen's movement technique wasn't her match. Just as she was about to stop, Xia Xuan Yu's pupils constricted. This was because her catoptric eyes suddenly seemed to lose their effect, preventing her from deducing Zhou Wen's trajectory. The catoptric eyes weren't just having bouts of clairvoyance for no reason. An illusion that reflected in her, I constantly predicted her opponent's reactions, allowing Xia Xian Yu to know what the opponent might do next so that she could be prepared in advance or deal with them in a targeted manner. The deduction was extremely fast, just like a computer processing data. Feedback would appear in Xia Xuan Yu's mind in an instant. There was no need for complicated thoughts, as they could be synchronized with the battle. However, the present situation was different. The catoptric eyes were unable to deduce Zhou when subsequent reactions. Or rather, there were too many subsequent reactions, so they were pointless as a reference. Just like a person walking on a three-pronged road without considering the path they came from, Xia Xian Yu could easily determine which path the person would choose from the two paths. The chance of determining the correct path was very high, and it was also very easy to prepare for it. At most, she could make preparations for both paths. But now, Zhou Wen seemed to be standing at a bustling fork with at least a hundred forks. Even if her catoptric eyes could deduce all the possibilities, it was meaningless. It would be impossible for Xia Xian Yu to seal off so many subsequent challenges. The present Zhou Wen gave Xia Xian Yu such a feeling. 
His movement techniques appeared unpredictable, and even Xia Xian you couldn't predict his trajectory. At that moment, the boundary between the Dragon Gate Flying Immortal art and the Transcendent Flying Immortal began to blur. There was no longer any difference between movement techniques and attack moves. It could be unleashed as he wished, but it possessed an unfathomable profundity. Elegant. Xia Xian you could only use that word to describe Zhou Wen's movement technique. Regardless of how domineering her sword techniques and path to snatching heaven were, they didn't seem to pose a threat to him. And Zhou Wen's casual actions made Xia Xian you feel immense pressure. Wherever his clothes passed, cracks would appear in the void. Xia Xian you realized that she couldn't keep up with Zhou Wen's speed. She couldn't help but turn serious. She treated Zhou Wen as an equal, not like before when she only wanted to see what Zhou Wen could accomplish. Xia Xuan Yue's movement technique was domineering, and Zhou Wen's movement technique was elegant. The two completely different movement techniques constantly clashed, benefiting Zhou Wen and Xia Xian Yue greatly. In terms of talent, Xia Xian Yue was not weaker than anyone else. Not many people in the Xia clan could master the path to snatching heaven, and Xia Xian Yue had gained basic mastery when she was just 12. But at her current level, be it her path to snatching heaven movement technique or her own level or realm, she had reached a bottleneck. To advance to the mythical stage from the epic stage was as difficult as ascending to the heavens. It was already difficult enough to nurture a mythical pet. It required large amounts of resources, but for humans to advance to the mythical stage on their own, it was hundreds or thousands of times more difficult than nurturing a mythical pet. There were many members of the six families with resources and talent, but in all these years, how many people could truly advance to the mythical stage? With a perfect life soul, unparalleled movement, and sword techniques, and a mythical pet, Xia Xian Yu, who wasn't even 30 years old, was already standing at the pinnacle of the human race. It's lonely at the top. In Xia Xuan Yu's eyes, it was not a compliment, but a sense of sorrow. She had no path to herself. Therefore, even when she lost her mythical companion beast, Xia Xian Yu didn't think too much about it. This was because she was always stuck. Even if she waited for a few years for a mythical companion beast, things would still be the same. It didn't make much of a difference to her. However, today's battle with Zhou Wen had stirred up her long-awaited desire for victory and a breakthrough. Even her long-tired thoughts seemed to become active. Victory had become a matter of course in the past few years, not a pursuit. However, Xia Xian Yu was trying to win now. Chapter 529 John's Arrival With the sword and body combined, Xia Xian Yu fused her sword techniques and movement techniques into one, no longer separating them from each other. The body was the sword, and the sword was the body. Only then could she resist Zhou Wen's transcendent flying immortal. The two of them gradually realized that although their movement techniques looked completely different and were even diametrically opposite, they also seemed to complement each other. The path to snatching heaven was created on the principle of human strength and the concept of taking fate into one's hands. As for Zhou Wen's concept of immortal, it was also a product of human pursuit for transcendence. However, one was to conquer nature while the other was to return to nature. It could be said that the same pursuit had led to two completely different paths. In a battle between two techniques, it was difficult to determine who was better. No one could gain the upper hand. Both of them were pursuing a breakthrough and wanted to suppress each other. However, with every bit of insight they gained, they found their opponents were stronger than before. No matter how hard they tried, they could not defeat the other. This was the first time they had encountered such a tenacious opponent. Each of them racked their brains, pushed themselves to the limits, and constantly gained revelations and countermeasures. The two figures in the Lotus Flower Cave constantly intersected like two streams of light. Wherever the streams of light went, forces such as saber beams and sword beams followed. Just the force produced by the fluttering of clothes could easily cut through rocks, leaving behind marks like sword slashes. Wherever the two of them went, the fairy beasts and fairies were torn apart by the blade beams. The surrounding rocks also shattered, and the Lotus Flower Cave was battle-scarred. Zhou Wen had already grasped the concept of the fairy who tore through the entrance. He could perfectly match it with Transcendent Flying Immortal, but he had ultimately failed to defeat Xia Xian Yu. He couldn't help but wonder. I wonder if it'll work if I fuse the two different concepts of fairy and Flying Immortal into Transcendent Flying Immortal. Zhou Wen thought to himself. This was definitely a crazy and bold idea. The moves were the same, but the concepts were different. It might not be impossible. Zhou Wen's mind was constantly bubbling as he waited for the opportunity. Xia Xian Yu was also pondering. The Xia family was originally an ancient family in the East District. Before the Dimensional Storms, they had a deep cultural heritage. Therefore, after the Dimensional Storms, the Xia family received essence energy arts early. There were even many essence energy arts and techniques that the Xia family had learned from ancient culture. The path to snatching heaven was an example. 
many of the Xia family's essence energy arts were the same. Outsiders only believed that the Xia family was powerful because it had produced one of the six Federation heroes. However, they didn't know that even without the Xia family's hero, they wouldn't be any weaker. Therefore, the Xia family had the confidence to abandon the famous Invincible Kane Divine Art. This was because even without the Invincible Kane Divine Art, the essence energy art that the Xia family possessed was enough to make them stand tall in the world of experts. The essence energy art that Xia Xian Yu cultivated was one of the essence energy arts that the Xia family had learned in ancient culture. It was called the Great Emperor Sutra. However, as it was derived from ancient culture, it wasn't as complete as a ready-made essence energy art. After generations of the Xia family researched and improved it, the Great Emperor Sutra was completed in Xia Xuan Yu's generation, with the mortal, legendary, and epic stage done. However, after reaching the epic stage, no one knew how to proceed. The Great Emperor Sutra did not have any subsequent follow-up, so they had to rely on themselves to figure things out. Xia Xian Yu had been studying the Great Emperor Sutra, but her improvement was limited. In the past couple of years, she had completely stopped progressing. Even though she had read a lot of ancient books, trying to find a direction for a breakthrough through was minuscule. However, the battle with Zhou Wen gave Xia Xian Yu new ideas. How difficult is it to snatch paths from the heavens? As the leader of the human race, the emperor is the one who will face heaven's path most directly. A thought was sprouting in Xia Xuan Yu's mind. The two figures continued to clash. Suddenly, the two of them seemed to come to a tacit understanding and simultaneously withdrew from the battle. Both of them stood at the end of the cave and stared at their opponent. There seemed to be a strange energy brewing within their bodies, like the calm before the storm. They were in one of the dimensionalized lotus flower caves. On top of the cave was an intricate lotus flower pattern, and there was even a fairy flying around it. As the two of them stood in silence, a distorted space suddenly appeared in the middle of the lotus flower pattern. A creature emerged from the lotus flower, appearing right in the middle of the two of them. It was a fairy. When the fairy appeared, a terrifying power suddenly erupted from within the cave. In an instant, the fairy seemed to be sliced apart by countless sword beams, turning into fragments. Zhou Wen and Xia Xuan Yu's auras were also stirred, as they moved involuntarily. Zhou Wen's body went from extreme stillness to extreme movement as he instantly streaked across the void. He looked elegant and graceful, but it made it impossible for anyone to react. Despite being visible to the naked eye, one's brain was unable to fire the order to react. One could only watch as the figure flitted away. The despair was enough to destroy a person's soul. However, not only did Xia Xian Yi react, but she also took a step forward. The sword intent on her seemed to shatter the heavens. With unparalleled conviction, she faced Zhou Wen's terrifying strike. Blood bloomed like flowers. Xia Xuan Yu's finger stopped at Zhou Wen's glabella. As for Zhou Wen's finger, it was stuck to Xia Xuan Yu's swan-like neck. Drops of blood slid down their fingers. John had come to Luoyang again. This was not his first time here, but his mood was completely different from the last time he came. Zhou Wen, it's time for you to pay the price for your actions. John walked on Luoyang's streets. His handsome angel-like face attracted the attention of the passers-by. There were many handsome men, but they had never seen anyone as handsome as John. However, John was completely different from the princely gentleman he used to be. There was no expression on his face, and he was as perfect as a sculpture. His every move was elegant and dignified. Mr. John, welcome to Luoyang. And Sheng stood in front of the car and greeted John with a smile. Although he wasn't as handsome as John, for some reason, he didn't seem to pale in comparison when standing in front of him. Two girls who stood on the street opposite them were momentarily lost as to who was more charming. Where's Zhou Wen? John looked at and Sheng and asked coldly. It was as though he held zero concern about anyone apart from Zhou Wen. Chapter 530 Divine Skill Zhou Wen returned to his dorm and looked at the blood-colored avatar's information with his mysterious phone. He had a smile that appeared as though he had hit the lottery. Transcendent flying immortal, mythical. Just one word made Zhou Wen feel sweet inside and out. The Dragon Gate Fairy skill and Dragon Gate Flying Immortal skill he had learned previously had vanished, leaving behind only one Transcendent Flying Immortal skill. Furthermore, this skill didn't have any rank. What was even more strange was that there wasn't any essence energy consumption. However, Zhou Wen soon understood why Transcendent Flying Immortal didn't have any essence energy expenditure. This was because he could use it as he wished. He could freely control how much essence energy he expended, so there was naturally no limit to it. If only advancing to the mythical stage could be as simple as that, Zhou Wen thought greedily. Unfortunately, his life soul hadn't advanced to the perfect stage yet. It was too early to think about the mythical stage. His most important life soul, Slaughterer, was still in its primordial body form and had yet to advance. Regardless, 
Having a divine skill raises my strength greatly. If I can train all my skills to a divine level, I'll be really impressive. Zhou Wen tried some other skills and realized that it would be difficult for him to train his skills to rank 10, much less advanced to a mythical level. In fact, although a divine skill was much easier than advancing to the mythical stage, not everyone could comprehend a divine skill at the epic stage. The reason Zhou Wen was able to comprehend it was partly because of his talent and partly because he had sufficient resources. If he didn't have so many foundation skills or hadn't watched the phenomenon of the fairy tearing out of the entrance, it would be impossible for him to advance to the mythical level. Another important reason was that his opponent was powerful enough. Moreover, his opponent's technique was a perfect match for his transcendent flying immortal. Both sides had gained new insights before he advanced to the mythical level. Zhou Wen guessed that Xia Xuanyu's move had probably advanced to the mythical level as well. However, she didn't have the mysterious phone to read the information about herself. Even so, she likely knew deep down what had happened. The heritage of the six families is truly terrifying. Just any random woman has such capabilities. Zhou Wen increasingly felt that the six families had a strong foundation. However, he was thinking too much. Xia Xianyu was a top expert among the six families. They weren't as common as Zhou Wen imagined. Just as he was admiring his divine skill, his phone suddenly rang. It was in Sheng. Young Master Wen, John has arrived in Luoyang. He came alone. He didn't bring a single person from the Kate family. And Sheng said. Zhou Wen knew that and Sheng meant that since John had dared to come to Luoyang alone, he definitely wasn't completely unprepared. He was also reminding Zhou Wen to be careful. How could and Sheng know that Zhou Wen was more careful than he imagined? This was because Zhou Wen knew that he wasn't only facing John, but also the terrifying march. Where's the battle location? What time is it? Zhou Wen asked. Tomorrow. It'll be held in the city's arena. The venue has been set up. We definitely won't let any external forces affect your battle with John. You can rest assured about this. We've even invited the Zhang family and the Xia family to watch the battle as witnesses to prevent the Kate family from making an issue afterward. People from the Dugu family will also come, but they haven't arrived yet. They may appear tomorrow. And Sheng explained the general situation. Ah Sheng, have you met John? Do you feel that he's different from before? When Zhou Wen asked this question, he was thinking about the words the Darch had accidentally sent him. He's indeed a little different. He looks very confident, and his aura is very strong. It's far from the standard of a legendary. This person is definitely not simple. And Sheng said. Nothing else? Zhou Wen asked. What else? And Sheng didn't know what Zhou Wen was referring to. Do you feel that John's looks, temper, or voice are different from before? Zhou Wen didn't know how to put it. His temper could be a little different from before. He looks cold, as though he doesn't care about anything. He's like a high and mighty god. The way he looks at us is like looking at ants. And Sheng said after some thought. It's not that. Let's put it this way. Don't you feel that he's a little effeminate? Zhou Wen asked again. Not really. And Sheng said after some thought. Zhou Wen thought, could it be that the Thearka's message wasn't sent to John? And Sheng said that he would pick Zhou Wen up tomorrow. He told him to make preparations for battle. The biggest arena in Luoyang was mainly used for companion beasts to battle. It was mostly a performance-type battle, but the military had sealed the arena today. Only a few people who were invited could enter the arena. Xia Xianyu was among the crowd. As soon as she entered the arena, she saw a man with a sword on his back standing in front of the guardrail of the arena. Dugu? Xia Xianyu was slightly surprised to see the man. She never expected him to come to Luoyang. Dugu was slightly older than Xia Xianyu and in Tianzhu by a few years. He had just reached his thirties, and Xia Xianyu had always heard about this legend. Among the six families, Dugu had a very special nickname. The only man in the Dugu family who doesn't cower. It wasn't that the men of the Dugu family were really cowardly. However, they specialized in movement techniques, so when others fought with the Dugu family, they couldn't even touch their bodies. It was extremely depressing and humbling, which was why they mocked the Dugu family for being cowardly. In such a family clan, Dugu was quite different. He didn't use his movement techniques to win battles. When he was out traveling, he had defeated the six families and made them accept the loss wholeheartedly. Among those around the same age as Dugu, no one could beat him. Unfortunately, Dugu was a little older than them and didn't join the battle between Ntianzua and the six families' younger generation. The six families believed that Dugu was definitely no weaker than Ntianzua and might even be stronger. Back when Dugu went to the Xia family to challenge them, Xia Xianyu was only 10 years old. However, she had a deep impression of him because even her cousin, whom she had idolized since she was young, was unable to defeat Dugu. In recent years, she had rarely heard of Dugu. 
She heard that he spent time conquering a large dimensional zone in the South District. She never expected to see him here. I remember you. Your loser sister, right? Dugugu looked at Xia Xianyu and recalled. My brother's name is Xia Luchuan, not loser. Xia Xianyu said in a depressed tone. It's all the same. Dugugu said that and turned to look at the arena. He saw a handsome man standing in the arena. That young man from the Capes family is very scary. Dugugu said to Xia Xianyu. Xia Xianyu was slightly surprised. She didn't expect Dugugu to have such a high opinion of John. It was truly terrifying for Dugugu to say the word scary. Chapter 531 Inside the Cocoon Xia Xianyu could not help but look at John. Although he used to have the title of saint, titles were just a joke in the six families. Ignoring Xia Xuanyu's generation, even amongst John's peers, there was also a freak like Lance. John paled in comparison. Now that John had actually been praised by Dugugu, Xia Xianyu could not help but take a closer look at him. John stood in the arena like an ancient Greek statue. Despite just standing there, he gave off a beautiful, holy feeling. His aura was indeed very strong, making him likely to be at the epic stage. However, Xia Xianyu did not know what horror Dugugu was referring to. Why do you say that? Xia Xianyu walked up to Dugugu and asked curiously. He has a special power. Dugugu said as he looked at John. Special? Xia Xianyu did not understand what Dugugu meant by special. Many essence energy arts, essence energy skills, pets, life providences, and life souls could be called special powers. This description was just too general. Dugugu said, I entered a dimensional zone with Loser. In that dimensional zone, I found a black cocoon. Did he tell you about it? No, but I've heard of such cocoons. The six families have similar records. There will be similar cocoons in certain mysterious dimensional zones. However, there will be powerful mythical creatures nearby. No one knows what's inside the cocoons. Most people have guessed that they might be the descendants of mythical creatures, said Xia Xianyu. No, they are definitely not the descendants of ordinary mythical creatures. Back then, Loser and I cracked a black cocoon and saw the creature inside. It was completely different from the mythical creature that protected it. It was an even more terrifying existence, Dugugu said as his gaze landed on John. He said affirmatively, There's a similar aura on John, but it's not quite the same. What kind of creature is it? Why has my brother never mentioned it? Xia Xinyu asked. I don't know. We originally thought that with our strength and mythical pets, it wouldn't be difficult for us to take the black cocoon even if we couldn't defeat the mythical creature guarding it. In the end, we used all our strength and only managed to crack open a tiny hole. We were nearly killed by the creature outside the black cocoon. As for the creature inside the black cocoon, it just waved its hand. Dugugu paused before continuing. And Loser suffered serious injuries. You can say that we barely escaped death. He recuperated at my house for nearly six months before he recovered. I remember now. A year ago, my brother went to the South District. He said that he would be traveling for a month or two, but he only came back after almost a year. It should be that time, right? Xia Xianyu paused for a moment before continuing. Ever since he came back, my brother seems to have changed. He's checking up on documents every day as if he's researching something. He's acting mysteriously. When I ask him, he doesn't tell me what he's studying. It was probably then. Anyone who has seen such a terrifying creature would not be indifferent. However, it was too dangerous. He probably didn't want you to worry and was afraid that you would stop him from going again. That's why he didn't tell you, said Dugugu. You're saying that John has the aura of that kind of creature? Xia Xianyu looked at John with a strange expression. Yes, but it's different. I'm not sure if it's the same aura, Dugugu said. What are you talking about? A voice came from behind. A long-haired man in a robe walked over. The man looked ordinary, but his eyes were exceptionally good-looking. They weren't considered big, nor were they double eyelids, but the contours were especially aesthetic. Zhang Chuenqiu, why are you willing to come out? Dugugu looked at the man in surprise. Dugugu hadn't lost when he challenged the young scions of the six families years ago. However, there were also people who could fight him to a draw. Zhang Chuenqiu was one of them. In that era, the geniuses of the six families were numerous. They were known as the Golden Generation. Perhaps that generation had used up all the luck of the six families, and with four to five years as a demarcation line, the number of outstanding people who were born after that was few and far between. When it came to John's generation, only Lance was outstanding, while the others were lacking. On the contrary, amazing geniuses outside of the six great family clans appeared. The Yin family requested our Zhang family to bear witness, so I came. Zhang Chuenqiu walked to Dugu Ji's side and sat down, in the spectator stand. Over such a small event, you came instead of Zhang Xiao? Dugugu didn't believe it. 
The world hasn't been peaceful recently, and the fiend tomb has been stirring. With the appearance of the black cubes, I feel like something big is about to happen, so I came out to take a look. John Chuenchio said. Something happened with the fiend tomb? Dugugu and Xiaoxian were shocked. They knew that the Zhang family had been guarding the fiend tomb for years. Many generations of people had ended up being buried there, which was why the creatures in the fiend tomb were unable to cause trouble in the human world. If something really happened to the fiend tomb, the Zhang family would definitely be affected. It's temporarily stabilized, so I can come out for a walk. Zhang Chuenchio's gaze landed on John, and his eyes narrowed slightly. This John has something interesting about him. You can tell too? Duguga sat down beside Zhang Chuenchio. Xia Xianyu also sat down. Compared to Zhang Chuenchio and Dugu Ji's generation, her talent and strength were not inferior. However, she lacked their experience. Years ago, there were very few mythical companion eggs amongst the six families. It was unlike now where they could just give Xia Xianyu a mythical companion egg. Back then, if they wanted a mythical companion egg, they had to take the risk in the dimensional zones. This resulted in a difference in experience. However, their generation was also the most tragic generation when it came to deaths. Very few managed to retrieve mythical creatures alive. I just came to take a look since it's along the way. I didn't expect to see anything so interesting. However, his opponent is a little weak. I wonder if he can force that thing out. John Chuenchio said. Not necessarily. Although I don't know how terrifying the thing is, John's opponent is definitely not weak. Xia Xianyu said. Zhang Chuenchio smiled. Zhou Wen should be Wang Mingyuan student, right? Speaking of which, I really wanted to meet Wang Mingyuan. Unfortunately, I missed the opportunity. Dugugu said. To be able to defeat Lance, he can't be weak. However, he hasn't had much time to grow. I wonder how far he has progressed. As the trio spoke, Zhou Wen entered the venue. Everyone couldn't help but look over. Chapter 532 The Appearance of the Six-Winged Seraphim Tisk, look at his life providence. He's indeed extraordinary. It's not easy to have one even among the six families. Zhang Chunqiu said with narrowed eyes, as he sized up Zhou Wen. This person's aura is deep and reserved, and his eyes are resolute. If he doesn't die, he will definitely be able to achieve something in the future. Dugugu nodded. In recent years, outstanding talents have appeared from all over the world. On the contrary, although there are many talented people born in our six families, they lack the light from providence and perseverance. Zhang Chuenqiu sighed. Xia Xianyu and Dugugu remained silent. What Zhang Chuenqiu said was something that they were all worried about. The six families seemed to be getting worse with each generation, and they no longer seemed favored by providence. However, this was a problem that no one could solve. If one son was lacking, the father could only worry. Zhou Wen, we finally meet again. John was standing quietly in the square with his eyes closed. The moment Zhou Wen stepped into the venue, he opened his eyes and stared intently at him. I don't want to see you that much. As Zhou Wen spoke, he couldn't help but glance at John's crotch. Fortunately, he couldn't see anything through his clothes. Of course, Zhou Wen only subconsciously took a glance. He didn't really want to see anything that burned his eyes, so he didn't use Truth Listener's hearing ability to take a gander at that spot. From today onwards, you probably won't have the chance to see me again. Today, I'm going to make you repay what you owe me and my sister, along with the interest. I'll let you have a taste of having your essence energy see crippled. That feeling of living a life worse than death. John said coldly. I'm afraid I'll disappoint you. Zhou Wen said firmly. It was easy to kill Zhou Wen, but it was impossible to cripple his essence energy see because he didn't have any. John didn't say a word as he walked towards Zhou Wen. And Shun led many soldiers to guard the stands, and he watched every action. In the in family study, and Tianzua was watching the battle through the surveillance footage from his phone. In the cave in Chess Mountain, the Darch was also looking at her phone. The scene was the same as in Tianzua's phone. You won't be able to escape from my palm. Upon seeing Zhou Wen on the screen, the Thearch's seductive eyes narrowed slightly. Zhou Wen, accept the judgment of God. John said, as he raised his hand up high. Holy light spewed out from his hand, and transformed into a towering blade of holy light that slashed down at Zhou Wen. It was the famous holy light judgment of the Cape family. One had to possess the hero bloodline of the Cape family to cultivate this terrifying essence energy skill. Zhou Wen had seen this move before, but it wasn't as terrifying as it was now. Clearly John's strength had already reached the peak of the epic stage. Zhou Wen had no intention of retreating. He also raised his arm and slashed out a blood-colored wheel. It was none other than the demonic astral wheel. The blood-red wheel of light collided with the blade of holy light and shattered with a terrifying explosion. The light blade and the light wheel tore apart, forming a shock wave that directly lifted the ground of the arena. The surface of the steel concrete structure ebbed like a wave. With just one strike, 
the ground was destroyed. Not bad. At this age, he has already reached the epic stage. He's much stronger than we were back then, said John Chuinchia with a smile. Dubugu nodded slightly. He's indeed very strong. I wonder if he has a mythical companion beast. It's hard to say. And Tianzua is a little terrifying. Perhaps he can get a mythical companion egg for Zhou Wen, John Chuinchio said. In the arena, John waved his arms. He repeatedly cast holy light judgment attacks at him. Such a terrifying power seemed to be casually unleashed. Zhou Wen had no intention of drawing his saber. At the same time, he brandished the demonic astral wheel to fight John, shattering all the holy light judgment attacks. Dugugu and the others originally thought that such a battle would not last for long because the Holy Light Judgment consumed a huge amount of essence energy. Even with the hero bloodline and constitution of the Cape family, it was impossible to use it multiple times. Although they had never seen Zhou Wen's essence energy skill before, it was clearly an extremely draining essence energy skill for it to be able to resist the Holy Light Judgment. It also couldn't be delivered forever. But soon, they were surprised to discover that both John and Zhou when we're able to continuously slash out essence energy skills without any signs of exhaustion. In a blink of an eye, more than 10 holy light judgment attacks and demonic astral wheels were slashed out. The entire arena was a mess. The terrifying collision created huge craters in the ground. Seeing that holy light judgment couldn't gain the upper hand, John didn't plan on continuing. He stopped and stared at Zhou Wen. I never expected you to come this far. It looks like I've underestimated you. Your improvement isn't slow either, but is that all? Zhou Wen stared at John. Although repeated unleashing of such essence energy attacks was indeed very powerful, it was nothing to Zhou Wen. If John had really contacted the Dvarch, his strength wouldn't be that simple. After all, the Dvarch knew that Zhou Wen had two mythical pets, Six Winged and Truth Listener. Under such circumstances, the Dvarch still believed that he was no match for John and even wanted him to beg for mercy at Chess Mountain. No matter how he thought about it, it was impossible for John's strength to be limited to this. Furthermore, Joe would also sensed a familiar yet unfamiliar aura from John. John didn't fly into a rage because of Joe Wen's provocation. His expression didn't change as he looked up at the sky and said, Joe Wen, you are indeed stronger than me in the past. You are indeed a genius. Even I have to admire you for reaching such a level in such a short period of time. What you said is rather pertinent, Joe Wen said with a smile. John continued expressionlessly, But it's different now. No matter how talented you are and how hard you work, you're ultimately a mere mortal. As for me, I'm the one chosen by God. I'll become God. John's eyes turned fervent as a terrifying holy light rose from his body. White holy light illuminated the entire arena. The ordinary soldiers could not even open their eyes. What's that? A mythical companion beast? When the light weakened, everyone stared at the spot behind John in shock. A six-winged seraphim with holy light was floating behind him. When the ordinary soldiers saw the six-winged seraphim, they actually had the urge to kneel and worship it. Dugu and Zhang Chunqiu looked at each other and saw the surprise and excitement in each other's eyes. They had clearly realized something. Zhou Wen also stared at the six-winged seraphim. He also sensed that there was something amiss with the six-winged seraphim's aura. It wasn't an ordinary companion beast, but it was somewhat similar to the creatures inside the white cocoons. What a terrifying aura! Is it a mythical companion beast? Xia Xian Yu had never seen the creatures inside the cocoons, so she naturally didn't know what it was. No, that's an existence even more terrifying than a mythical companion beast, said Dugugu. Could it be? Siashi and you immediately guessed what it was. Chapter 533 Mythical Power John opened his arms, as though he was hugging the sky. The six-winged seraphim transformed into feathers that flew towards his body, turning into an angel armor that enveloped John's body. However, that angelic armor seemed to grow on John's body and had already become a part of him. The six wings of the seraphim angel unfurled behind him, exuding a holy glow. Together with the holy armor and his handsome face, he really looked like a god. Everyone's eyes were focused on John. Even a blind man could sense the terrifying energy fluctuations emanating from him. Is that the creature inside the cocoon? It doesn't look like a companion beast, but it seems different from ordinary dimensional creatures. Xia Xianyu frowned as she pondered. Dugugu and Zhang Chuanqiu looked at John without saying a word, but the look in their eyes was a little strange. And Shun looked at Zhou when worriedly. John's situation was indeed a little odd. He wasn't sure if Shou could handle it. And Tianzua looked at the surveillance footage on his phone and frowned. The six angelic wings on John's back flapped slightly as his body floated in midair. He looked coldly at Zhou and said, Zhou Wen, I'll tell you now what the difference between a god and a human is. With that said, John extended his hand and aimed his palm at Zhou Wen. John shot out a beam of light from his palm. 
It was unbelievably fast, as though it was holy light that could destroy everything. Boom! The entire arena exploded like a volcanic eruption. The protective shield shattered and the arena shook. Mythical power, Dududu said with a serious expression. It's indeed power at the mythical stage. Zhang Chuenqiu nodded slightly. Xia Xianyu had had a mythical companion beast before and knew that John's strike was definitely at the mythical stage. She couldn't help but be alarmed. The strength at the mythical stage wasn't new, but typically speaking, it was released from a mythical companion beast. However, John released the strike himself. It wasn't a companion beast's strength. There was a huge difference. No matter how powerful a companion beast was, it was only a tool. It was like a firearm. The person who used the firearm didn't become stronger. But now, John displayed strength that showed that he had become much stronger. Not only did he improve his destructive power, but his physical constitution had also increased to another level. The explosion dimmed, and everyone immediately realized that Zhou Wen hadn't been injured by the terrifying force. A gigantic white six-winged dragon appeared in front of him. It was the dragon that had blocked John's attack. Six-winged guardian dragon. So that's Zhou Wen's companion beast, Dugu said in surprise. Xia Xianyu and Zhang Chuenqiu were somewhat surprised. They never expected the first mythical companion beast on the ranking to belong to Zhou Wen. They originally imagined that it belonged to a local bigwig. Inside Chess Mountain, the Tharch saw Zhou Wen's six-winged guardian dragon through the video on her phone. She curled her lips and said, Isn't it a little too naive to use a six-winged guardian dragon to fight a guardian? John looked at the six-winged guardian dragon and said coldly, So that six-winged guardian dragon belongs to you. Unfortunately, even if you have a powerful mythical pet, it's impossible to change the fate of defeat. With that said, John made the sign of the cross on the front of his chest. The six wings on his back glowed brightly as terrifying energy fluctuations condensed once again, bursting forth with even more terrifying light waves than before. The six-winged guardian dragon roared as the sanctified body burst forth with a blazing white flame, colliding with John's beam. Boom! The two forces collided and exploded. The six-winged guardian dragon's huge body tore open a deep ditch on the ground. It retreated more than 10 meters before finally stopping. The six-winged guardian dragon roared angrily. It flapped its six wings and charged towards John. John's expression did not change, but his body disappeared as if he had teleported. When he reappeared, he was already in front of the six-winged guardian dragon. Using terrifying holy light, his fist struck the six-winged guardian dragon's chin. The massive body of the six-winged guardian dragon was thrown in the air by the uppercut. John's figure flashed again, and he arrived in front of the six-winged dragon that was rising up like a ray of light. He punched out expressionlessly, causing the six-winged guardian dragon to sway left and right. Dragon blood spewed wildly from its mouth, and finally, John punched its head and sent it flying. Boom! The six-winged guardian dragon crashed into the spectator stands, causing half of the arena to collapse. The thing in Shun was worried about happened in the end. Even the six-winged guardian dragon couldn't match John. John, who was floating in the air, was now like a saint that had descended upon the world to represent God. What are your thoughts on this? Dubuga asked John Chuenchio. Very strong, but it's still within the scope of a mythical stage. John Chuenchio said after some thought. Dubuga nodded in agreement before saying, Unfortunately, Zhou Wen's mythical companion beast has been defeated. He shouldn't be able to continue fighting. It will be difficult for him to force out the full strength of that thing. It's indeed a pity. Zhang Chuenchio also felt that the duel would come to an end. I don't think Zhou Wen will admit defeat so easily. Xia Xianyu suddenly said. Although that six-winged guardian dragon still has the ability to fight, there's no point in continuing the battle. It will ultimately lose, Dugugu said. He was mistaken. Xia Xuanyu's comment about Zhou when not admitting defeat wasn't because the six-winged guardian dragon still had the ability to do combat. She was referring to Zhou Wen himself. However, Xia Xianyu knew that there was no point in explaining, so she decided not to say anything and continued watching patiently. Zhou Wen, do you now know the difference between a god and a human? Even if you can advance to the epic stage and possess a mythical pet, you are still an ant in front of God. John wasn't in a hurry to cripple Zhou Wen. He wanted Zhou Wen to completely collapse in despair. The six-winged guardian dragon crawled up from the collapsed pit and roared as it charged forward. However, Zhou Wen extended his hand and beckoned for it. The six-winged guardian dragon transformed into six holy flaming dragon wings that appeared behind him. Although the six-winged guardian dragon still had the ability to fight, its strength, speed, and other aspects were inferior to John's. There was no point in continuing the battle. I don't see a god. I only see a lunatic with greater strength. Zhou Wen said indifferently, as he looked at John. His words made Dugugu laugh. This Zhou Wen is rather interesting. 
I'm beginning to like him. Zhang Chuanqiu also said with a smile. He's right. John's strength has only reached the peak of a divine level, but his realm and technique haven't reached that stage. It's indeed a little too arrogant to say that he's God. However, sometimes, when the difference in strength reaches a certain level, even if the opponent is stupid, it's still very difficult to win. Chapter 534 Holy Angel's Redemption Zhou Wen's words didn't anger John. John only sneered and said, Then, let's give it a try and see how strong the lunatic you're talking about is. With that said, John's figure instantly appeared in front of Zhou Wen with a flash of light. His palm, brimming with holy light, grabbed at Zhou Wen's neck at an unbelievable speed. The dragon wings on Zhou Wen's back flapped as he used his movement technique to dodge John's palm. However, he didn't have any intention of retaliating. All he did was smile at John. Why don't you draw your saber? John asked as he stared at the bamboo blade at Zhou Wen's waist. If I use my saber, you would have already been defeated. What's the point? Zhou Wen said seriously. Even I like him a little now. I thought that only people from our Zhang family would be so good at bragging. Zhang Chuanqiu laughed. Upon hearing Zhou Wen's words, and Sheng's heart relaxed, but he was still worried for him. And Tianzhu frowned and muttered to himself. What an arrogant brat. John's pupils constricted when he heard that, but he didn't fly into a rage. He just stared coldly at Zhou Wen and said, I hope you still have the courage to say those words later. With that said, without waiting for Zhou Wen to react, holy light erupted from his body. Six angelic wings extended horizontally, as his body suspended in the air like a javelin. He looked like a humanoid cross, as his whole body emitted a terrifying glow. Beams of light erupted from his body, enveloping the entire fighting arena like a storm. Each sword beam contained an unmatchable amount of power of holy. Zhou Wen's expression didn't change as he flapped his six wings behind him. His body fluttered gracefully amidst the rain of light swords. It didn't seem as though he was fast, but he managed to dodge the rain of light swords. Rumble. The light sword rain landed on the ground and blasted the ground. Every light sword had the power of the mythical stage. Zhang Chuanqiu suddenly looked at Dugugu and said, Is this show when your Duga family's illegitimate son? What do you mean? Dugugu asked with a frown. If not, why would he have such a freakish movement technique? Such a movement technique probably surpasses the other families. Only your Dugu family can compete with him in terms of movement techniques. Zhang Chuanqiu said. Dugugu stared at Zhou Wen for a long while before saying, His movement technique is indeed impressive, but it's not our Dugu family style. Zhang Chuanqiu nodded and said, Although Zhou Wen is a little arrogant, what he said wasn't wrong. Compared to him, John's physical constitution is only slightly better. He's slightly stronger and faster. If his constitution were at the same level, John would probably be defeated by him in seconds. The Yin family has really picked up a treasure this time. It's no wonder they would rather offend the Senate to protect Zhou Wen. That's right, but you and I know very well that John's strength is immensely powerful. These techniques aren't enough to make up for the gap between them. Under such inequality, it'd be fine even if John made a hundred mistakes. If Zhou Wen makes one mistake, he might die. Dugugu said seriously. Let's wait and see. I just find this show and more and more interesting. It's no wonder he can become friends with my sister. John Chuanqiu said. Huh? Your little princess actually has a friend? Dugugu and Xia Xian Yu widened their eyes, as if they had heard something unbelievable. John Chuanqiu seemed to know that he had said something wrong and could only say. They only met a few times by chance, but their relationship isn't bad. I came to see what kind of person Zhou Wen is. You were worried that Zhou Wen would get close to your family's little princess and are afraid that he has other motives, so you came to investigate, right? Dugugu said with a twitch of his lips. Zhang Chuanqiu smiled and said, Don't make it sound so bad. I just came to take a look. Seeing that the light sword rain wasn't able to injure Zhou Wen, the angelic wings on John's back spewed out terrifying flames, propelling his body to move at high speed as he slashed at Zhou Wen with terrifying power. Zhou Wen had no intention of retaliating. All he did was constantly use his movement technique to dodge John's barrage of attacks. John's every strike was extremely terrifying, reducing the arena into pieces. The ordinary soldiers guarding here had already retreated from the arena under Ensheng's orders. They waited outside the arena while only Ensheng and a few epic experts remained inside to guard the arena. Xia Xianyu and the rest had no choice but to retreat a little before reaching the wall at the back of the arena to avoid being caught in the crossfire of the terrifying battle. What a powerful force. The power the six-winged seraphim gave John really makes me envious, John Chuanqiu said. No matter how strong the power is, it depends on who's using it. John clearly doesn't have the ability to use such power. It's a complete waste. If it were me, I would have long beaten Zhou into the ground, said Dugugu. Not necessarily. 
Xiaoxi and Yu unhappily disagreed. Zhou Wen's movement technique had been upgraded alongside her. If Dugugu said that Zhou Wen was lacking, wouldn't it also mean she was lacking? Zhang Chuanqiu praised. Zhou Wen's movement technique is truly powerful. Under such a huge disparity in strength, he hasn't been injured at all. I've only seen such movement techniques in your Dugu family before. Under John's storm-like attacks, Zhou Wen's body flew up. He didn't seem to be fast, but John didn't even touch his clothes. John was very calm in the beginning. He wanted to use various techniques and essence energy skills to hit Zhou Wen, but no matter what technique or essence energy skill he used, he failed to injure him at all. Zhou Wen, you should be proud to be able to let me use the power that truly belongs to God. John stopped his attack as his eyes shimmered. The six angelic wings unfurled behind him like a blooming flower. Is it finally coming? Zhang Chuanqiu stopped smiling and stared at John solemnly. Dugu Ji's expression turned serious as he stared at John without a word. Xiaoxi and Yu did the same. They knew very well that physical constitution was only one aspect of the difference between the mythical stage and the epic stage. It wasn't a very important aspect. The true gap between the mythical stage and the epic stage was the miraculous power of the Wheel of Destiny. Although the Wheel of Destiny of every mythical creature was different, there was a commonality. The miraculous power was something that no living creature under the mythical stage could withstand. The holy light that erupted from John's body intensified. The six angelic wings on his back turned into an ancient door of light. A miracle! Holy Angel's Redemption! With John's mighty voice, the door of light behind him slowly opened, and a brilliant holy light shot out from it. Chapter 535, Are There Conditions? Joan wanted to dodge it, but the light that shot out from the door of light was at literally the speed of light. Unless Zhou Wen's speed reached the speed of light, it was impossible for him to dodge. The light shone on Zhou Wen as his strength erupted. He wore his heavy armor and soft armor as he attempted to forcefully tank the light. However, the resplendent light didn't harm his body. It only made Zhou Wen feel an irresistible force pulling him towards the door of light. Others only saw Zhou Wen being illuminated by the door's light before flying towards it. And Shum's expression changed. Although he didn't know what was inside the door of light, he knew that he couldn't let Zhou Wen take the risk. He flew into the arena. A few epic officers in charge of managing the situation rushed over with Nsheng. Please stop! I admit defeat for Zhou Wen. As Nsheng charged at Zhou Wen, he shouted at John. A cold glint flashed in John's eyes as the door of light opened. The light shot towards Nsheng and company. Nsheng's gaze focused. At the instant the light scattered, he reached out and pressed down on the ground. His body instantly drilled underground, but the few epic officers were illuminated by the light. They couldn't help but fly into the door of light. No matter how they struggled, it was useless. And Sheng, who had drilled underground, appeared from another side. The light from the door scattered down again, sucking him up. It's over. John is indeed at the true mythical stage. That should be the power of the Wheel of Destiny, Zhao Chuanqiu said. It's truly shocking that the creature inside a cocoon is able to make a person who recently had his essence energy see Cripple become a mythical expert, said Dugugu after some thought. Xia Xianyi was hesitant, unsure if she should help Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen tried several methods, but he failed to escape the power of the light. He slowly flew towards the door of light. There was a bright divine light inside the door of light. Although he couldn't see what was inside, he was certain that there would definitely be a great horror there. If he was pulled into it, he would probably die. Truth listeners' evil nullification life soul didn't work. Zhou Wen switched his essence energy art to Dao body, and Zero Taboo immediately lit up like a light bulb. Almost at the same time, the irresistible suction force from the light disappeared. However, Zhou Wen remained unperturbed as he continued slowly flying towards the door of light. John, do you really want to kill me? Zhou Wen asked John. You will get off lightly if you just die. John said coldly. If you want to kill me, do it. They have nothing to do with this. Let them go. Zhou Wen added. They deserve death for protecting you. Besides, it's in Sheng who crippled my sister's essence energy C. He naturally has to repay the debt, said John. In that case, it's either you die or I die today. Zhou Wen gripped the bamboo blade tightly. There's only your death. I will not die. You don't have the right to talk about life and death with God. Go to heaven in peace. That's your final escape. John stood in front of the door of light and stretched out his hand like a messenger welcoming a soul into heaven. I don't plan on going to a place like heaven. Can you pass the message to the owner of heaven? Tell him to visit me in the mortal world when he has the time. As Zhou Wen spoke, he had already arrived in front of the door of light. With a bamboo blade in hand, he pulled out his saber. With all his strength, speed, and essence energy erupting, he delivered a full-powered strike. Zhou Wen's figure streaked across the void. 
John's eyes widened as though he couldn't believe that Joe Wen could still launch an attack despite the Holy Angel's redemption. He wanted to move and resist the strike. However, he realized that although he had seen the saber, his brain's reaction speed was unable to keep up with it. He could only watch helplessly as the saber sliced at his neck, but he could not move. His face was twisted with horror. Almost at the same time Joe Wen attacked, a white figure with a blood beam behind him tore through the air and landed on the outer wall of the arena. It was none other than Ntianzua, who had fused with his life soul. Xia Xianyu Dugugu and Zhang Chuanqiu also looked at Zhou Wen's strike in shock. According to what they knew, a creature that wasn't a mythical existence should not have the ability to resist a Wheel of Destiny's miracle. They found it unbelievable that Zhou Wen could actually swing his saber amidst the miracle. Furthermore, the strike was so fast and stunning. It seemed to exceed the speed of the epic stage. Only Xia Xianyu understood that Zhou Wen's move had reached the level of a mythical technique. John was too close to Zhou Wen. Even though he had divine level speed, he still couldn't dodge Zhou Wen's strike. However, she was also astonished. Even if it was a divine technique, it was impossible for it to violate the miraculous power of the Wheel of Destiny. There had to be other reasons why Zhou Wen could slash out with his saber in the Holy Angel's redemption. Even Xia Xianyu couldn't guess the reason. Wherever the blade beam passed, red blood bloomed like flowers on the parts of John's neck that weren't protected by the angel armor. John covered his neck with his hand, as he stared at Joe when in disbelief. The six angelic wings on his back had stopped circulating as the door of light shattered and dissipated. And Sheng and the others who had been sucked up by the light recovered their control and landed in the ruined arena. They looked at Joe when and John in shock. John held his neck, but blood continued gushing out. He wanted to say something and opened his mouth, but did not make a sound. Blood gushed out. The ferocious-looking John suddenly released the hand that was covering his neck and pounced at Zhou Wen, as though he wanted to fight him to the death. However, when he pounced at Zhou Wen, the angelic armor on his body automatically dispelled and returned to the six-winged seraphim form as it floated in the air. Having lost the power of the six-winged seraphim, John, who was already badly injured, fell from the sky before he could reach Zhou Wen. Boom! John slammed heavily onto the ground and struggled to get up. His eyes stared intently at the six-winged seraphim, who floated in the air. He was filled with confusion, puzzlement, anger, indignation, and many other emotions. The six-winged seraphim that he had relied on had betrayed him at the last moment. In the name of an angel, I bestow upon you the right to be protected. Human, are you willing to fight me and make me your guardian? John spat out a few mouthfuls of blood when he heard the six-winged seraphim's words. He never expected such a thing to happen. He had abandoned everything to gain the six-winged seraphim as his guardian. Now, it had abandoned him to pledge its allegiance with Zhou Wen. Are there conditions for you to become my guardian? Zhou Wen's mind flashed with the Thearka's words, as he subconsciously asked. There are no conditions. As long as you are willing, I will become your guardian and bestow you with the power of God. The six-winged seraphim replied without hesitation. When John heard this, he could no longer hold it in. He stood up abruptly and widened his eyes. He stretched out his trembling fingers and pointed at the six-winged seraphim in the sky. He opened his mouth as though he wanted to curse, but when he opened it again, blood spewed out and splattered everywhere. Chapter 536 Guardian How do I know that you won't treat me like you treated John? Joe Wen said to the six-winged seraphim. Guardians are born to fight. If you lose in battle, what's the point of me staying with you? As long as you have the ability to fight again, I will always protect you. The six-winged seraphim said. What you said makes sense. Then what should I do to make you my guardian? Joe Wen asked again. It's very simple. All you need to do is drip a drop of blood into my palm and then let me complete the ritual. The six-winged seraphim said as he extended his palm. All right. Zhou Wen cut his finger and extended his hand towards the six-winged seraphim's palm. Seeing the drop of blood on his finger about to land on the six-winged seraphim's palm, the bamboo blade in his left hand slashed at the six-winged angel's neck like a bolt of lightning. Clang. The wings behind the six-winged seraphim protected his body like an umbrella, blocking Zhou Wen's strike. At the same time, he rapidly retreated. Human, you are too emotional. The six-winged seraphim moved backward. Joe Wen slashed at the six-winged seraphim again and again. The six-winged seraphim was different from companion beasts. Companion beasts were completely controlled by their owners, but the six-winged seraphim could abandon its master and had its own consciousness. No matter how powerful he was, Joe Wen wouldn't take him along with him. He had too many secrets. In the future, once the six-winged seraphim betrayed him, those secrets would be exposed. Zhou Wen definitely wouldn't let such a thing happen. Zhou Wen used Transcendent Flying Immortal in a bid to kill the Six-Winged Seraphim, but he realized that without John's control, 
The six-winged seraphim was even stronger than when John used him. His figure moved in midair, leaving behind afterimages. Zhou Wen's transcendent flying immortal could only slash at his phantom. After slashing several times, he had failed to touch the six-winged seraphim. Human, you will soon learn what you have missed. When the time comes, you will regret everything you have done today. The six-winged seraphim flew backward, but his speed was terrifyingly fast. He flapped his six wings and left the arena as though he had teleported, disappearing very quickly. Zhou Wen frowned slightly as he looked at John and found that he had already fainted. And Sheng's men were checking his injuries. How do you plan on disposing of him? And Sheng walked to Zhou Wen's side and asked. What do you think? Zhou Wen asked. The video of your conversation with him was recorded. Even if you kill him, it's just self-defense. The Kate family can't say anything. However, killing him is meaningless. If you don't mind, I hope to let him live and obtain information about the six-winged seraphim from him. And Sheng whispered. Then do as you see fit. Give me a copy of the information if you manage to get anything. I'll head back now. Zhou Wen said as he turned and left the arena. On the outer wall of the arena, Zhang Chuanqiu looked at Ntianzhua, who was dressed in military uniform, and said with a smile, Overseer and congratulations to your and family for obtaining another powerful general. He's just an ordinary student at Sunset College. He's not worthy of Brother Zhang's claim of general. And Tianzhua said indifferently before saying, If the three of you don't mind, why don't you come to my place to have some tea? That'd be lovely. I have something to say to you. Zhang Chuanqiu said with a smile. De Gugu and Xia Xianyu agreed to go as well. They probably knew why Tianzhua was inviting them. As Zhou Wen was on his way back to school, the Thearka's ringtone sounded. To be able to defeat John, who has the protection of the six-winged seraphim, it seems that I have underestimated you. But why did you reject the six-winged seraphim? Do you know that you have missed a rare opportunity? What's that six-winged seraphim? He doesn't appear like a companion beast, but he's different from ordinary dimensional creatures. Joan asked. You're right. The six-winged seraphim isn't a companion beast or a pure dimensional creature. To put it simply, he's just a tool, replied the arch. A tool? What tool? Joan asked in puzzlement. Naturally, it's a tool for combat. It's also a tool for humans to advance to the mythical stage. Due to innate limitations, you humans basically don't have the ability to advance to the mythical stage. To advance to the mythical stage, you have to obtain a guardian similar to the six-winged seraphim. By borrowing the guardian's body, you can advance to the mythical stage and continue on your path. The six-winged seraphim's willingness to follow you is equivalent to giving you a chance to advance to the mythical stage, but you chased him away. Aren't you regretting it now? The darch gloated. You mean borrowing the Guardian's body? Don't tell me that human bodies won't improve any further and can only strengthen the Guardian's body in the future? Joe would acutely sense something. Didn't I say just now? Due to the innate limitations of the bodies of you humans, it's nearly impossible for you to advance to the mythical stage. At most, you can only reach the peak of the epic stage. The Guardian is your way out. Don't think that it's that easy for a Guardian to betray you. The reason the six-winged seraphim betrayed John was that John wasn't qualified to form a contract with him. He only used a special method to temporarily form a contract. If it were you, you could truly form a contract with the six-winged seraphim. He wouldn't betray you so easily. Do you regret rejecting him now? What's a guardian? Zhou Wen didn't regret it. All he wanted to know was what it was. They can be considered as the representatives of the various species on your earth. Every species will have a guardian. They will choose a human to rely on and fight alongside humans to grow, helping you resist the invasion of dimensional creatures, said the Darch. You are the ones who created the dimensional creatures to begin with. Why are you talking about helping us fend off the dimensional creatures' invasion? Joe and Lampoon inwardly, but he didn't say it out loud. Joe and felt that the Guardian wasn't as simple as the Darch had described. How many Guardians are there on Earth? Joe and asked after some thought. If he knew how many Guardians there were, wouldn't he know how many dimensional species there were? I don't know that, but you can count. Guardians are born from cocoons. Count the number of cocoons on Earth, and that will be the number of guardians. The Darch teased Zhou Wen. That equates to not saying anything. Zhou Wen secretly despised the Darch. She never answered any important questions. However, the Thearka's words reminded Zhou when that the cocoon protected by the white dragon in Old Dragon Cave was gone. However, the one in Ant Nest was still around. Perhaps he could target that. The ant nest dungeon on his phone seemed very special. The other cocoons were protected by terrifying mythical creatures, but there was only a golden flying ant guarding the ant nest. The difference was extraordinary. Chapter 537 Fighting the Golden Trident Again Is there a difference in strength between the guardians? 
Zhou Wen felt that the six-winged seraphim was slightly weaker than the one he had seen in the ant nest. Different species naturally have differences in strength. Why? Are you interested in guardians? As long as you beg me, I can help you contract a powerful guardian. The darch replied. I appreciate your kindness. Zhou Wen thought of John's fate and didn't dare get the darch to help him. Is it really impossible for humans to break through to the mythical stage by themselves? Zhou Wen didn't believe the Thearka's words, but he had never heard of anyone advancing to the mythical stage. After returning to the college, Zhou Wen began grinding Torch Dragon again. A mythical transcendent flying immortal had greatly increased his speed. Although his speed stat was only 40, with the augmentation of transcendent flying immortal, his speed was much faster than the dragon wings formed by six winged when he used transcendent flying immortal with all his might. However, that burst of power could only last for a short period of time. It couldn't last forever under that speed. It wasn't because his essence energy supply couldn't keep up, but because his body couldn't withstand such a huge burden. The burden of a divine skill on his body was too great for any epic expert. After grinding Torch Dragon again, Zhou Wen realized that he was much more relaxed. The chances of blocking or dodging the Bright Torch Vision world were even higher. Furthermore, he wasn't put in such a sorry state as before. He easily lasted for more than three hours, or even more than four hours. If it wasn't for the fact that he was exhausted, he could have lasted longer. The problem now was that the toughness of Torch Dragon's flesh far exceeded Zhou Wen's imagination. Demonic Neonate's ancient sword had stabbed it many times, but it had only left a few harmless wounds. They weren't fatal. Torch Dragon had a powerful self-healing ability. The wounds on its body healed themselves in battle. Wounds did not have much effect on it. Zhou Wen had also attempted to use the Poison Dragon Palm to deal with Torch Dragon, but the results weren't good. Although he left behind a Poison Palm print, it vanished shortly after. The poison failed to spread in Torch Dragon's body. How can I kill Torch Dragon? Finally, he could block Torch Dragon's Bright Torch Vision world, but he couldn't kill it. He had to think of another solution. After some thought, it seemed like no ability was enough to kill Torch Dragon. There might still be a hope of killing Torch Dragon if Demonic Neonate advances, but she doesn't eat or drink. How can I help her advance? Zhou Wen had taken quite a lot of things to feed Demonic Neonate during this period of time, but she ate nothing. Zhou Wen was really afraid that she would starve to death. If I can't count on Demonic Neonate, I can only wait for the fruit of the dead man tree and tyrant behemoth. Zhou Wen looked at tyrant behemoth. It was still evolving, and he didn't know when it would finish. He couldn't help but worry. Instead, it was the fruit of the dead man tree that grew bigger by the day, but the fruit's appearance made Zhou Wen feel that it resembled a black gray grenade. It should be coming out soon. I wonder what kind of companion beast will appear. If it has life blast and curse powers, I might be able to use it against Torch Dragon. Although Zhou Wen thought this, he didn't place all his hopes on this companion beast. Without heading to the Zhuolu battlefield again, Zhou Wen went to the metalwork temple. There was a golden trident there. The golden trident was definitely a mythical creature. The companion egg that dropped was most likely in the form of a weapon. Although Overlord's sword was very powerful, it was still at the epic stage after all. It relied on Ever Victorious to injure Torch Dragon. Otherwise, it couldn't even tear through Torch Dragon's hide. Zhou Wen felt that he had to think of a way to obtain a mythical weapon. With a mythical weapon, the possibility of killing Torch Dragon was much higher. Therefore, he placed his sights on the Golden Trident. The Golden Trident had killed the blood-colored avatar once before, but Zhou Wen felt that there was a way to crack it. He had no other options now. As he waited for the dead man tree's fruit and behemoth to evolve, he thought of a way to kill the Golden Trident. Once again, he arrived at the shrine. The moment the door opened, he saw the Golden Trident embedded in a furnace. The Golden Flames burned its body, but it did not cause any reaction. Just as Zhou Wen took a glance, he saw the golden light shine on the golden trident, as though it wanted to engulf the entire metalwork temple. The blood-colored avatar was instantly killed the last time. It didn't even have a chance to dodge. However, this time, Zhou Wen summoned the strength and six-winged guardian dragon and got it to shield him. The six-winged guardian dragon directly used sanctification. Its body turned as white as jade as it unfurled its six dragon wings. Holy flames burned on its body, as it spewed out dragon breath to block the golden light in front of Zhou Wen. Boom! The terrifying collision shook the entire temple. Zhou Wen saw the golden trident fly out of the furnace from behind six-winged. It transformed into a golden beam of light that struck at six-winged. Fortunately, its speed was not very fast. However, it had a domineering aura of supremacy. The six dragon wings on the back of the six-winged dragon turned into blades and slashed at the golden trident that was coming at it from above. Cracking sounds could be heard as the six wings collided with the golden trident. Many of the six dragon wings were broken by it. 
What astonishing destructive power! Zhou Wen wasn't alarmed but delighted. Only with such powerful destructive power could he kill Torch Dragon. Under Zhou Wen's command, the six-winged guardian dragon clashed with the golden trident. However, it didn't clash head-on with it. Its speed wasn't as fast as the six-winged guardian dragon. Although its attack was domineering, it couldn't do a thing to the six-winged guardian dragon without fighting head-on. Clang! The six-winged guardian dragon took the opportunity and struck out with its two front claws, slamming the golden trident down from the sky and pressing it onto the ground. The golden trident's body exploded with golden light. It struggled to escape, but it was held down by the six-winged. It could not break free no matter what. Although its destructive power was strong, its strength wasn't stronger than six-winged. Instantly, the two mythical creatures were in a deadlock. One burst out with golden light, and the other spewed holy flames, causing the temple to tremble incessantly. The blood-colored avatar watched the battle from outside the temple. Although six-winged held a slight advantage, it couldn't kill the trident. Zhou Wen gritted his teeth and got the blood-colored avatar to charge in with the overlord's sword. He brandished the overlord's sword and slashed at the golden trident. The moment he entered the temple, the divine patterns on the blood-colored avatar's heavy armor flickered. In a few moments, it collapsed. Thankfully, the blood-colored avatar had already rushed in front of the golden trident. Overlord's sword slashed down with a powerful sword beam. Clang! There was a deafening sound as a fine crack opened on the golden trident. Chapter 538 Farming Mythical Creatures 538 Farming Mythical Creatures The golden trident's body trembled violently as golden light shot forth from its surface. Joe would hurriedly use his movement technique to dodge and hide behind six wings so that he was spared from the golden beam's attack. The golden light clashed with six wings holy flames, slicing apart the holy flames and slicing through its scales, leaving deep wounds that reached to the bone. As expected of a mythical creature in the form of a weapon, this destructive power is truly terrifying. Zhou Wen was alarmed. If he was struck by the golden light, even two layers of armor wouldn't be able to protect him. It was a pity that no matter how powerful the golden trident's destructive power was, it was still suppressed by the six-winged claws. It could not unleash its immense power. Six-winged held onto the golden trident tightly. It did not loosen its claws no matter what. Its body was lacerated by the golden light. Fortunately, it was not fatal. Zhou Wen hurriedly summoned demonic neonate and got her to use the ancient sword to attack the golden trident. Six-winged was good at almost everything. It could fight, tank, and still survive. The only bad thing about it was that it did not have an offensive wheel of destiny. It was also six-winged, but the six-winged seraphim had holy angel's redemption. That was truly a good weapon. However, there were pros and cons. The life-saving ability provided by the six-winged guardian dragon was not something the six-winged seraphim possessed. Otherwise, John wouldn't have had his throat sliced by him. Thankfully, apart from the six-winged guardian dragon, Zhou Wen still had demonic neonate, a pet with relatively strong offensive powers. Demonic neonate controlled the ancient sword as she sought out an opportunity, slashing at the golden trident again and again. Furthermore, she targeted a particular spot. She hid behind the six-winged guardian dragon, and was even safer than Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen also found all sorts of opportunities to strike at the golden trident. The two pets and the human worked together in a frenzy to slash at the golden trident, leaving it covered in wounds. The deepest impression of the trident was about to be had. The golden trident had already gone berserk. Its entire body was shimmering with golden light. In particular, its tip was glowing with a dazzling divine light, as if it could pierce through everything in the world. Unfortunately, it couldn't move due to six wings pressure. The tip couldn't touch Zhou Wen in company, so it was useless no matter how much strength it unleashed. After about half an hour, Demonic Neonate's ancient sword slashed down again. With a clang, the golden trident was cut in half. Killed mythical creature, golden battle god Halberd. Discovered dimensional crystal. Joe Wen couldn't help but feel somewhat disappointed when he saw that the golden trident didn't drop a companion egg. On careful look, he saw that the dimensional crystal was a strength plus 80 crystal. It was high enough, but Joe Wen's upper limit was only 40. He couldn't raise it before breaking through. Joe Wen picked up the strength crystal and absorbed it. Indeed, his strength was still at 40. Unless he found a way to raise his strength to 41 or advance to the mythical stage, it was impossible for him to raise it any further. With the experience gained from killing the golden battle god Halberd, Zhou Wen kept grinding the metalwork temple instance dungeon. He didn't believe that the golden battle god Halberd companion egg wouldn't drop. After two or three battles, Zhou Wen had roughly figured out the situation with it. Its destructive power was much stronger than the six-winged guardian dragon. Furthermore, the miraculous power of the Wheel of Destiny was also a destructive power. If one was struck by the miraculous power, 
even the six-winged guardian dragon would be penetrated. Its mythical body would be like paper. However, the golden battle god Halbert's miraculous powers couldn't hit its target easily. This was because the miraculous powers were actually unable to pierce through the air and injure the opponent. It was only the tip of the trident that carried a tiny blob of resplendent golden divine light. That golden divine light could almost pierce through everything. It was much more powerful than the overlord swords ever victorious, but the attack needed to be close range. Jowen was confident that as long as he had the golden battle god Halber drop, he had more than an 80% chance of killing Torch Dragon. The only regret was that after the golden battle god Halbert was killed, even if he respawned the dungeon, he would have to wait 24 hours before a new golden battle god Halbert appeared. He couldn't grind it to his heart's pleasure. He would still have to wait for some time. Jowen wasn't idle. Since he couldn't grind the golden battle god Halbert, he ran to the cursed demon palace. There was still Medusa there. Before it was strengthened, the six-winged guardian dragon was not Medusa's match, but it could still fight with her for a while. Now that six-winged had been strengthened, together with Zhou Wen and demonic neonate, there was a chance of killing her. After grinding the rare epic creatures, Zhou Wen ran to the cursed demon palace and charged all the way to Medusa's hall. He gently touched the beautiful girl, and she immediately turned into a terrifying demoness. The palace was sealed, and the blood-colored avatar couldn't leave. All it could do was fight Medusa in the palace. The six-winged guardian dragon fought without a fuss as it charged forward with a roar. With the sanctification ability, Medusa's normal eyes of petrification was actually much less effective against the six-winged guardian dragon. It could only slightly petrify its surface and cause a minimal effect to the six-winged guardian dragon. Joe had the evil nullification ability to restrain the eyes of petrification, but he could only restrain the ordinary eyes of petrification. If he was struck by Medusa's miraculous eyes of petrification, he would still be petrified. Thankfully, the miraculous eyes of petrification shot out substantial light beams from her eyes. As long as he dodged the beam, he wouldn't be petrified. If it was like the ordinary eyes of petrification, he wouldn't be able to dodge it. The miraculous eyes of petrification was truly invincible. Even the guardian dragon would be petrified upon being hit by the light beam. What surprised Cho when was demonic neonate? This fellow was actually immune to the ordinary eyes of petrification despite not having any evil nullification abilities. The human and two pets joined forces to fight Medusa. After spending a great amount of effort, they finally killed Medusa. Ding! A crisp sound came from the phone, jolting Joe one. He saw that Medusa had dropped an essence energy skill dimensional crystal. Inside the crystal like dimensional crystal was a demoness like Medusa's shadow. I actually have Medusa's skill crystal drop again. Unfortunately, my stats aren't good enough. I can't absorb it at all. Jowen was in a dilemma. The requirement of 41 constitution and 21 cursed attributes was too high for Jowen. If he did not absorb it, the skill crystal would be gone after the dungeon respawned. However, if his stats were not enough, he would not be able to absorb it. In the end, Jowen had no choice but to give up on Medusa's skill crystal. After all, he could now kill Medusa. There was still a chance for him to grind skill crystals in the future. Jowen heard from Nsheng that the chance of a mythical creature dropping companion eggs and skill crystals was very high. There was about a third chance. After a few days of grinding, it shouldn't be difficult to obtain the companion eggs of Medusa and the golden battle god Halberd. Jowen rested for a while before considering if he should eat something. And Nsheng personally came to school and sent over a document that contained John's testimony. Jowen had already guessed most of what had happened. John had obtained the six-winged seraphim from an ancient cathedral in the West District. However, According to him, the ancient cathedral had a terrifying mythical creature protecting it. He had avoided the mythical creature thanks to the advice of a mysterious person, thus obtaining the six-winged seraphim inside the white cocoon. He never expected the six-winged seraphim to betray him. When Zhou Wen saw a paragraph, his expression turned odd. When Nsheng and company treated John, they realized that John had a body part missing. Chapter 539 Baby Tiger's Fusion After Nsheng left, Zhou Wen continued grinding. He didn't know if it was because Lady Luck had finally smiled at him, or because he had spent too much time grinding, but he managed to grind a baby tiger companion egg again. The attributes were about the same, but it didn't matter. He never expected to have it fight. The key was that the lucky baby tiger's life providence was useful. However, it was useless bringing two baby tigers with him. Repetition of life providences did not stack luck. What kind of companion beast should I fuse with the tiger? Joe Wen thought to himself. This fusion wasn't easy. If he used the baby tiger as the main pet and used another companion beast to fuse with it, he would still get the baby tiger. The life providence obtained from fusion would still be useless. If he used other companion beasts as the main pet and the baby tiger companion egg as a supplement, its life providence might be the main pet's life providence. 
Then, there was no point in a fusion. Therefore, the only way to fuse them was to combine two companion beasts without any main or supplement. Then, the companion beasts that were combined would randomly combine the various attributes and skills. Even the life providences and life souls could be changed randomly, just like the silver-winged sky spider. Zhou Wen looked at the companion beasts he currently possessed, and then at their compatibility with the baby tiger. The baby tiger's compatibility with other companion beasts was surprisingly high. It was more than 60%. Very few were below 60. It can even fuse with mythical pets? Zhou Wen realized that the baby tiger had a compatibility score of 67% with the six-winged guardian dragon. However, after trying out the other mythical pets, they all indicated that they could not be fused. Zhou Wen naturally didn't fuse the baby tiger with six-winged. After taking a look, Zhou Wen realized that one of the companion beasts had a compatibility score of 98% with the baby tiger. However, when he saw the pet's stats, a dark cloud hung over Zhou Wen's head. The companion beast with such a high compatibility rate with the baby tiger was actually Ancient Sovereign City's skeleton general. Strange. One is a skeleton while the other is a beast. Why is the compatibility so high? Zhou Wen looked at the stats of the two companion beasts and felt somewhat hesitant. The skeleton general was obtained when he went to the fire god platform to pluck out the stone saber. He wanted to know if there were any changes in the game's ancient sovereign city. He went in to grind a few times before a companion egg dropped. Its stats were rather good, so he hatched it and left it for future pet fusion. However, no matter how good its stats were, it was ultimately a legendary companion beast. It was useless to Jowen. There was no need to mention the baby tiger. As one of the weakest epic creatures, any epic creature could defeat it. When these two companion beasts were fused, they might even form a legendary companion beast. It might not even reach the epic stage. However, this was the first time Zhou Wen had encountered such a high compatibility. He carefully observed the stats of the two companion beasts and made up his mind to give it a try. Anyway, what he wanted was the luck attribute. The level and skills were not that important. He fused the two hatched companion beasts. Amidst a lustrous glow, the fusion succeeded as expected. Zhou Wen hurriedly looked at the screen and saw that the companion beast he had fused looked like the skeleton general. However, it wasn't riding a skeleton horse, but a skeleton tiger. A skeleton general riding on a skeleton tiger holding a bone spear in its hand looked quite powerful. Tiger Soul General, Epic. Life Providence, Malicious Evil. Life Soul, Tiger Soul. Strength, 29. Speed, 27. Constitution, 27. Essence Energy, 24. Talent Skill, Armor Breaker Spear, Jinx's master. Companion form, none. Where's my luck life providence? What the hell is a Jinx's master? Questions filled Zhou Wen's mind. Zhou Wen regretted it terribly. What the hell were these stats and skills? Not only did none of its stats exceed 30 points as an epic companion beast, but there was even a Jinx's master skill. Wasn't this going to Jinx him? The skeleton general and baby tiger didn't have such a sinister skill. How did they come up with such a thing? Zhou Wen knew that he had really screwed up this time. Not only did he fail to have the lucky life providence inherit, but he had also obtained a skill that Jinx the master. He definitely couldn't keep this pet. Zhou Wen had a very deep impression of the Jinx's husband's skill from before. It was a necessary skill to screw one up. He casually swiped a companion beast and placed it with the tiger soul general. Zhou Wen didn't even take notice of what companion beast it was. All he saw was that the compatibility was rather low, less than 10%. He was deliberately trying to make the tiger soul general disappear through fusion. He would rather not have it than let it harm him. Although Zhou Wen didn't take a careful look, he roughly knew that the compatibility score was only 7%. He felt that the outcome was doomed to fail, but with a flash of light, a new companion beast appeared. And it succeeded? Zhou Wen was greatly surprised. Although he wasn't happy, he still looked at the pet's appearance. The skeleton tiger and skeleton general were both wearing heavy black armor. However, their faces were exposed. The black armor had dark tiger stripes that looked like lava. It looked domineering. What I used to fuse with it should be a runic heavy armored warrior, right? Zhou Wen vaguely remembered that the one he had casually selected was likely the runic heavy armored warrior. He couldn't help but look at the stats. Heavy armored tiger soul general, epic. Life providence, malicious evil. Life soul, tiger soul runes. Strength, 34. Speed, 37. Constitution, 38. Essence energy, 36. Talent skill. Rampage, Armor Break Spear, Jinx's Master. Companion Form, None. These stats aren't bad, but I really can't keep the Jinx's Master skill. Zhou Wen searched his companion beasts again, and found one with an even lower compatibility. The Steel Cauldron Fiend that dropped from the Metalwork Temple 
was a rare epic companion beast. However, it was too slow and didn't have any offensive means. It was just a half-fire elemental creature that guarded a steel furnace. Its compatibility with the Tiger Soul General was only 4%. It was impossible to find companion beasts from two different species to have a lower compatibility score. He placed the Tiger Soul General and the Steel Cauldron Fiend together and pressed the fuse button. That should be the end of it, right? Joe Wynn thought to himself. However, with a shimmering light on his phone, Joe Wynn actually heard the notification of a successful fusion. Looking at the new companion beast on his phone screen, Joe Wynn's mouth gaped open for a moment. He had no idea if it was good or bad luck from succeeding two consecutive fusions with single-digit compatibility. The newly fused companion beast still looked like the Heavy Armored Tiger Soul General. However, within the Heavy Armored Tiger and the Heavy Armored General's armor was a bluish-white flame. It looked even more powerful and domineering, like a mighty being that had charged out from hell. Chapter 540 Jinx's Master Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General Epic Life Providence Fierce Life Soul Tiger Soul Runes Strength 39 Speed 39 Constitution 40 Essence Energy 40 Talent Skill Tempered Steel Cauldron Rampage Armor Breaker Spear Jinx's Master Companion Form None These Stats It's almost a top epic creature. Joe Wen looked at the stats and his expression changed. It had to be said that this guy's attributes were really too good. If he ignored the Jinx's Master skill, its attributes were quite impressive too. An epic armor breaker spear was a powerful offensive skill. There was no need to mention Rampage. It was a type of charging dominance body. As for Tempered Steel Cauldron, originally it was not of much use to the Steel Cauldron Fiend as although it was a fire elemental skill, it could not harm anyone. Instead, it burned flames within the Steel Cauldron Fiend's body. Under the burning of the flames, its steel armor became harder and harder. It was a skill used to tank. However, this skill was somewhat different on the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General. While he was charging, he could use Tempered Steel Cauldron. It would make the Fiend Armor on the Tiger Soul General become harder. With Rampage's effects as a dominance body, and the Armor Breaker's spear ability, as well as the Tiger Soul runes to augment him, there were probably not many opponents at the same level who could block the Runic Armored Tiger Soul General's charge. However, the Jinx's Master skill was a sore sight. Zhou Wen took the Runic Armored Tiger Soul General to the Metalwork Temple, hoping to see how powerful his combat abilities were. Seeing the few Runic Heavy Armored Warrior loitering in the distance, Zhou Wen ordered the Runic Armored Tiger Soul General to charge over. With a command, it roared as the bluish-white flames on its body burned. The lava patterns on the Black Heavy Armor also turned into a strange orange-white color. Like a devil, he charged at the Runic Heavy Armored Warriors. Boom! With the augmentation of the powerful Essence Energy skill, the Runic Armored Tiger Soul General sent the few Runic Heavy Armored Warriors flying. The spear struck a Runic Heavy Armored Warrior and penetrated his chest with the bone spear. He slammed into a metal wall and was lifted up by the Tiger Soul General before shattering into pieces in midair. Then, Joe Wen saw a shocking scene. They were both at the epic stage, and they were mainly defense-type beasts. However, the Runic Armored Tiger Soul General charged forward as though it had entered an invincible state. It killed the Runic Heavy Armored Warriors one by one. It was like a mighty being that had descended into the mortal world. What was even more terrifying was that the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General's essence energy seemed to be endless. The fire within the Tempered Steel Cauldron kept burning. It made the heavy armor on the Demonized General and Demonized Tiger stronger and stronger. Even the Tiger Soul runes on them glowed brighter and brighter, becoming stronger as the battle progressed. Zhou Wen made him charge the entire way as the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General swept through the area. He wasn't afraid of being ganked by many epic creatures. Instead, he became more and more ferocious as he charged back and trampled on the dimensional creatures. It was as though he had entered an invincible state. Even though all of them were at the epic stage, a single charge was enough to smash through the runic heavy armored warrior's armor, killing them on the spot. A fire furnace queen appeared and threw out the fire from a furnace, turning the hall into a sea of flames. However, the fiend armored tiger soul general showed no fear. He rode on the tiger, and charged into the sea of flames. The demonic runes and flames flickered on its body as he stabbed the fire furnace queen to death with one strike. Ferocious. Too ferocious. Zhou Wen was dumbfounded. It wasn't an exaggeration to say that this fellow was the strongest epic pet. Zhou Wen had never seen such a ferocious epic creature before. Even the mutated demonized general that combined three skills was much weaker than the fiend armored tiger soul general. However, as the dimensional creatures were killed, the flames on the tempered steel cauldron gradually dimmed. 
His aura and strength seemed to weaken as he slowly returned to a normal standard. Zhou Wen found it strange. After trying a few times, he realized that this fellow was a war machine. He needed to constantly fight and kill in order to have unlimited essence energy. The more he killed, the stronger his various abilities became, especially with the augmentation of the tempered steel cauldron. Due to its limited essence energy, the steel cauldron fiend could only last for a short period of time when using tempered steel cauldron. However, the fiend armored tiger soul general could use it perpetually, making his heavy armor harder and harder. The tiger soul runes on the heavy armor also became stronger. Zhou Wen studied it for a while and roughly understood that the combination of his life providence, life soul, and skills was perfect. It allowed him to become stronger the more he killed. Each one of the three was necessary. This is indeed a good pet, but why hasn't the Jinx's master been removed after so many fusions? Zhou Wen was somewhat conflicted. The pet was good, but Zhou Wen was still afraid about Jinx's master rearing its head. The Ghost King's lesson remained fresh in his mind. He did not want to be screwed by the fiend armored tiger soul general at a critical moment. By then, it would be too late to cry. However, Zhou Wen couldn't bear to destroy such a powerful companion beast. After some thought, Zhou Wen decided to fuse it again. However, this time, he didn't deliberately choose low success companion beasts. Instead, he chose a companion egg with a high success rate and wanted to see if he could eliminate the Jinx's master skill. If it could be eliminated, he would never find Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General redundant. However, if he couldn't eliminate it, Zhou Wen would rather destroy him than keep him by his side. What kind of pet should I use to fuse with it? Zhou Wen wasn't so rash this time as he carefully chose. There were a total of six epic companion eggs with a compatibility score above 60 with the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General. Throwing aside those with inferior skills and life providences, Zhou Wen was left with three rather satisfactory ones. After some consideration, Zhou Wen finally chose a companion egg that dropped from Cursed Demon Palace. Epic petrification beasts had attributes that were more inclined towards their constitution and strength. Their speed was relatively poor, and their life providences and life souls were relatively ordinary. The only benefit was that they possessed an essence energy skill that was very compatible with the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General. This essence energy skill known as the Magic Stone Curse wasn't considered powerful on the Petrification Beast. The Magic Stone Curse wasn't a curse on the enemy, but on oneself. After using the Magic Stone Curse, one's skin and bones would become as hard as a rock, which would strengthen one's defense. Besides that, the Magic Stone Curse had another effect. Once it was used, other people would be affected by the Magic Stone Curse attacking the Petrification Beast's body. Their bodies would also show signs of petrification. However, unlike the petrification of the petrification beast, the bodies of others would become stiff and their movements would also become slower. It was even possible that they would become stone statues just like Medusa's eyes of petrification. Of course, the effect of the magic stone curse was far inferior to the eyes of petrification. One would suffer complete petrification only if one was injured by the magic stone curse numerous times. Furthermore, the petrification effect was not permanent. There was a time limit. Zhou would believe that if the magic stone curse could replace the Jinx's master skill, the four skilled fiend armored tiger soul general would be invincible. Not only would he become stronger as he fought, but he could even reflect attacks and produce curse effects. Chapter 541 Infinite Jinx's Master The fusion this time had a petrification lion companion egg as the supplement. This ensured that the fiend armored tiger soul general's life providence and life soul could be retained. It only replaced skills. However, it was also risky for such a fusion. It was possible that the skills that he needed would end up replaced, leaving behind skills he didn't need. In order to minimize the risk, Zhou Wen especially went to curse Demon Palace to grind for petrification lion companion eggs. He obtained one before he fused it with the fiend armored tiger soul general. He tried his best to reduce the negative consequences of having many skills. Feeling a little nervous, Zhou Wen added the petrification lion companion egg. Luckily, the chances of Magic Stone Curse replacing Jinx's master was relatively low. The game lit up as the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General successfully fused. Zhou Wen hurriedly checked his stats. The Life Providence and Life Soul remained unchanged. His Strength Attribute had also increased to 40 points. Only his Speed Attribute was still at 39. Other than the Mythical Pets, there were very few pets that could match up to such stats. Zhou Wen's gaze quickly shifted down as he saw the skill column. Tempered Steel Cauldron, Rampage, Armor Breaker Spear, Magic Stone Curse. Zhou Wen's heart was lifted, but when he saw the words, Jinx's Master, his heart immediately plummeted. I've already fused so many times. Why is the Jinx's Master skill still here? Zhou Wen felt like crying. For skills were already the limit of a typical companion beast. 
Although there was a chance of a fusion pet exceeding four skills, the chances weren't high. Now, the low probability event of five skills had happened, but Jinx's master remained. I need to fuse it again. I have to fuse it again. Although the fiend armored tiger soul general could be considered a perfect epic pet, Joe Wen definitely couldn't keep it thanks to its Jinx's master skill. What else can I fuse it with? Joe Wen was in a dilemma. Since it had the magic stone curse skill, using petrification lion for the fusion would likely result in magic stone curse replacing magic stone curse. It would be difficult to remove the Jinx's master skill. Joe Wen had no choice but to choose from one of the remaining companion beasts with higher fusion compatibility. He didn't care if the skills were suitable or not. He decided to fuse them first. If he could eliminate Jinx's master, he could slowly fuse the skills again. This time, he used a petrification knight, which had multiple skills for fusion. Legend had it that the warrior who defeated Medusa was eventually transformed into a puppet by Medusa after being petrified. Stealing his mind, Joe Wen took out the companion egg of the four-skilled pet, Petrification Knight. With the four skills of the Petrification Knight and the five skills of the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General, there were a total of nine skills. The chance of eliminating a few skills was definite. He hoped to eliminate Jinx's master. He placed the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General with the Petrification Knight companion egg and pressed the fusion button. The pet and egg shone brightly as they combined together. With a crisp sound, the light dissipated and the fiend armored tiger soul general appeared again. The fusion had succeeded again. Joe and hurriedly looked at the fiend armored tiger soul general stats and realized that all four stats had reached the maximum of 40 points. It didn't have the foundation of a mythical creature, so it couldn't increase to 41. The life providence and life soul did not change. They were still malicious evil and tiger soul runes. Upon reaching the skill column, Joe Wen looked over one skill after another, feeling a little nervous. Tempered Steel Cauldron, Rampage, Armor Breaker Spear, Magic Stone Curse, Man Mount is one. Jinx's Master. Joe Wen was dumbfounded. Another skill had been added to it, but Jinx's Master remained. Joe Wen looked at the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General with mixed feelings. For a moment, he didn't know how to react. This fellow's stats and skills were already cream of the crop. Apart from mythical pets, it would be very difficult to find a pet that was better than it. But this Jinx's master, Zhou Wen didn't have the confidence. Perhaps a result of having fused too many times, Zhou Wen realized that the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General's compatibility score with other companion beasts was much lower when he checked it. It went from 60-70 compatibility to about 30-40. Most of them were below 10. With such compatibility continuing, the chance of failing will be too high if I continue fusing. Zhou Wen gritted his teeth and found the one with the highest compatibility. He would rather have it gone than keep Jinx's master. Although it was already the highest compatibility score, it was only 42. The success rate was about 40%. Just as Zhou Wen was about to press the fusion button, he suddenly heard his phone ring. He picked up his phone and took a look. Seeing that it was in Sheng, he picked up the call with one hand and was about to press the fusion button with the other. Young Master One, there's news from Zhuolu. The experts have confirmed Xiongqi's identity and have come up with some solutions. And Sheng said, When Zhou Wen heard Xiongqi's name, he suddenly had a flash of inspiration. He stopped his finger midway without pressing the button. Zhou Wen remembered hearing the arch say that if he wanted to defeat Xiongqi, it was best to let an evil person go. If a good person were to go, the chances of killing Xiongqi would be very low. Although Zhou Wen didn't know why such a strange thing would happen, the current fiend Armored Tiger Soul General had a malicious evil life providence. Was he considered an evil person? With this thought in mind, he could not bring himself to press down with his finger and Sheng informed Zhou Wen about the results of the expert's research. After hearing it, Zhou Wen felt that their research was rather reasonable. They had determined some of Qiongqi's skills. However, this did not have a decisive effect on killing Qiongqi. What was truly scary about Qiongqi was not just those few skills. The experts also mentioned Qiongqi's penchant for bullying good, kind people. However, they believed that it was a character of the legendary Qiongqi. No one expected that this character could be exploited. After and Sheng hung up, Zhou Wen looked at the fiend armored tiger soul general with a thoughtful expression. In the end, he decided to not continue the fusion. He decided to take him to fight Xiongqi to see if it would be of any use. After entering the Zhuli ruins, Zhou Wen didn't go to Torch Dragon. After killing the Alien Stone statue, he went to Xiongqi. The moment the temple's door opened, Zhou Wen summoned his companion beasts. The six-winged guardian dragon took the front, with the other companion beasts followed behind. One of them was the fiend armored tiger soul general. The six-winged guardian dragon lunged straight at Xiongqi. Xiongqi also rushed forward like before, but something unexpected happened. It was as if Xiongqi had not had its fill today. Be it in terms of strength, speed, 
or various skills, it seemed to have weakened significantly. The six-winged guardian dragon, which had been suppressed by Cheongchi, was actually able to fight Cheongchi to a standstill. Does the malicious evil life providence really work? Zhou Wen was dumbfounded. Chapter 542 The Effect of the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General It was unknown if it was intentional or not, but Cheongchi never took the initiative to attack the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General. The other epic companion beasts were killed by Cheongchi in a short period of time. Although Cheongchi eventually killed the blood-colored avatar, Zhou Wen saw some hope of killing it. I wonder if there are any other companion beasts with similar life providences? After Zhou Wen exited the game, he checked online and found a few. However, those companion beasts were too rare. Furthermore, they weren't any better than the fiend armored tiger soul general. The most famous one was Tai Sui. That fellow had a great portent life providence and had the attribute of misfortune. He was even more terrifying than the fiend armored tiger soul general. From the looks of it, the fiend armored tiger soul general is still considered gentle. At the very least, Jinx's master doesn't appear too obvious. I haven't seen him jinxing yet. Wasn't there an emperor in ancient times who had a horse that jinxed its master? Whoever rode it died. However, the emperor managed to escape a calamity by riding this horse. Zhou Wen was purely comforting himself. If he hadn't discovered that the fiend armored tiger soul general was actually effective against Cheongchi, Zhou Wen wouldn't have second thoughts about fusing it away. No matter how strong he was, he couldn't be stronger than a mythical pet. Keeping him alive was a scourge. But now, Zhou Wen had the possibility of killing Cheongchi thanks to it. He had no choice but to consider leaving the fiend armored tiger soul general behind. Zhou Wen was wondering about the possibility of the former principal and company not entering Torch Dragon's temple, but Cheongchi's temple. If that were the case, it would be useless even if he killed Torch Dragon. He would have to kill Cheongchi again. When that happened, he would need the fiend armored tiger soul general. Logically speaking, a companion beast will only show its effects when summoned. At most, I won't summon him. That would prevent any obstacles, right? Zhou Wen felt uneasy. He wasn't confident, but that was the only way. Thankfully, it's just a tiger soul general. If there's another Tai Sui, I'll be dead. Zhou Wen closed the webpage introducing Tai Sui. When the golden battle god Halberd respawned, Zhou Wen eagerly rushed in game. After an intense battle with the golden battle god Halberd, he finally snapped it with demonic neonate's ancient sword. Ding! A crystal dropped. Zhou Wen saw that it was an essence energy skill crystal. Inside the amber-like crystal was a golden trident shadow. He picked it up and took a closer look and the game immediately gave him a notification. Insufficient stats. Unmatched life providence. Rejected life soul. The series of notifications left Zhou Wen's head spinning. Using his phone to check the essence energy skill crystal's information, he discovered that the golden battle god Halbert's essence energy skill crystal required 41 points of strength. This requirement was considered the simplest of all the mythical essence energy skills that Zhou Wen knew. There was no special stat requirement. Unfortunately, Zhou Wen still couldn't meet the 41 strength requirement. Regarding the requirements of having a constitution type life providence and life soul, Zhou Wen attempted by switching to the small perfection of wisdom. The eight perfections wisdom life providence was compatible, but his lack of a life soul made it a mismatch. If that's the case, if I can condense the small perfection of wisdom's life soul and raise my strength to 41 points, wouldn't I be able to learn the golden battle god Halbert skill? Zhou Wen thought for a moment and felt that there was some hope. Among all the mythical skills that Zhou Wen had seen, this was most likely to be one he could learn. How can I have my strength break through to 41 points? Zhou Wen had always been puzzled about the method to increase his stats. Now, Zhou Wen had an idea. His life soul was formed after absorbing the attributes. Therefore, Zhou Wen was wondering if his life soul could affect his stats if it advanced to perfection. The postfix of strength was Sunday. Later on, it was absorbed by the inverse ancient sovereign life soul. If it advanced to perfection, he wondered if it could influence the strength attribute and increase his strength to 41 points. Of course, this was only Zhou Wen's speculation. However, he could give it a try. The inverse ancient sovereign was already an evolved body. Any further, and it would be able to advance to a perfect body. Now, Zhou Wen was facing a choice. If he decided to gain new insights into his life soul and wait to absorb the golden battle god Halberd Crystal, he couldn't respawn the dungeons. Otherwise, he would lose the skill crystal. If he wanted to continue grinding mythical companion eggs, he had to give up on the skill crystal. The drop rate of mythical creatures is still rather high. I should continue grinding companion eggs. Zhou Wen thought for a moment before deciding to grind companion eggs first. After all, only with the golden battle god Halberd could he kill Torch Dragon. This was of paramount importance. After putting down the golden battle god Halberd crystal, Zhou Wen went to the cursed demon palace again. 
After killing Medusa with great difficulty, he had two crystals drop. One was a speed crystal, while the other was a constitution crystal. All of them exceeded 70 points, but they were useless to show one. After grinding all the rare dimensional creatures, he reserved the companion eggs that dropped for pet fusion. Then, he had nothing else to do. He had to wait until tomorrow for the golden battle god Halbert and Medusa to respawn. Since he had nothing to do during this period of time, Joe Wynn took the book he borrowed from the library and continued studying it. Since small perfection of wisdom hadn't condensed a life soul, Joe Wynn wanted to take this opportunity to study it and condense it so that he could absorb the golden battle god Halbert skill crystal. With the golden battle god Halbert and the golden battle god technique, he was certain he could kill Torch Dragon. Wisdom had different types, two, three, and six types. Shared or unshared wisdom, true inside wisdom, and wisdom of meditative enlightenment, mundane wisdom, and super mundane wisdom, all of these were two wisdoms. True inside wisdom, wisdom of meditative enlightenment, along with written wisdom, were the three wisdoms. The six wisdoms were true inside wisdom, external world wisdom, written wisdom, wisdom of skillful means, attendant wisdom, and wisdom of meditative enlightenment. These combined were also the diamond wisdom. However, Zhou Wen's life providence was eight perfections wisdom. There were two more types of wisdom. Zhou Wen did plenty of research, but he couldn't figure out what the eight perfections of wisdom meant. Therefore, he hadn't figured out the profundity of the small perfection of wisdom to condense a life soul. Zhou Wen vaguely felt that this small perfection of wisdom was somewhat different from the real perfection of wisdom. The three-faced Buddha in small Buddha temple was somewhat different from the Buddhas in ordinary monasteries. Just as he was thinking, his phone rang again. This time, it was from Wang Lu. Zhou Wen, I'm hungry, Wang Lu said. Isn't it noon now? Zhou Wen asked. You owe me so many breakfasts. Didn't you say you were going to make up with it using lunch? Are you trying to go back on your word? Quickly give me some food to eat. I'm starving, said Wang Lu. Chapter 543 Gold Burial Ground 543 Gold Burial Ground Since you've already come out, why don't you buy the food yourself? Zhou Wen handed over the food he had bought from the cafeteria to Wang Lu. That's how I roll, isn't I? Wang Lu took the food and sat in a flower bed to eat. Zhou Wen sat down by the side and began munching on his rigiamo, meat sandwiched in bread. Zhou Wen, what plans do you have after graduation? With your relationship with the Yin family, you should be able to directly enter the Sunset Army, right? Wang Lu asked Zhou Wen as she ate her bread. No, I plan on returning to my hometown. Zhou Wen had never planned on entering the Sunset Army. Zhou Wen really planned on returning to his hometown after graduation. He had seen quite a number of dungeons. He had even cleared two of the West District's dungeons. However, dimensional zones, like the ancient Sovereign City, were very rare. The strongest creature in the ancient Sovereign City was only at the legendary stage. It looked like a very weak dimensional zone. However, things like stone sabers that could be seen in game, but untouchable and very rare in dimensional zones. Chess Mountain also had a similar jade box, but everyone knew how terrifying Chess Mountain was. Zhou Wen felt that ancient Sovereign City wasn't that simple. Therefore, he wanted to return to Guide City after graduation. Your hometown is Guide City, right? There aren't any overly famous dimensional zones there, so there aren't many opportunities for development. Wan Lu paused for a moment before she said jokingly, Why don't you consider going to the capital after graduation? That way, you can also repay your debts. Wan Lu came from the capital's Wang family, which was not the same Wang family in Luoyang. It's still early. Let's talk about it when the time comes. Zhou Wen felt that graduation was still a long way off. Perhaps, the restrictions of the dimensional zone would fail before he graduated. He wouldn't be at liberty to decide when that happened. All he could do was take things one step at a time. Then if you have nowhere to go in the future, remember to look for me in the capital. Our Wang family welcomes talented people very much. Besides, as an old schoolmate of mine, I can still take care of you. Wang Lu said with a smile. All right. Zhou Wen nodded. Not far away, a few students were resting on the grass. Did you hear that someone found a gold burial ground in the dungeon? What's gold burial ground? You don't even know what gold burial ground is? It's those you hear of in legends where a piece of gold is buried. After some time, this kind of gold burial ground turns one piece of gold into two pieces of gold. It must be fake. Only ignoramuses would believe such a ridiculous thing. Don't you doubt me. I don't know if gold burial grounds existed in the past, but after the dimensional storms, someone really discovered one. Furthermore, it's been validated. The gold burial ground does have magical powers. This person is famous in the Federation. Who is it? It's the Xiao family's hero. Are you serious? Why haven't I heard of it before? Are you making it up? What do you mean I made it up? 
There really was such a thing. There was more than one hero present at that time. However, that place was discovered by the Xia family's hero. Besides, only he believed in the legend of gold burial grounds. Hence, he was the only one who managed to find it. What did he bury? He buried a sword and dug out two swords. Can you guess which two swords they are? You must have heard of the names of those two swords. No way. Could it be the famous twin dragon swords of the Xia family? Not bad. What the Xia family hero buried in the gold burial ground back then was a dragon blood sword companion egg. When he dug it out the next day, there were two dragon blood sword companion eggs. The students were having a good time chatting, pumped as though all of that had happened. Senior, you were talking about the gold burial ground being found in the dungeon? Where is it? Wang Lu eavesdropped for a while, before running over to ask for information. If someone asks, I definitely won't tell them. However, you're so pretty there's no harm telling you. That place is in the underground ancient city that we often go to. However, it's useless for you to go there now. I heard that the gold burial ground only allows one thing to be buried once. It's useless if you bury more. According to the senior who discovered the gold burial ground, he accidentally dropped a dimensional crystal when he killed a dimensional creature. When he dug up again, he found two identical dimensional crystals. The senior was very talkative and explained everything clearly. Thank you, senior. Wang Lu thanked him. Junior, don't be in such a hurry to leave. Do you want me to take you there? The senior said warmly when he saw Wang Lu's beauty. There's no need, senior. Thank you. As Wang Lu spoke, she had already returned to the flower bed. You don't have anything else to do this afternoon, right? Let's go and take a look together. Perhaps there's really a gold burial ground. Wang Lu said to Zhou Wen. Didn't they say that the gold burial ground can only be used once? Then what's the use of going there? Zhou Wen asked. To take a look. It's just a legend that gold burial ground only allows one burial. Perhaps it can be used again? Wang Lu pulled Zhou Wen towards the underground ancient city. The underground ancient city mentioned by the students was actually the ancient city dimensional zone, which was in the uppermost layer. Although there were many dimensional creatures there, most of them were at the mortal stage. The strongest was at the legendary stage. Therefore, ordinary students would usually go there to learn how to hunt dimensional creatures. This meant it was very popular. However, the dimensional creatures there didn't produce anything particularly good. Therefore, students with some strength wouldn't choose to stay there for long. When Wang Lu and Zhou Wen arrived at the underground ancient city, they realized that there were many students here. They were all searching for something in the dilapidated ancient city. They must have heard the legend of the gold burial ground, so they had come here to try their luck. There are so many people searching for the gold burial ground. Even if there really is one, it's already been occupied by countless people. Let's head back. Zhou Wen was still thinking about how he could condense his life's soul with this small perfection of wisdom, so he really didn't wish to waste time on such an iffy matter. That's not necessarily the case. How do you know there's no chance if you don't give it a try? Wang Lu sized up Zhou Wen and said after looking at his feet. Give me your shoes. What for? Zhou Wen looked at her in puzzlement. Take off your right shoe and give it to me. You will know in a while, urged Wang Lu. Zhou Wen took off his right shoe and gave it to her. Wang Lu picked it up and made a prayer like action before throwing it into the sky. After the shoe landed, Wang Lu pointed in the direction of the shoe and said, Let's look over there. Will this really work? Zhou Wen put on his shoes and followed Wang Lu forward. Let's give it a try. Perhaps it will work, Wang Lu said. The two of them walked all the way into ancient city. It was really in ruins. Many of the walls were made of clay bricks. After the passage of time, they were pockmarked and covered in dust. No matter how one looked at it, it did not look like an ancient city but more like a village. As they walked, one of Wang Lu's ear studs dropped. After falling to the ground, it bounced into a fist-sized hole. Chapter 544 Hole Let me do it! Zhou Wen squatted down and reached his hand into the hole. The hole was along a mud wall. It was probably dug out by something like a rat. As there weren't any powerful dimensional creatures here, Zhou Wen didn't activate Truth Listener. The hole wasn't deep either. Zhou Wen extended his hand and touched it. Soon, he touched something. When he touched it, he realized that it was indeed Wang Lu's ear stud. However, what was strange was that Wang Lu had dropped one ear stud, but Zhou Wen touched two identical ear studs. Zhou Wen was somewhat surprised. He looked at Wang Lu's other ear stud and couldn't help but ask, How many ear studs did you drop? One? Wang Lu replied. Why are there two ear studs here? Could it be? Zhou Wen looked at the hole. He couldn't believe that it was the legendary gold burial ground. Wang Lu took the two ear studs and carefully looked at them. Soon, she said with certainty, 
These two ear studs are identical. Even the spots I accidentally scratched are identical. From the looks of it, we have really found the legendary gold burial ground. Quick, take something and give it a try. Zhou Wen was somewhat hesitant. Wang Lu's luck was good enough to discover the gold burial ground, but his luck wasn't that good. Furthermore, he felt that the gold burial ground was somewhat odd. It isn't easy to find a gold burial ground. Don't you want to give it a try? Wang Lu asked Zhou Wen. Before Zhou Wen could answer, he saw a figure rush over. He was originally searching for the gold burial ground nearby. Upon hearing Zhou Wen and Wang Lu's conversation, he rushed over. Without waiting for Zhou Wen and Wang Lu to react, he stuffed a companion egg into the hole. Hey, aren't you being a little impolite? Zhou Wen said with a frown. You have to share the good stuff with everyone. We're all schoolmates after all. Why be so petty? At most, you can use it later. The person raised his head as he spoke. It's you? Zhou Wen exchanged looks with the person and immediately recognized him. This person's name was Li Yu. Previously, Zhou Wen had set up a stall to sell companion eggs at the school's trading market. Back then, there were two students who had set up stalls beside him. One was Huang Ji, and the other was Li Yu. Back then, Zhou Wen had a tiny conflict with Li Yu because of Gu Tian. Li Yu had suffered a little, but he never expected to meet him again today. So it's you, Zhou Wen. You caused me so much pain last time. Let me use the gold burial ground this time, and we're even. Li Yu grinned and asked, How long will it take for this gold burial ground to take effect? Zhou Wen couldn't be bothered to argue with him, so he replied, The ear stud fell moments ago. There were two once I tried taking it out. Legend has it that we have to bury it for one night. I was just wondering how long it would take for us to pass the time. It turns out that it can be done so soon. Li Yu said as he reached his hand into the hole. After touching it a few times, Li Yu's expression changed. His squatting body suddenly turned into a kneeling position. His face was almost pressed to the side of the hole. Most of his arm was stretched in as he groped about. Where? Where's my companion egg? Li Yu's expression was not not a happy one. He searched the hole several times but failed to find anything. There's nothing? Zhou Wen activated Truth Listener and listened to the hole. The hole wasn't too deep to begin with, so he could hear everything clearly. It was a small hole about 40 centimeters deep. There were no forks or companion eggs inside. Impossible? I just put it in there. It can't be wrong. Why is it gone? Li Yu reached in again and groped about anxiously. However, there was nothing inside. He could not touch it. Zhou Wen also found it odd. He had seen Li Yu put the companion egg in with his own eyes. Why was it gone? Are you deliberately messing with me? That companion egg was from the company and not mine. Stop fooling around and return it to me. I know I was wrong. I'll compensate you, all right? Li Yu was anxious. Unable to find it, he stood up to bow to Zhou Wen and Wang Lu. Don't spout nonsense. We didn't take your companion egg. You were the one who insisted on putting it in. Who can you blame? Wang Lu curled her lips and said. Li Yu was speechless. He also knew that Zhou Wen and Wang Lu's statuses weren't ordinary, so he didn't dare cause trouble with them. Wang Lu, give me an ear stud. Zhou Wen extended his hand in front of Wang Lu. Wang Lu handed him an ear stud. Zhou Wen threw the ear stud into the hole and used Truth Listener to listen. However, there was no reaction. It was just an ordinary hole. He reached in and touched. There was only one ear stud. It's indeed a little strange, Zhou Wen said with a frown as he looked at the ear stud in his hand. This hole clearly replicated my ear studs just now. Why did it suddenly fail? It's very strange, Wang Lu added. Zhou Wen shook his head slightly. That's not what I'm talking about. The reason this news spread is because someone discovered the gold burial ground. In other words, that person used the gold burial ground and knew its effects before he could spread the news. However, if it's really effective, he should be constantly burying things inside. How can he spread such important news? What you said makes sense. Since he spread the news, it must be that gold burial ground is already useless. Or rather, there's something wrong with that gold burial ground. Li Yu also came to a realization. He pounded his chest and stamped his feet regretting that he hadn't thought of this in advance. He even took the company's epic companion egg and stuffed it in. He was truly blinded by wealth. My ear studs were clearly replicated, and his companion eggs disappeared. Doesn't that mean that the gold burial ground exists? Furthermore, it's indeed effective. However, there's a problem with it. Wang Lu said as she looked at the hole. Is there any way to retrieve my companion egg? Li Yu asked Wang Lu as though he was grasping at straws. I don't know. Try again. Wang Lu shook her head. Li Yu could not be bothered anymore. He knelt beside the cave and placed some of his trinkets inside. After a while, 
he took them out. However, it was useless. They were not replicated, neither had they disappeared. This was within Joe Wynn's expectations. It was an ordinary hole. He had been listening for a long time. There was nothing around the hole, nor were there any energy fluctuations. Wang Lu, can you search again? Zhou Wen asked Wang Lu. Yes, but this will be the last time for today. Give me your shoe, said Wang Lu. Can't you use something else? Zhou Wen had to take off his shoe and give it to Wang Lu. No. Wang Lu took the shoe and threw it into the air. The shoe landed, but this time, it pointed in a different direction, not in the direction of the hole. Chapter 545 The Secret of the Hole This time, when the two of them walked forward, Zhou Wen raised truth listeners' powers to the limit as he constantly scanned his surroundings. After walking for a while, Zhou Wen discovered a strange spot. Beneath a mud wall was a place where truth listener couldn't hear. It was as though something had isolated it, preventing him from hearing anything. The direction the duo were heading in happened to line up with this area. When Zhou Wen looked, he saw that there was a hole beneath the mud wall. It was similar to the hole just now, but this hole was clearly different. Even Truth Listener couldn't tell what was going on inside. Zhou Wen gave Wang Lu a look before looking in the direction of the hole. Wang Lu looked at the hole, but she couldn't tell what was wrong with it. She only felt that the hole looked very similar to the one from before. Could this hole be the legendary gold burial ground? Why don't we try using something first? Zhou Wen deliberately said loudly to Wang Lu. Zhou Wen had a nagging feeling that there was something wrong with the gold burial ground. Not only was it able to move, but it had also swallowed the used companion egg. The thing it had replicated was an ear stud with very low practical value. No matter how he thought about it, there was something amiss. What if the thing that's placed inside ends up disappearing like that person's companion egg? Wang Lu said cooperatively. It's fine. Let's give it a try first. I remember you have a mythical companion egg on you, right? Try using an unimportant companion egg or something first. If there's no problem, put the mythical companion egg inside. Zhou Wen said to Wang Lu while winking. Is that so? All right then. Wang Lu touched her pocket knowingly. She took out something and placed it in the hole. Zhou Wen kept observing the hole. After Wang Lu placed the item inside, a strange energy fluctuation immediately appeared in the hole. Unfortunately, Zhou Wen could only sense the energy fluctuation and couldn't hear what was happening inside. However, as long as he could sense something unusual in the hole, he could lock onto it. He wasn't afraid that it would escape. Zhou Wen refused to believe that it was faster than his saber. After a while, the energy fluctuations in the cave gradually came to a stop. As for the hole, there was still a force that screened his powers. Zhou Wen still couldn't hear what was happening inside. He gave Wang Lu a look before she squatted down. As she reached out to reach into the hole, she said, I wonder if this is the gold burial ground. It should be done, right? As she spoke, Wang Lu had already taken out the item from the cave. Zhou Wen had seen what she had previously placed inside. It was a very small saber. Now, Wang Lu took out two sabers. Wow, one saber has turned into two. Is this really the gold burial ground? Zhou Wen extended his hand to take the small saber. The saber looked somewhat strange. The blade was like a piece of pandan leaf, and the scabbard was the same. It was probably made of essence gold. From the looks of it, it seemed pretty good. Zhou Wen pulled the tiny saber out of its sheath, and Wang Lu also unsheathed the tiny saber in her hand. The two sabers had a cold, oppressive glint, making one's hair stand on end. They looked identical. Zhou Wen knew at a glance that it was a good saber, and it wasn't an ordinary one. That's right. This place is really a gold burial ground. Let's quickly put a mythical companion egg inside. As Wang Lu spoke, she gave Zhou Wen another look before looking at the tiny saber in his hand. All right, quickly put the mythical companion egg in. That way, we can have two mythical companion eggs. When the time comes, I'll have one, and you can have one. Zhou Wen said, as though he had thought of something. He suddenly changed his words and said, Let's think it through. The item that was placed inside the second time disappeared. To be safe, let's try again. With that said, Zhou Wen placed the tiny saber in his hand into the hole, and continued observing the situation inside with Truth Listener. The strange energy fluctuation in the cave stirred once again, but this time... Zhou Wen clearly felt that the strange energy fluctuation was much weaker. Not only was it weaker, but it was also very unstable. Gradually, Zhou Wen realized that in the hole where Truth Listener originally couldn't hear anything, he could vaguely hear some movement. It was as though something was moving inside. This time, the energy fluctuation clearly lasted longer than before. After a while, the strange power in the cave decreased significantly. Zhou Wen could roughly hear the situation inside. He realized that there was a tiny beast inside the cave. Zhou Wen couldn't tell what it was. It looked a little like a squirrel, but it wasn't exactly the same. It looked much better than a rat. 
Its body was slender, and its eyes were huge. Its tail was also very large and fluffy. Is this fellow a ferret? However, a ferret shouldn't be living in a mud wall. It should be in the forest, right? Could it be a weasel? Joan had never seen a weasel before, but the more he thought about it, the more likely it was. At that moment, the tiny beast was holding the small saber with its two glowing paws. Its eyes were wide open, like two little light bulbs staring at the empty space in front of it. From its eyes, a strange light shot out. It was like a three-dimensional printer in a science fiction movie. The light actually printed out a small sheathed saber out of nowhere. Although Truth Listener couldn't hear the trajectory of the light beams, it could sense an energy fluctuation shoot out from its eyes before gradually molding the tiny saber in midair. The portion of the saber's blade had been completed, but it was still short of the handle. The beast seemed to be lacking in essence energy. The ripples that shot out from its eyes were intermittent, as though they would disappear at any moment. The beast's fur stood up, as it seemed to steal itself. It tried its best to shoot out rays of light from its eyes. Finally, it finished the last portion of the saber handle. Clang! The small saber fell to the ground together, with a small saber in its claws. The two small sabers were identical, with no visible difference. However, the beast was so tired that it sprawled in the hole with its limbs spread out. It stuck out its tiny tongue and panted. It looked like it had consumed a lot of energy. It should be done, right? Joe would mutter to himself before reaching into the cave. The beast immediately got up and dragged its tired body to the back of the cave. Joe reached in and took out the two sabers. He even unsheathed them and compared them. Indeed, they were identical. It didn't look any different. It's really identical. Quickly take out the mythical companion egg and put it in. As Joe spoke, he noticed the beast's eyes lighting up. Even its ears pricked up as it wore an excited and expectant look. Isn't the companion egg with you? Wan Lu retorted. No way. I thought it was you. Didn't you bring it? Zhou Wen feigned surprise. No, I thought you brought it. What do we do now? Wan Lu asked. Then let's try it next time. Zhou Wen said as he turned to leave. Wang Lu followed him. The beast in the hole was stunned for a full second before it suddenly screamed and crawled out of the hole. Chapter 546 Revenge the beast transformed into a stream of light as it screamed and charged at Zhou Wen. Unfortunately, it had expended too much essence energy. Zhou Wen circulated the demonic astral wheel with one hand, and a powerful suction force sucked the beast into his palm. No matter how hard the beast struggled, it couldn't escape. Zhou Wen didn't attack it directly because he felt that the beast was likely to be proficient in underground escaping abilities. If it escaped underground, it would be difficult to capture it. Now that it had rushed out and left the ground, it was naturally the best outcome for him. Forget it. Let it go. It hasn't harmed anyone. It has only cheated people of things, said Wang Lu. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and felt that killing the beast wouldn't have a high chance of dropping a companion egg. After all, he had already obtained two tiny sabers. It didn't matter if he let it go. The power of the demonic astral wheel in Zhou Wen's hand dissipated, and after landing on the ground, the beast immediately vanished. It really knows how to use Earth Escape. Zhou Wen was somewhat envious. Earth escape was extremely practical. It was even more practical than flying. Unfortunately, it wasn't produced in many places. If he wanted to learn it, he had to depend on luck. He couldn't buy it even if he had the money. That little beast almost died from exhaustion in order to replicate those two sabers. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been so easily caught by me. What saber is this? Zhou Wen returned the two tiny sabers to Wang Lu. You already have a bamboo blade, yet you don't recognize the orchid blade of the plum, orchid, bamboo, and chrysanthemum blades? Wang Lu looked at Zhou Wen in surprise. You're telling me that this tiny saber is the orchid blade of the four gentlemen blades? Zhou Wen immediately knew that he had underestimated the little beast. Initially, he thought that it was just an ordinary essence gold saber. It was not surprising that the little beast could replicate it. However, he didn't expect it to be the orchid blade of the four gentlemen blades. Zhou Wen had the bamboo blade, so he knew that the four gentlemen blades were extraordinary. Their toughness was comparable to a mythical creature's body, and they were extremely rare essence gold weapons. Outside the game, Zhou Wen used Bamboo Blade more than the Overlord Sword, because although Overlord Sword's sword beam was powerful, the sword's blade was too weak. It was very likely to snap when colliding with powerful forces. As for Bamboo Blade, it didn't have any problems in this aspect. Even in a battle with mythical creatures, it had never been damaged. Just this point alone was enough to prove the value of the four gentlemen blades. The quality of the orchid blade was likely to be the same as the bamboo blade, however, it was a little small. Yet, that little beast had actually been able to duplicate the orchid blade. This ability was really a little abnormal. However, 
Zhou Wen had heard that the four gentlemen blades would bring ill fate to their owners. Now, the orchid blade had turned into three. He didn't know if Wang Lu's luck could block the ominous fate brought by three orchid blades. Two orchid blades were replicated. Each of us can have one. Wang Lu handed one of the orchid blades to Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen shook his head and said, I don't have your luck. I've been unlucky enough recently. How am I supposed to survive if I hold the orchid blade? You should keep it yourself. However, Wang Lu stuffed the orchid blade into Zhou Wen's hand. Take a closer look. Although the replica looks similar to the real one, there are still some differences. This replica orchid blade definitely doesn't have the ominous problems that plague the real orchid blade. Zhou Wen picked up the orchid blade in his hand and compared it with the real orchid blade that Wang Lu had mentioned. However, in terms of external superficialities, it didn't seem any different. Zhou Wen tested the sharpness and toughness of the replica and realized that it was very similar to the real four gentlemen blades. He couldn't tell what was different. Seeing Zhou Wen look at her suspiciously, Wang Lu said with a smile, Don't worry about using it. I can sense that there's no ominous power in the replica. Since Wang Lu was so certain, Zhou Wen accepted the replica orchid blade. Although it was fake, it likely wasn't inferior to the real deal as a weapon. Furthermore, it wouldn't be detrimental to its owner like the real one. The secret of the gold burial ground had been cracked. There was no point in staying here any longer. Zhou Wen and Wang Lu headed for the exit of the underground ancient city. After walking for a while, Zhou Wen realized that the little beast had poked its head out from a hole in the distance and was looking at them. They were walking ahead, yet, the fella continued following them without giving up. It was clearly waiting for an opportunity to take revenge. Since the little beast wasn't very aggressive and it hadn't harmed other students, Zhou Wen ignored it and thought that it wouldn't be able to keep up after they exited the dimensional zone. However, he never expected that after leaving the underground ancient city, the little beast would continue following him. After leaving the dimensional zone, Zhou Wen's truth listener ability discovered that it had been traveling underground all this time. It had actually followed them onto campus. This fellow can actually break out of the seal. Zhou Wen was somewhat surprised. After all, there weren't many breakout creatures nowadays. Zhou Wen remained unperturbed as he pretended that he didn't notice it. He secretly sent a message to Wang Lu on his phone, telling her to be careful. When they separated in front of their dorms, Wang Lu made a face at Zhou Wen and sent him a message. It's best you be careful. I believe it will definitely seek you out. Zhou Wen thought that it made sense. With Wang Lu's luck, even if the little beast wanted to seek revenge, it would definitely come to him instead of Wang Lu. After returning to his dorm, Zhou Wen realized that the little beast had indeed followed him in. It furtively hid in his building furtively, but it didn't dare attack Zhou Wen. From the looks of it, it knew how powerful Zhou Wen was. It didn't dare risk its life to fight Zhou Wen. All it did was secretly exact revenge on him. As it knew how to escape through the earth, it would be difficult to attack it again if he failed to take it down with a single strike. Zhou Wen pretended not to see it and waited for it to leave the ground before attacking. He got onto bed and gamed on his phone. He also slowly drank the herbal tea that he had brewed. Although his body was in a good condition recently and hadn't lost much blood, he still needed to maintain his health. He had to be prepared. What if he bled heavily in the future? As Zhou Wen grinded the dungeons, he waited for the little beast to reveal itself. However, the little beast was very careful. It hid in a wall corner, behind the closet, and various spots. It peeked its head out from time to time without daring to come over. When Zhou Wen saw that it didn't dare come over while he gamed, he locked his phone and pretended to be asleep. The little beast was just too careful. It only began to quietly crawl over and hide under Zhou Wen's bed after he faked sleep. Zhou Wen originally believed that the little beast would attack him at once. Once it left the ground, he would grab it. However, to his surprise, the little beast suddenly changed its target, and when it reached the bottom of Zhou Wen's bed, it pounced at something underneath. Zhou Wen listened carefully. The little beast had pounced on an iron lump and hugged it with its paws. It opened its mouth and bit it, producing creaking sounds. Only then did Zhou Wen recall that he had obtained a treasure map from Earth Temple and had dug it up. However, Zhou Wen's treasure map had led him to a dimensional doll. He didn't know what kind of plant-type dimensional creature it was. Later, he had saved the baby. The baby had given him a metal lump that resembled a walnut. Zhou Wen studied it for a long time, but failed to figure out what it was. He had thrown it under the bed. Chapter 547 Three Heads and Six Arms The tiny beast originally wanted to launch a sneak attack on Zhou Wen, but after discovering the item that resembled a metal walnut, it gave up. It sprawled on the metal walnut and nodded it. Zhou Wen saw that its teeth were already creating sparks from gnawing on the metal, but it couldn't tear the outer shell of the metal walnut apart. This fellow definitely knows something valuable when it sees it. 
Could it be that the metal walnut is really something good? After studying it for a period of time, Zhou Wen still couldn't figure out what the metal walnut was. He thought it was a special metal and planned on finding an opportunity to melt it into a saber or something. But now, looking at how the little beast wanted to eat the metal walnut, Zhou Wen felt that the walnut wasn't just as simple as a piece of metal. The tiny beast was good at replicating, and it had definitely seen a lot of treasures. Moreover, it knew how to hide underground. What kind of metal could it not find underground? It definitely didn't want to eat the metal on the metal walnut's surface. It was very likely that there was something inside the metal walnut, which had made it forget about revenge. With its cautious personality, it actually dared to cause such a commotion under Zhou Wen's bed. Clearly, the item in the metal walnut was extremely attractive to it, making it lose its rationality. Zhou Wen turned over and got off the bed. He lifted the bedsheets and looked inside. He saw that the tiny beast was still chewing on the metal walnut. It was as though it had been possessed. It didn't even seem to notice that Zhou Wen was looking at it as it continued gnawing. Zhou Wen reached out and picked it up. However, the tiny beast's four paws had the metal walnut in a firm grip. No matter how hard Zhou Wen pulled, it wouldn't budge. When he pulled out the metal walnut, the tiny beast came out with it, its paws still on the walnut. From the looks of it, what's inside this metal walnut is no trifling matter. Zhou Wen released his hand. The tiny beast didn't run, instead, it sprawled on the metal walnut and continued gnawing. This fellow sure is greedy. Zhou Wen shook his head. Humans die for wealth, birds die for food. This little beast had sacrificed its life for a metal walnut. Its intelligence was truly worrying. Since the tiny beast couldn't bite through it, Zhou Wen ignored it and let it slowly gnaw at it while he carefully studied the metal walnut. Truth listeners' powers couldn't hear what was inside the metal walnut. It seemed to be solid metal at its core. Dr. Darkness's light of penetration couldn't penetrate the metal either. Zhou Wen didn't sense any special energy fluctuations from the metal walnut. This left him puzzled. He didn't know what could be inside such a metal lump. He attempted to slash with Overlord's sword, but the sword beam that possessed Ever Victorious only left a white mark on the metal walnut. After a while, Zhou Wen realized that the tiny beast had actually produced a shallow bite mark on the metal walnut. At this speed, he didn't know when it would be able to bite through it. The tiny beast forgot about running as it greedily nibbled on it. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and placed the metal walnut and the little beast into the chaos space. In the chaos space, the tiny beast continued nibbling on the metal walnut as if it was possessed. Before the golden battle god Halberd respawned, Zhou Wen took out a Buddhist scripture and pondered as he read it. Could the eight perfections correspond to the eight consciousnesses? Six hundred volumes of the Great Perfection of Wisdom Sutra are condensed into the Diamond Sutra. The Diamond Sutra is also condensed into the Heart Sutra. It can be said that the Heart Sutra is the essence of the Great Perfection of Wisdom. And its true meaning lies in the Eighth Consciousnesses. It's also known as Tathagatagarbha Thought. And it's also known as Alyavijnana. However, this is the concept and essence of the Great Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. The small perfection of wisdom I cultivate seems somewhat different. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and felt that something was amiss. He then looked at the other information. He failed to figure out anything new even when the golden battle god Halberd respawned. He went to grind the golden battle god Halberd in Medusa, but they only dropped stack crystals after expending all his efforts. It made Zhou Wen suspect that the orchid blade replica had affected the light that shone on him from Providence. Ah Xing said that there's a one-third chance. It should drop next time, right? Although Zhou Wen was anxious, he didn't have any good ideas. All he could do was wait for tomorrow. After grinding the rare dimensional creatures again, he was quite lucky this time. Another three-eyed Vidra Mullah companion egg dropped. Zhou Wen hatched it and kept it for future fusions. After finishing his set of grinding, Zhou Wen began studying his life providence, eight perfections wisdom, again. Only by condensing a life soul could he learn the golden battle god Halbert's skill. Zhou Wen, are you busy? Do you have time to come with me to Dragon Gate Grotto? Li Xian suddenly came to Zhou Wen. Li Xian had been cultivating diligently recently and seldom came out. For him to take the initiative to look for Zhou, Wen was definitely something. Yes, Zhou Wen agreed. The two of them arranged to meet in front of Dragon Gate Grotto. When Zhou Wen arrived, he realized that apart from Li Xian, Feng Chiu Yan and Gu Dian from the Xian Wen Club were present as well as Ming Xiu. Now that Zhou Wen is here, I'll make things clear first before we enter. Li Xian recounted what had happened. Li Xian had been cultivating diligently recently. He had gone to many dimensional zones to hone his combat abilities. He had discovered a strange dimensional creature in Dragon Gate Grotto's southernmost cave. He had never seen it before. While battling the dimensional creature, Li Xian had nearly been killed. Thankfully, he had escaped. The reason he had called them over was to let them take a look and see if there was a chance of killing that dimensional creature. 
According to Li Xian's description, the dimensional creature was somewhat different from the other dimensional creatures in Dragon Gate Grotto. The Dragon Gate Grotto's ordinary dimensional creatures were warriors, Vidramalis, fairies, and stone beasts. However, that dimensional creature looked as ugly and terrifying as a devil. After arriving outside the southernmost cave, Li Xian said to Zhou Wen and company, You are familiar with that dimensional creature. Don't attack first. I'll fight it first. Watch by the side. It's best if you can think of a way to counter it. It won't be too late to attack then. Zhou Wen, Feng Qiuyan, Gu Dian, and Ming Xiao nodded in agreement. The five of them entered the southernmost cave together. There were some warriors in the southernmost cave, but they were not as strong as the Vidramalis of the Myriad Buddha Cave. The five of them easily stormed their way in. When they arrived at a stone cave, they saw a three-headed, six-armed monster that looked like Black Iron Rush out of the cave. Zhou Wen looked at the three heads of the dimensional creature. Each face looked more terrifying than the other. All of them looked like evil ghosts. The only difference was that the head in the middle had a single horn while the other two had either two or three horns. In each of his six hands was a hoop. The hoops were as thick as an infant's arm and were shimmering with golden light. They looked like they were made of gold and there were many mysterious patterns engraved on them. Chapter 548 Super Self Recovery Li Xian directly used his life soul. His body was tightly wrapped by the black carapace and his eyes had turned red. He looked different from his usual demeanor and looked sinister. Li Xian's speed was very fast, leaving behind afterimages as he rushed in front of the monster. His body swayed left and right as he dodged the monster's hoop attacks. He held an epic companion beast saber in his hand and slashed at the monster's body, but it was blocked by a hoop. The monster was indeed very powerful. The six hoops delivered strange attacks, preventing Li Xian's saber from touching him. All he could do was constantly shift his position. Li Xian's moves and movement techniques were exquisite. They looked extremely beautiful. It could be said to be a textbook example, without any flaws. However, Zhou Wen felt that this wasn't Li Xian. The Li Xian, he knew wasn't someone who pursued perfection. If he hadn't seen Li Xian rush forward, Zhou Wen would have believed that the person inside the carapace was Li Mobai. Is it really good to have such a change? Zhou Wen frowned slightly. If a person's goal was something he didn't like, Zhou Wen doubted he could go far. Li Xian's moves are very powerful. I can't find any flaws, but I have a nagging feeling that something's amiss. Feng Qiuyan said, as he watched Li Xian battle the monster. Ming Xiao nodded and said, I also find it a little strange. It's very strong, but it also feels a little odd. I remember seeing Li Xian fight in the past. His style isn't like that, right? Coach, what do you think? Feng Qiuyan asked Zhou Wen. Not everyone knows the path to take when they are born. They have to slowly experiment. Some people quickly find their own paths, but some people can walk their entire lives only to end up meandering down the wrong path. In fact, I don't know which path is right or which path is wrong. Li Xian's path ultimately needs to be taken by him. I believe that no matter how difficult it is, he will definitely be able to continue down the path. Zhou Wen said. Clang. 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 Li Xian's saber constantly clashed with the monster's golden hoop, but Li Xian kept retreating. The monster's strength and speed were above his. His saber was unable to penetrate the golden bangle's defenses. Instead, he was forced to constantly retreat. After watching for a while, Zhou Wen roughly understood that the monster had epic levels of strength and constitution. Its body was extremely strong, and with its immense strength, even with Zhou Wen's constitution, he would probably only be able to tie with him. Li Xian's family had plenty of resources, so he had a large number of stat crystals to use. He hadn't advanced to the epic stage for long, but his various stats were almost maxed out. However, he couldn't see his stats. Zhou Wen estimated that his basic stats were about 40 points. Even if it wasn't, it was probably around 38 or 39. Logically speaking, Li Xian cultivated in the invincible Kane divine art, so he shouldn't have been at a disadvantage in terms of constitution and strength. However, he was overly focused on perfection in his moves, causing him to be constantly thrown back by the monster. I'm quite aware of its abilities. Let's go, Gu Dian said. Wait a little longer. I want to watch a little longer. Zhou Wen stopped them and watched Li Xian continue fighting. Gu Dian didn't ask why. Feng Qiuyan and Ming Xiao also stopped as they continued watching the battle. Old oh, Zhou, it's about time. Hurry up and attack. Li Xian shouted at Zhou Wen as he retreated. You shouldn't need our help with such a weak dimensional creature, right? Zhou Wen said with a smile. Bullsh asterisk T. If I didn't need you, would I have called you here? Li Xian cursed. Zhou Wen said with a grin. Didn't you call us here to show us how amazing you are when slaying monsters? I understand. Understand my ass. Hurry up and attack. I can't hold on any longer. 
Li Xian was already forced to a corner of the cave. There was no way out. Are you lying to me again? Zhou Wen stood firmly outside the cave, refusing to enter. With Zhou Wen not moving, Feng Qiuyan, Ming Xiao, and Gu Dian didn't move either. Li Xian had been forced to the point of having no time to bicker with Zhou Wen. Ka Cha! There was no room for retreat. Li Xian, who was leaning against the stone wall, had his arm struck by the monster's golden hoop. The carapace on his body cracked, and his bones seemed to fracture from the impact. His left arm immediately drooped down. Thankfully, Li Xian's movement technique was good enough, or the strike would have smashed on his head. Old Zhou, stop fooling around. Are you trying to kill me? Li Xian rolled to the side, in a sorry state, as he yelled. I'm not fooling around. The Li Xian I know doesn't need help when killing such a dimensional creature, right? Zhou Wen said with a smile. Li Xian fell silent, as he constantly changed his movement techniques. He brandished his saber with his other hand to circle around the monster, but he couldn't put up a fight even with two hands. Now, it was even worse after he had one arm injured. The situation was becoming more and more harrowing. Coach, will it be dangerous? Ming Xiao asked worriedly. It's fine. He still has energy left. Zhou Wen knew Li Xian too well. Zhou Wen didn't know what life soul Li Xian had, but his life providence meant that he wouldn't be killed so easily. Or rather, he wasn't using his best strengths. He was escaping from his past self. He wanted to become as mature and steady as Li Ma Bai so that he could use his exquisite techniques and schemes to defeat his opponent. His talent was indeed very good, and his technique was also perfect. However, his personality was not compatible with his technique. This made his technique look powerful, but it lacked the decisiveness. Crack. Crack. More and more spots on Li Xian's carapace cracked as his injuries worsened. Coach, are you sure things will be fine? I think Li Xian is about to die. Let's go, Bong Chiyun said. All right. Zhou Wen saw that Li Xian was still planning on winning using techniques. He knew that if this carried on, he might really die. He nodded and prepared to rush in. Stop right there. No one is to enter, Li Xian suddenly said. Zhou Wen and company stopped as they watched Li Xian battle the three-headed, six-armed monster. He was still persisting with perfecting his techniques, but his injuries were rapidly recovering. The broken carapace on his body was repaired automatically in just a moment, and the repair speed accelerated. Towards the end, the golden hoop sent him flying upon impact, but in the next second, he stood up again, and the broken carapace was restored to its original state in the blink of an eye. His recovery ability is much stronger than when he was at the legendary stage. Zhou Wen couldn't help but be surprised. Such a recovery ability virtually meant an undying body. Unless he was hit by a fatal blow, it was nearly impossible to kill him. Gradually, Zhou Wen felt that Li Xian's aura was a little different. His moves were still pursuing perfection, but they were becoming more and more sinister. Chapter 549 Faded to be Beaten Up Coach, did you notice that Li Xian's bizarre armor seems a little strange? Feng Chiyun said, as he stared at the carapace on Li Xian. It's indeed a little strange. Zhou Wen had long discovered it. Every time Li Xian's carapace was shattered and restored, it would become even more resilient. The monster caused less damage when smashing into his self-healing carapace. Furthermore, this ability seemed to have no upper limit. It could be shattered repeatedly. Every self-recovery made it stronger. After a few consecutive rounds of self-recovery, the monster's golden hoop could only cause him minimal damage. Why is Li Xian learning from Li Ma Bai? His life providence and life soul mean he's born to be beaten up and injured. How can he become stronger without being beaten up? It's a waste to learn from Li Ma Bai, Zhou Wen thought. Li Xian was clearly the first person to realize that there was something wrong with his life soul. This was because his life soul had been condensed under Li Ma Bai's pressure. He had even absorbed Li Ma Bai's evil King Gu. Even he himself knew little about his life soul. He even believed Li Mobai's words. His life soul was a failed life soul. Indeed, his life soul was different from Li Mobai's expectations. It did not have the evil King Gu as its primary core. It only absorbed a portion of the evil King Gu's characteristics and formed its own life soul. His life soul had parts of the evil King Gu's characteristics, but they were not completely the same. Previously, Li Xian blamed himself. He felt that he needed to mature as soon as possible and become the pillar of support for his family like Li Mobai. Therefore, he deliberately trained himself, hoping to be stronger than Li Mobai. He wanted to surpass Li Mobai in all aspects, but in the end, he walked a path that was not suitable for him at all. He had been training his skills all this time, trying his best to avoid getting injured. Unbeknownst to him, his life soul only became stronger after being injured. He had taken a long detour for nothing. It was only today that he discovered the secrets of his life soul after being injured continuously. He could not help but feel overjoyed. To seek victory and defeat, 
to rebuild a kingdom that belongs to you from ruins. Such strength is similar to a phoenix's nirvana. It's a very powerful life soul, Feng Chiyun said seriously. Anyone who fought Li Xian would be under immense pressure. If they couldn't kill him in one fell swoop, he would become stronger the more they fought. In the end, the opponent might be the one to die. Zhou Wen looked at Li Xian and felt that his life soul wasn't just becoming strong from every shattering. Zhou Wen vaguely felt that every time the carapace shattered and healed, it would gain an additional sinister power. The feeling was very strange. Zhou Wen couldn't tell what it was, but he kept feeling that something was amiss. Finally, Zhou Wen knew what was amiss. Li Xian punched out, and he realized that his punch was somewhat similar to a monster's attack. The way he used it was very similar to the three-headed, six-armed monster. However, if Zhou Wen didn't remember wrongly, this move was likely the monster's essence energy skill. It wasn't something that could be learned just from watching. One had to know the way to circulate essence energy. Li Xian definitely didn't know such an essence energy skill in the past. Now that he had used it, there was only one possibility. He had actually learned the three-headed, six-armed monster's essence energy skill while battling it. Zhou Wen couldn't help but recall something. Li Mobai once said that his life soul was called Evil King Gu, a life soul formed from cultivating a secret essence energy art from the South District. Zhou Wen had once heard of some legends. South District's Gu techniques placed many different kinds of poisonous worms and insects in a jar. They constantly hunted each other out of hunger, and the last poisonous worm to survive was a goo. Not only was this goo the strongest poisonous object, but it also possessed the ability to hunt and devour other poisonous worms. Li Xian's life soul wasn't only becoming stronger as it shattered, but it could also learn the enemy's essence energy skill in battle. It was very similar to the legends of goo. How much power has Li Xian's life soul inherited from Li Ma Bai's evil king Gu? Zhou Wen thought to himself. Li Xian had already gained the upper hand. When the golden hoop struck him, there were no longer any cracks on the armor. All it could do was make Li Xian retreat half a step. Li Xian no longer dodged the monster's golden hoops. While they smashed on his body, his saber slashed at the monster's body. The battle between the man and monster felt like a battle between two monsters. Li Xian was struck by the golden hoops, and his injuries rapidly healed. As for the monster's body, it couldn't heal from the saber slashes. In this constant battle, the monster that was originally terrifying looked weaker and weaker. It even felt like it was trembling. Ming Xiao watched with a complicated expression. He wondered if death was the only option if he couldn't kill Li Xian with his strike. Feng Chiyun frowned as he pondered. If he were to fight Li Xian, how could he win? After thinking for a long time, there was only one solution. He had to kill him before he became stronger. Ka Cha! Li Xian's strength had clearly increased by a lot. After countless slashes, he cut off one of the monster's heads. The monster seemed to be a little afraid as it turned around and ran, not daring to fight Li Xian again. Trying to run after hitting me so many times? It's too late. Li Xian refused to give up. With a flash, he chased after the monster like a phantom. The monster was truly afraid. It didn't dare turn back to fight Li Xian. After Li Xian caught up with it, it took him a few slashes to slice off the remaining two heads. Seeing the monster collapse at Li Xian's feet, Zhou Wen walked over and asked Li Xian, Are you alright? He had a nagging feeling that Li Xian's life soul was a little too strange. It gave off a sinister feeling perhaps of the absorption of the evil King Gu's characteristics. Li Xian dispelled his life soul and revealed his body. He sighed softly and said, From the looks of it, I won't be able to be a gentleman like Li Ma Bai in this lifetime. After all, I'm just a foppish guy who doesn't care about his life. It's good being foppish. Zhou Wen laughed. Since Li Xian could say that, it meant that he was really fine. Sigh, so I can be very strong just by casually practicing. I didn't need to be so serious. Li Xian continued sighing. That's a little overboard. Zhou Wen was rendered speechless. Just as Li Xian was about to say something, the three-headed, six-armed monster's body suddenly moved. It gave Zhou Wen and company a fright as they stared warily at the monster's corpse. They saw a bright glow in its chest, as though a blob of golden magma was churning. Boom! The corpse suddenly exploded, and a golden object emerged from the corpse. They took a careful look and realized that it was another dimensional creature. It was different from the three-headed, six-armed monster. It was very normal with only one head and a pair of arms. However, its appearance was even more terrifying than the three-headed, six-armed monster. Its entire body seemed to be made of gold, and its body did not seem human. It had two horns on its head, and there was a row of bone spurs on its spine. Its fingers were like golden hooks. Standing at half the height of a person, its body was burning with golden light. With a wave of its hand, the six golden hoops that landed on the ground automatically flew over and covered its limbs and neck. 
the remaining golden hoop landed in its hand. The golden hoop shrank automatically and became the size of a bracelet and a choker. Only the golden hoop in its hand remained the same size. Chapter 550 Golden Hoop The golden hoop in the tiny monster's hand suddenly flung out. It quickly spun and flew towards Li Xian, who was closest to it. Li Xian didn't dare be careless. He produced his carapace again and slashed at it with his saber. Clang! The saber struck the golden hoop, tipping the front of the golden hoop downwards. However, the backside flipped over and wrapped around Li Xian's neck. This happened so suddenly. In addition to the force from Li Xian's strike, the golden hoop spin accelerated, preventing Li Xian from having the time to react. The moment the golden hoop touched his neck, it suddenly contracted, wrapped around his neck, and instantly shrank. The little monster didn't sit idle. It flew towards Gu Dian on the other side. Its speed was unbelievably fast, even faster than the three-headed, six-armed monster. Gu Dian released his strength and threw a punch at the tiny monster. The tiny monster's claws collided with his fist, and the hook-like claws immediately left several scratch wounds on Gu Dian's hand. Zhou Wen and Feng Chiyuan had already unsheathed their sabers and slashed at the tiny monster. Ming Xiao's sword slashed out as well. The tiny monster's legs kicked at Feng Chiyuan and Ming Xiao respectively. Its calf was short, so it couldn't reach them. However, the golden hoop on its ankle flew out and expanded in size as it flew towards Feng Chiyuan and Ming Xiao. Having seen what happened to Li Xian, Ming Xiao and Feng Chiyuan didn't dare to forcefully slash the golden hoop as they retreated. The tiny monster's claws met Zhou Wen's bamboo blade. With a clang, the bamboo blade slashed at the tiny monster's wrist and collided with the golden hoop. The tiny monster was set tumbling backward as Zhou Wen took a few steps back. How can this fellow's strength be so powerful? Zhou Wen was alarmed. In terms of pure strength, without the enhancement of his essence energy skill, the tiny monster's strength was stronger than his. Zhou Wen had 40 strength. Apart from the epic creatures, like Truth Listener and Banana Fairy, who were stronger than him, he had never seen an epic creature being able to defeat him in terms of strength. At most, it was a draw. If the tiny monster did not have a life providence or life soul that boosted its strength, it implied something scary. Feng Chiyuan and Ming Xiao avoided the golden hoop, but the golden hoop seemed to have a life of its own. It spun in the air and charged at them, forcing the two of them to have no choice but to constantly dodge. Li Xian's neck was bound as the golden hoop tightened. The carapace on his neck showed strangle marks as the golden hoop continued shrinking. If this continued, the carapace would be crushed and his neck would be severed. He used a saber to slash at the golden hoop, but it was useless. No matter how hard he pulled, he couldn't stop the golden hoop from tightening. If it wasn't for Li Xian's carapace's firmness and his body's toughness, anyone else would have been strangled by the golden hoop. Gu Yin swung his fist at the tiny monster again and pincered it with Zhou Wen. The tiny monster's figure rapidly flashed as it swiped its claws. The two golden hoops on its wrist flew out and wrapped themselves around Gu Yin and Zhou Wen. Gu Yin quickly retreated. He looked tall and big, but he wasn't clumsy at all. He was extremely fast. Zhou Wen's saber slashed at the golden hoop. The golden hoop flipped over and was about to land on Zhou Wen's head. Zhou Wen dodged using ghost steps, escaping the fate of being latched on by the golden hoop. At the same time, he brandished his saber and slashed at the tiny monster. It reached out to remove the golden hoop around its neck and attacked Zhou Wen's saber. Zhou Wen's transcendent flying immortal was extremely fast. The tiny monster shouldn't have been able to withstand it, but when Zhou Wen's saber slashed down, he suddenly felt a huge suction force just as it was about to hit the monster's neck. The bamboo blade involuntarily shifted its trajectory and slammed into the golden hoop. The golden hoop was like a super magnet that firmly sucked the bamboo blade. Zhou Wen tried his best to pull the saber back, but his strength wasn't as great as the tiny monster's. The tiny monster screamed as it pulled the golden hoop. Zhou Wen couldn't stabilize his body as he moved with it. As for the other golden hoop, it was already spinning in the air to latch onto his head. Zhou Wen had no choice but to give up on dodging with the bamboo blade. At the same time, he took out the orchid blade and threw it out as a flying knife. The orchid blade transformed into a cold beam of light as it attacked the tiny monster's abdomen. However, just as it was about to stab into the tiny monster's abdomen, it was sucked away by the golden hoop, preventing it from harming the tiny monster's body. Feng Chiyuan was already at the epic stage, and his movement techniques were fast enough. He could still dodge the golden hoop's attacks, but Gu Dian and Ming Xiao had yet to advance to the epic stage. It was proving difficult for them to dodge. Ming Xiao dodged twice before he was at his wit's end. He could only swing his sword at the golden hoop, but then, his sword was suddenly sucked by the hoop. He could only do a flip to avoid being latched onto by the golden hoop. Gu Dian gripped the golden hoop as it tried to tighten around his body. 
However, as he resisted using his tight grip, the golden hoop sent his body flying around in the cave. Gu Dian was injured from crashing into the walls. Li Xian desperately tugged at the golden hoop around his neck. His carapace had been shattered, and the golden hoop had sunken in. He looked like he was about to suffocate. Zhou Wen didn't have time to think. All he wanted to do was kill the tiny monster as soon as possible, or they would be in danger. He summoned the six-winged guardian dragon, and with a roar, it slapped the tiny monster. The speed of the six-winged guardian dragon was far faster than that of the tiny monster. Unable to dodge the attack, it raised its golden hoop to meet the six-winged guardian dragon's palm. Boom! The tiny monster was slammed into the rocky ground along with the golden hoop. The six-winged guardian dragon raised its claws, only to see the tiny monster jump out once again. The six-winged guardian dragon's claw was actually unable to smack it to death. What's this fellow's background? Zhou Wen was alarmed, as the six-winged guardian dragon spewed out a mouthful of dragon breath holy flames. Under the surge of the dragon breath holy flames, the tiny monster spun the golden hoop in its hand, absorbing the holy flames into the golden hoop. The golden hoop seemed to be a spatial gate. After being sucked in, the dragon breath disappeared without a trace. Zhou Wen was even more alarmed. He guessed that the tiny monster was likely a mythical creature. However, its level might not have reached the mythical stage yet. It was probably similar to Truth Listener and Banana Fairy. That's not right. Its situation is more like Demonic Neonate. The six golden hoops are somewhat similar to Demonic Neonate's ancient sword. What is this fellow? Zhou Wen thought to himself, but he didn't stop attacking. He summoned the Overlord's sword and slashed his sword beam at the tiny monster. He didn't dare to directly slash the golden hoop with his sword again, afraid that the sword would be sucked away. As the tiny monster dodged the six-winged guardian dragon's attack, it used the golden hoop to devour the sword beam that Zhou Wen slashed out. However, its stats were still too low. It was slapped by the six-winged guardian dragon, causing its golden body to crack and golden blood to flow out. The tiny monster screamed again and again, but it was unable to withstand the power of the six-winged guardian dragon. The golden hoop could only absorb attacks that were in energy form, but it was ineffective against physical attacks. Although it had the effect of sucking weapons, it wasn't very effective against the six-winged guardian dragon's claws. With a swipe of its claws, the tiny monster's body cracked, and it immediately died. 